obviously because you're a controversial person, they're going to be controversial questions. We're doing a disclaimer beforehand. Yeah, a disclaimer You may beforehand. hear some things you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so no, so basically I, I always try to start off my interviews with asking just basic questions, getting to know you as a person. Because um, I've tried to, I've watched quite a few of your podcasts, I think there's only one or two where they ask you questions about your childhood, growing up and stuff like that. So there's not much information out there in regards to that. So I wanted to start off with asking you questions in relation to your childhood. So what was your childhood like um, growing up? Did you grow up with both parents or one? I grew up in Luton. Mm -hmm. um, my mother was one of eight Irish immigrant. Okay. Um, I think when they come, it was no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. So she had a big Irish family. Um, my father left when I was young, very young, and then I didn't see. I haven't seen. I haven't seen him since I was about ten or eleven. Yeah, I used to just see him on birthdays. But then the person I call my father, uh, his name's Tommy, Tommy Lennon. He's Scottish. Um, so he, I said, DNA doesn't make you a dad. He's my dad. He's brought me up. Um, I had a wonderful upbringing. Um, Luton is a very rough town, but I had a great upbringing. I loved it. Um, yeah, I, I had a very loving family. I didn't have any problems at home. I know my mum, when I was young, when I was a baby, my mum was in bad wives hostels from my real dad and things like that. But I don't remember any problems like that. I only remember a very cushioned and loving um, childhood from my parents. So, grew up in Luton, I loved football. I loved, um, I was football mad, football mad. Um, I went to school, school called Wigmore Primary School. That was my first, and then I, I went, from, went from Wigmore Primary School to Putridge High School. Putridge High School was like an hour, and a, an hour walk from there. My mum tried to get me to go to a Catholic school, I refused. My mum's a Catholic, a very devout Catholic, but I'm not. And I wanted to go to school on the estate or where, where everyone I grew up with was. But yeah, I had a great upbringing in Luton. So what religion are you? What am I? So I was christened a Catholic. Um, my mum was a Catholic. I sort of was so sickened and disgusted with the paedophilia within the Catholic Church. I also was still, so because of my mother, I, I then, when I had my children, my mum would have wanted them christened Catholic because she would have seen that the, the devil's there. So she would have wanted them christened Catholic. I remember when, when all the problems started in Luton for me, when I started awakening to the threat of threats in Luton, and I started looking at Islam and the problems around the town. I remember asking Deacon Jerry at church. I said to him, um, what do I do here? The more I read about this, the more, the, more, the more alarmed I'm becoming, the more problems I'm seeing. And he just said the Lord's Prayer. He said, our Father, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, the kingdom come, we've done. And he got to the point where, forgive us our trespasses and we forgive those who trespass against us. And he really laid on that point. I said, so girls are being raped. Terrorists have took over many streets of the town. Yeah. They're everywhere, because we had a group that were active on the streets. They're now a prescribed terrorist organisation, but at the time they weren't. I said, your answer to tackling this is just to forgive them. Like, I said, oh, for me, that's so weak, it's so cowardly. Um, I don't think Christianity would still be here if it was always that week, um, throughout the 2000 years. So, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't believe you need a church to have any faith. And I've struggled with having faith over the years. Hmm. So would you say currently at the moment you don't have a religion? Or? I'd say that I'd say that I believe there's a higher power than than me. Anyway, <laughs> I believe there's a higher power. I believe in spirituality. I believe that many problems come from not having a clean spirit. I believe at times I've had problems in my life, and it's come from difficulties with, and then and then making sure you have a clean spirit is to live a clean life, which is difficult as well. So you wouldn't class yourself as a Christian. As a Christian, I would, yeah, if I was asked now. I, I believe that as time goes on now, I always would have said no. But then, more so now, I see Christianity totally under attack around the globe. I see, and, um, and I guess as part of my identity, I'd say I am Christian. Or What's made this country brilliant is it being a Christian culture. Whether you believe in God or not, I think it benefits the society. Mm. So, and... Have I prayed? Yes. Do you know what I mean? At everyone's worst moment, you may say you don't believe in God. At your worst moment in your life, that's when you turn to him. You're going to pray. You're going to pray. So I have prayed. So in, in that sense, I've prayed to. Uh, um, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not. 
I don't go around preaching religion and people. Mm. But um, as I said, I was brought up. I was brought up going to church every week. Okay. But I don't. But I believe the church is so disconnected with the people. I believe they've actually failed massively. The, Mus the Muslim community haven't. I believe many of their imams are so in touch with their community. Many of them are more are more more like ourselves. So you could relate with uh, many imams I've met. Hmm. You don't relate with some old Christian priest yeah, who has nothing in common with you. So I believe the church has not has failed to modernise and move with society and sold us out massively <laughs> in many points, the church. I believe many people in the church don't even believe in Jesus. I believe this has been infiltrated by Marxists to push political agendas. I agree. Well, the church now saying what they're, they're doing all gay marriages, they're pushing LGBTQ+. What do you believe? I believe Islam fills a void on this. Islam's very strong and, and it doesn't budge um, on, on their principles. Christianity, and I hear Andrew Tate say this a lot, he said, well, what's the difference? Like, look, look, what, what, and, and I think the West, we as the West, have to ask ourselves, well, what are we now? When you talk about Western culture and identity, what is that? You have to ask, is Christianity still Christianity? Because well, if really. you're changing the will of God and God's commandments, then it's no longer Christianity. But that's, that's certain places are. It's not, they're not doing that in Russia. Mm. So Russia still has a very strong, they're not doing it in Poland. No, I mean in places where they are. In, you know? in Britain. Yeah. In Britain, in, in, in the Church of yeah. England. Where they're saying that a man can marry a man and a woman can marry a woman. This goes against God's teachings. So therefore, it no longer is Christianity. And it's weak. What, and yeah. it's weak and pathetic. And it's weak. And that's why so many people, that's why the church is empty. But I don't believe because the church is empty, it doesn't mean people don't have a belief. I believe people feel betrayed. And uh, that's why their churches are empty. And they don't represent the people. And they've failed massively and horribly. I see them now pushing transgenderism many of the churches is like I see the Pope inviting 200 trannies well what's going on yeah, it's so, crazy yeah it's embarrassing it's crazy to be honest um, the fact that your father wasn't around at a young age do you think that that had some form of effect on you growing up no I don't I think it may have done if I didn't have a father figure but I did okay I think that in society, many problems, when I look around what's happening in society, I think many of these problems are coming from fatherless homes. Um, I had a great role model. I had a great example. I had a great man um, who showed me great love as his, as his son. So, yeah, it didn't have any effect so on me. So you were quite lucky in that I aspect. was very lucky, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you, because um, when I used to study criminology, that was part of the studies. You know, a lot of um, households that grew up with no fathers the boys and the girls. The girls often went out looking for love in men, so they'd start sleeping around and stuff, trying to find that love through men that they didn't find through their fathers. And the men, uh, the boys would go out on the streets and join gangs to try and find um, that guidance and love that they didn't find at home due to them not having a father. And it's who they're looking up to. They're, they're, yeah. they're looking up to gang figures, they're looking up to the boys on the estate with the money they're, and, and they're being guided by them rather than guided by their dad. I, I had a big discussion with this in my school group chat friend. I've got, a, when Black Lives Matter hit off, mm. I had murders, man. I had murders. I was very outspoken against Black Lives Matter. And I said a few, uh, and I, I said things probably more aggressively than I should have caused murders for me. Absolute murders, because many, I'm, I'm born in Luton. Many of my friends, people think I just say this, many of my friends aren't white. Yeah? And, when I, and I said, like, if you're going to cry out racism, about everything, which is where we're now headed. Mm. Yeah? I believe that this this shift of um, this, what we'd seen in America, which was, um, we'd seen, I'd seen it in America for eight years. Black Lives Matter had been going for eight years. I'd seen that every election they'd use it and they'd divide society based on race. We didn't have that growing up. Mm. We had no racial problems yeah, in Luton. We'd never heard of these racial problems. When Black Lives Matter come in, everyone's getting on the knees, it's causing divide at football, it's causing murders everywhere. The whole, the whole movement was there to divide. And I got pretty angry about it, because I thought you've now, you've now brought your, that politics into the UK, and you're now using it in the UK to divide. And when I spoke, to, and I remember, um, God, everyone, everyone was so angry with me about, I went on a rant after, about George Floyd and about the war memorials in London being attacked. And I went on a proper rant about it and I called on people to come and defend, defend our, uh, the Winston Churchill statue. And not just the Winston Churchill statue, because one of the statues that was desecrated was the Commonwealth statue mm. that represents non-white fighters that come to fight for, for Great Britain as well. And I saw that the black community were being used by Marxists because um, they can't get people angry enough 
to cause the revolution they want. So they were using the black community through historical justified anger from the black community, but then whipping it all up now and pretending that they're being hunted down by police and killed when the statistics show they're not. I went for all the statistics, all the figures on everything, because we kept getting told Britain is an institutionally racist country. And I, I found myself in the school chat group disagree, disagreeing with, with a lot of my friends. And I said, but lads, like, you've not been oppressed. I had my mate, yeah? My mate, where's his, his family from Ghana, who's telling me he's suffered from oppression. I said, bruv, you live in a 600,000 pound house. You're the most popular boy at our school. Yeah? You're the most popular boy at school, mm. right? You have, you've gone on to, you earn 130 grand a year or something, yeah? Where have you been oppressed? Like, we all grew up together. We're all friends, yeah? You've not been a victim of racism, bruv. Like, we, like I've been, we, we, I got robbed as a little white boy called a white guru. I said, I, we've all had different little things, but to say this country is institutionally racist when you flourished in it, I just find it insulting. To, to just to blame everything on racism when if you want to look and, I, and then I, I made a I made a video then saying look I'll meet with anyone and talk with anyone about Black Lives Matter I don't know if you were aware um, was you a supporter of Black Lives Matter to be honest with you um, I think all lives matter yeah yeah I think that, well, that um, you're a racist for saying that well you know that's what they <laughs> want to say I am then, I mean? but I think all lives matter and I stick to that yeah. however I do think that in America it is more prevalent I think that black people are getting abused by police powers being murdered by them um do you know, know when you go through the statistics, oh, I thought that. I thought that because that's what the media showed us. Mm. When you go through the statistics, like 10% of America is black, 50% of homicides are committed by black people. Now, they're going to have more interaction with the police because of the level of criminality from the black community. Mm. Yeah? They're far more likely to be involved. Why are they far more likely to be involved in criminality? Because in the 1960s, 80% of black kids had a dad. Now it's 20%. Now that is the real racism. Because that is, that, that, that is the real institutional racism. Because Planned Parenthood have encouraged the fathers to leave, encouraged the mums to not be with the dads, encouraged the breakdown of the family, encouraged abortion. abortion. Yeah? That's what it's all been about. And that is to break down the family, because if you have a broken down family, you're more likely to be involved in criminality, you're more likely to go to jail. They've got continued people in the prisons, which they want anyway. Yeah, yeah I agree, I You've agree. Got a that they, they want the black community relying on the state. But that doesn't mean that everyone's a racist. It's like, and I said to my mates, I said, well, if you're gonna cry about racism, like if you are gonna cry about racism, you should be crying about fatherless homes. You should be talking about rap, I, I know you, you do rap. You should be talking about rap culture. Like, so OFB, you know OFB? Uh, uh, original Farm Boys, some little black rap gang from London. Mm -hmm. Well, they, made, they put up, when I talked about Black Lives Matter, they put up a thing to have a hit on me. Yeah, they put a reward with a picture of me. I didn't know they were, my son come downstairs saying, Dad, like, OFB are going on about you, OFB are mad. So I looked up OFB, they're on about Black Lives Matter. They've killed five black men. They've killed five black men. When I looked up why they've killed five black men, and I got the lyrics of a song, and I went to Brixton, I was invited to Brixton to do a debate. There was about 100 black people there. And I just sat down and said, like, I've looked up this group, OFB, their videos had five million views. Their video talks about juking, shooting, stabbing, like, mm. all, all these lyrics, yeah? I went through the lyrics. It's all glorifying violence, yeah? It's your kids that are listening to it. It's yeah? basically drill music. It's all drill music. So it's your children that are listening to it. Mm. And if you want to talk about it, black on black crime is the biggest cause of black people being killed. So like 97% in America of black people killed by black people. Yeah? Mm. Same in London, okay? So all the 15-year-olds killing each other, yeah? Then to talk about that, just continually blame everything on racism for me, it's a get out. I said, because black kids, are, black kids are being murdered every day. Criminality is through the roof. Black children don't have fatherless figure. The, 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 the dads are leaving. You need to be encouraging the dads to stay at home and do their job as a father. Yeah? And make sure they still, if they're not home, play a, figure, a fatherly figure role in that, in that child. Because if not, they're going to end up in the gangs. I totally agree with yeah. you. I think that um, people always tend to look at the problem and not the root cause of the problem. So if we can get to the root cause of the problem and find a solution, then maybe we won't get to the problem. So like you said, um, you know, if fathers are, are more at home, and even if they're not, if there should be some form of law um, for fathers to have to spend time with their children, to provide for their children, and if not, they can face prison time. Mm. I think that there, there should be some kind of law implemented that does that, because it's like men can just have kids with women and just get along with just get on with their lives they can just go and leave and a woman is left with the children and it's hard as a woman to raise children on your own especially if you have to work for example and you have children or you're a single mother struggling on benefits you know a woman can't play the role of a man i think that will come from the far uh, again like I've got, however, a, I've got a son now he ain't never gonna have a baby and leave it however, I know that now, however the man um, there is racism 
Yeah. Because even when I was studying at university, uh, criminology and policing, even the police are fully aware of it. It's called Kantian culture. There are police officers who are racist. I believe there were. I believe yeah. well, the, the facts were uh, before Stephen Lawrence's murder, there was institutional racism. Within yeah, the institutional of racism. So I we do have like to that. take that into account yeah. as well. So I don't think it's just one factor or two factors. It's, it's a various, various factors that come into one. So they all have a role. They all have an uh, influence in the problems that occur. So I think we do also have to take the racism into I account. I think there's racism against white people at an, an astronomical I think there's now. racism no. against against uh, all races. Mm. I think that some races are racist against their own selves. Like Moroccan, for example, I'm Moroccan. We have Moroccans who are racist against Moroccans because one's from the Sahara, he's got darker skin, this town doesn't like that town, this city doesn't like this. So there's, there's, there's racism within mm. every culture. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 I agree. My, my issue is with the Black Lives Matter thing was just blaming everything on racism rather than addressing some of the issues within the community. I agree with that point. And, and, and don't put just pointing. You always like, and I think they were fooled. And I think that now most people know. So I, I met you know Sasha who got who got shot. Yeah. She came to my house. Um, I invited her to my house to discuss Black Lives Matter. And when I sat her down, I said, "Do you agree in uh, the breakdown of the nuclear family, getting rid of mum and dad?" She said no. I said, well, that's one of the points on Black Lives Matter's website, because it was started by two Marxists, yeah? funded by Marxists. It's about divide. Mm. Yeah? So you don't agree with that. OK, that's one of the major points. Do you agree in ending capitalism? The fuck has that got to do with Black Lives? Because that's one of the other points. Do you agree in pushing LGBTQ+, because that's one of the other points. Yeah? The point in Black Lives Matter has got nothing to do with Black Lives. None of the money raised went to Black Lives. Yeah? It went to white Democrats who were standing in election. All the money was funneled off to fund white Democrats. Now the Democrat Party, the party who... It, Sorry, it, what's LGBT got to do with Black Lives Matter? Now I think it's the main, one of the main points on the website. So the founding website of Black Lives Matter was to push LGBTQ+, it was to break down the nuclear family, it was to end capitalism. Yeah? Mm. That's on their own website. So when I said that, I said, look on the website. So there's the, agendas. There's a massive agenda. That's all the agenda was. The, mm. agen the agenda was to use the black community to get out. Like 30, 33 people were murdered by Black Lives Matter in America. Many of them black. And no one knows their names. Everyone knows George Floyd's name. Yeah? Mm. George Floyd, let's have it right, was a, was a criminal who put a gun to a black pregnant woman's belly who actually tried, died, if anyone took the time to read the autopsy, he died of a drug overdose. He wasn't strangled. He died of a drug overdose. His death, I've read the autopsy, his death was from a fentanyl overdose. He took the fentanyl, that's why he couldn't breathe. He swallowed mm. the fentanyl. Now, I believe the police officer's been made a total scapegoat of. Yeah? And, they've in, and even Black, Black Lives Matter started because of is it Trayvon James, the murder of Trayvon James. Yeah? And they say on Black Lives Matter by a, a white supremacist, the man who killed Trayvon James was a Hispanic. Yeah? He was Hispanic. Hands up, don't shoot, never got said. Right? Everything about that organisation, which I'd already known before it came to the UK, was a total lie. And the purpose of it was every time there's an election in the United States, they whip up the black community, get them all angry, get them rioting get them smashing everything up, get them going mm. mad about racism, to vote for the Democrats. Whereas the actual racists are the Democrats. The actual people who want the black people on plantations, because they still want them enslaved, they want them with no dads, they want them in the poverty line. Black unemployment under Donald Trump was the lowest it's ever been. Blacks were excelling again. Yeah? By, 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 by halting immigration, it gave the black opportunity, the, the black, young blacks opportunity to get work again. Mm. Yeah? They, they had the best employment they've had, ever had in America. But the Democrats twist it, everything's twisted. So I obviously felt passionately against it because I thought now you're bringing your identity politics to, to the UK and you've divided the entire country over football, getting down on the knees. I don't, we, we, we as, as football clubs and as people do things against racism every week at football. But getting on the knee was seen as a Marxist symbol, yeah? Hmm. About, uh, and about supremacy, uh, about, about, about supremacy, not about equality, which is what they were saying. So most people, anyone who had took the time to research Black Lives Matter, knew it was about Marxism, knew it was about ending capitalism, knew it was about LGBTQ+, knew it wasn't what it says on the tin. Yeah? Funded by George Soros, who's a, a white Jew, yeah? he created it. Hmm. He created it. Yeah, and it's two, and it two black female lesbians who started it. Okay. Who are Marxists, who are actually self-confessed Marxists. So it was all political. And they were whipping it up. And I think most black people now realise that now, but they didn't at the time. So at the time, I took a hell of a backlash from everyone. People I, I love, people I've grown up loving. I still don't talk to some of them. Do you think black lives matter? I think black lives matter, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think every life matters.
I don't think it helped to have to be because then so Black Lives Matter and then I don't know if you saw at the time say like and I had this with my friends I said lads so you've gone down to London yeah and you've took to the streets because George Floyd and the statistics show in the United States you're more likely to die as an unarmed man in police by the police as a white male the mm. statistics show that yeah? same in the UK police same in the UK uh, police state uh, the statistics show you're more like I went for all the statistics in fact black people get found not guilty at a higher percentage than white people so if we're an institutionally racist country where the public are just racist they'd just be finding black people guilty more than white people but they don't they find them not guilty that's the facts yeah I went obviously because this really hit a nerve on me because some of my best friends have fallen out of me I made a video called black lies matter yeah mm. and I put it straight out and it was addressing my mates I said mm. now, now 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 you need to watch what's going on yeah because in America they were hunting down white people yeah? And they're going, get the white people, get the white people, as they're running down the street, killing them, yeah? bashing them. Yeah? I said, so, and Black, so Black Lives Matter, which has murdered and executed, 14 police officers executed, um, innocent black men murdered at shops as they're being looted and robbed. Yeah? What's that got to do with Black Lives? No? But this is, and for me, it, it angered me, and then I had a big fallout with my mates about it, and then I made a video addressing them called Black Lives Matter. Well, I just went through the facts about Black Lives Matter, the organisation, the facts about the murders, the terrorism that's been committed in their name. I said, it's, it's, it's the equivalent of me going down. If they've murdered all these people, if they've rioted, if they've done all this, this crime, yeah? and I'm showing you the mm. leaders, they held a, they kicked white people out of the room in a in university, no white people allowed in here. I showed all the different stuff against white people that's going on in, in the United States. Mm. I said, like, do you actually agree with this? Do you support this? Because you're under their banner, bruv. That, that under that banner, and they goes, no, we agree with the sentiment of Black Lives Matter. I said, yeah, because they're geniuses. Because they, they know that they know they used to have um, all these left-wing anarchist groups. They know that doesn't work. Mm. So they named it, because it wasn't set up by black people, they named it Black Lives Matter, so you feel emotionally attached to it. Okay. And obviously, look, the video of George Floyd was horrific to watch as well. Mm. Yeah? It was it horrific was. to watch. There's, there's, there's historical grievances that I can't comment on, especially in the United States. But... The statistics, like when I sat down with this lead, that, that, that Sasha, she goes, well, you're bringing all these figures and all these statistics. I said, yeah, but they sort of matter. If you think you're getting hunted down by the police and you're actually not, I showed videos. So in my video called Black Lives Matter, I showed a video of a white man, yeah, mm. where the police officers were on him and a black police officer murdered him. They just, they beat, they hold him until he's dead. Yeah, Far worse than George Floyd's video. Yeah? Mm. I said, you've never seen this video. You've never seen this video and you never will. But I think there's also statistics that prove that um, black people are stopped and search way more than white people are yeah yeah probably so yeah. i guess it depends on what statistics you're looking at but since at. they stopped stop and search in london violence mm. has gone through the roof through the roof all the kids are carrying machetes they're all of them but i think i think i think the, i think the bottom line is um all lives matter mm. um racism needs to be abolished even though i don't think it'll ever happen and at the end of the day we're all humans i don't think it matters what color we are where we come from. I think what matters is your principles, your morals, your characteristics, and just being a good person, to be honest, at the end of it. I, 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 I believe all of these things have been used now to divide us as a society. And but yeah, I think, yeah, I think the government so does that, divide and conquer, isn't it? Because yeah. if they divide and conquer, then we, they, they apply this in everywhere, in religions, in war, in everywhere. Because if, if, if we're together, we're much stronger. You know, yeah, we can stand up and do a revolution. However, if they divide and conquer and we're all busy fighting each other, then, then they just take, they, they keep enforcing new laws and taking exactly, all freedoms. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. I think I, I've said many times, like, when I thought about it, I said they want to divide and I probably played my role massively in that with the Black Lives Matter movement. When I went out on my rant, I said, because I've actually now caused the massive divide. Um, I've got white lads all, all hang it heading into London to defend statues, black people thinking they're going to come under attack from them. And I thought, well, I then got worried at that point. I made a video, I said, shit, and this ain't how I wanted it to go. Well, at and least I, you realised. Well, I, I wear the hat, so I, know, I, know, I think we'll get onto it. I wear the hat comfortably um, being against and, and, being a, and speaking out against Islam, because I wholeheartedly believe it. All right, so this is the next question I was going to ask. I wholeheartedly believe in it, but I don't, I don't, I'm not a racist against black people. So I just sort of like, at that time, I thought, people, so now, because I talk out about Black Lives Matter, you think I don't like blacks. It's like, it's never been the way. My whole upbringing, everyone I love is from, it, I love Muslims growing up. All right, so I asked you the question, does Black Lives Matter, yeah. do Muslim lives matter? Yes, I do, yeah. In fact, I would love to see Muslims experience total freedom be that, whether that be 
the women. And I made these comments and got a lot of flack for it. I said, open the British Embassy's door tomorrow in Saudi Arabia and let the women leave. Let them leave. Give them women freedom. They're not allowed to leave their houses, not allowed to leave their country, not allowed to leave to drive. I know the new, I know the new prince is trying to modernise it, but they're slaves. And I think that they'd leave. I think that you'd, you'd have a load of cavemen standing scratching their head if the women were allowed to leave. Because I think they'd leave tomorrow in Saudi Arabia and countries like that where they are slaves. So when it, do, do Muslim lives doesn't matter totally. I believe that I, whilst I have a whilst I have a very strong um, strong belief against the teachings of Islam, yeah, I separate Muslims from Islam. People say, "How do you do that?" Muslims are people. Islam's an idea. I can have a very strong idea. It's like if I had if I dis, if I picked up the Bible and said I disagree with this and I think Jesus was bad. No one takes it that I hate every Christian. You're allowed to do that. Yeah? Mm. You're allowed to have a strong atheist opinion against all religions. You're not allowed to do that with Islam. The minute you talk out against the teachings of Islam or Muhammad, you must hate Muslims. You must hate every Muslim. It's like, no. It's like I may, I may disagree with a woman wearing a burqa. I'd hold a door open for her tomorrow. Yeah? It's, a, it's a very different... It's a, and, and as I said, for people to understand my upbringing, I grew up with some of the best people I've ever met in my life are Muslim. Yeah? But I have a lot of love for Muslims. Many of the Muslims, even the, the gang lads in Luton, still shake my hand when they see me because they know me. They know me inside. I could play your voice messages now from, I won't, cause I, well, I'll come play them to cut them out with Pakistanis messaging me every day who are, who are lads in Luton, mm -hmm. who, are, who, are, who are my mates. All right, we'll, but, but, we'll, we'll yeah. get to that. But first I wanted to ask you, because that's all coming up in yeah, my yeah. questions. First I wanted to ask you is, how did you become a political figure? What was, what was the main reason why you became so passionate and, it was, and feel the way you feel it was in regards to Islam? Yeah, it was a soldier's homecoming parade in Luton was like the final straw. So the soldiers were given the freedom of the city. All kept pretty quiet. It was a Tuesday, I think. Um, now, from my, from my estate, Scott Mumridge was 26. He died in a training exercise. He died training their army, yeah? not killing them, not killing Afghans or, or Iraqis, training them. Um, Michael Swain lost his legs. He was 19. So he lost his legs. So that day, I went down to pay my respects to the soldiers as they marched through our town. Yeah? Mm. Now, my opinion has wholeheartedly shifted a lot on that war, not just the war, but on what the rights and wrongs were of the British Army going to those countries. We never should have been there. Yeah? Right, I was going to say... I never, ever should have been there. At the time, I didn't feel that. Because mm -hmm. at the time, we were told they're there fighting for, 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 free, for our freedoms. We were told that they're fighting for our safeties. Propaganda, yeah? again. Yeah, we, 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 we were fed this bullshit about the war. Yeah? And to justify the invasion of those countries, we we probably after September the 11th, it's like 19 apparently 19 Saudis flew the planes into Twin Towers. We went and invaded Iraq. Right. What are you talking about? And then we went into Afghanistan. And it's like, look, if if an invading army come into this country, I'd be the first person out to fight him. Yeah? So do I blame the Muslim men of Afghanistan or Iraq who went to war when the British army come in? No, I don't, because I'd have been I'd have been one of them. Yeah, if if an invading army come into my country, now we know we now know it's totally shipped. My, and again, not at the time, not at the time. I wouldn't have been thinking this. But as we've gone on, I see the terrorism from the British state. I see the terrorism from America. I see I see the corporations who benefit from war. I see that they need war. They want war. Mm. I saw Julian Assange's leaks on it that it, it was to launder money. I then see the Ukraine situation now. So my whole mindset has totally changed and i and i fully understand yeah why muslims are out would have been outraged okay. if you're in i fully get it man but that does not change when a when a young british man signs up to the british military they don't get to choose the war or the conflict they go into they swear allegiance to queen and country mm. yeah the government are the wrong ones who sent us to war yeah so i still Fully, at the time, fully hearted, supporting them, the, the lads who, who, who are put into those very difficult positions. Yeah? English men, young men, young men's lives ruined, destroyed, not given the care after the war. Not get, they don't give a shit. Used like cannon fodder yeah? for corporations and financial benefit. So, yeah, my mind's totally changed from that. But at the time, the, the British Army were coming through the streets. I went down to pay my respects. And as I went down to pay my respects, I saw Saif al-Islam, his sword of Islam, some big jihadist. He's number two in Al-Majruddin. Al-Majruddin are one of the biggest terrorist organisations in the world. Omar Bakri was the main man. Abu Hamza. Um, so their head office was in Luton. So growing up for me, that terrorist organisation's head office was on Biscuit Road. Yeah? I knew kids I used to hang around with, Roger Ibrahim Anderson, Clown, big ginger, steroid freak. I don't know if you remember him, the big terrorist, the big ginger terrorist. I used to knock about with him as a kid. 
Beaky, one of the other ones who attacked the soldiers, he went to my school. Yeah? So I know all these lot, and we know how they think. I know how radicalised they are. I know how extreme they are. I know what they're after. I know what their minds, I know what their caliphate dominate world looks like, yeah? Mm. Because I've grown up with them. So, but then I saw them all that day. So when I went down to see the soldiers, I saw, I saw so many police, and I thought, what's going on? I saw about 30 women, 30 women all wearing niqabs together, 30, like a group of 30 of them, a big mob of them. And then I started seeing all their face, I started seeing them all, and I thought, I thought, what's going on? Like, they're going to attack the fucking soldiers. Yeah? And then, it, and then it, what people don't realise is, there was a group of about 60 of them, but I watched as the, our, count, our police took these terrorists through our town hall. Yeah? These are ISIS. I mean, no mistake about it. Yeah? They've, all, they've all now in jail for ISIS. They've all gone to fight for ISIS. Many, three, three of the lads from Luton died fighting for ISIS. Yeah? Mm. So they've been taken through our town hall. And then I watched them go through the town hall and then hear all the commotion. And they, they brought them out to where the soldiers walk here. They put them right in front of them. Yeah? And they're spitting at the soldiers. They spat, in, they spat in one of the lads who died. They spat in his mum's face. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? From my point of view, what the fuck is going on? Like, how have you let them do that? And then what people don't realise is there's probably about 60 of them causing this commotion. But 330 of them were stopped getting into Luton that morning. They were coming in an army. There were 400 of them coming. Yeah? The scenes would have been mental with 400 of them attacking our armed forces. Yeah? So when they done that, for me... And then when the police, the police turned their backs on the, on, the, on the jihadists and stood with their batons and started attacking all the English people who were rightfully furious at what they'd just seen. Yeah? Mm. And that's not, you see if you lot are pissed off with this war, what we didn't know, for two days they'd leafleted every mosque in Luton. So every mosque was where it was happening. The whole Islamic community were ha where, where it was happening. Mm. No one done anything to stop it. Yeah? No one done anything to stop it. For us, I, was, I, I, said, I remember saying after that, they arrested... A few of our lads that day there and then, yeah. Um, I remember I sat down with my cousin and just, I just said they can't get away with this. They cannot get away with this. Yeah? See if they get away with this. What's next? And I say that in a sense of if you've watched Mark's Virginia speech, you see the backlog before this. Yeah? Mm. These lot have took the piss. They're taking liberties in our town. They're raping girls, heroin, all the problems coming out of this section of the community. And now we're allowing them to do this. And I kept sat, I try and explain it to people in the concept of, the Islamic community is a very small, close-knit community, yeah? Very small, yeah? Well, it was very small, not anymore, it's 50% of Luton, but it's all in one place. Now, if that was a white community, and you had 500 active Nazis, every day of the week, yeah? With pace tables set up, and their, their literature, their scripture, and what they're promoting is to hate everyone that's not white, yeah? It's pretty soon, from this community, it's going to start coming, yeah? You're going to start seeing the violence, you're going to start seeing the aggression, the hostility is going to come out, yeah? That's what we're seeing. These bastards have done this non-stop for a generation. They've been on the streets non-stop teaching that non-Muslims are filth, that we're scum, promoting war, promoting jihad, and they've been unstopped. No one's challenged them. So at that point, that, that for me, um, we sat down and just said, we've got to go for them, basically. We've got to make sure, f from Luton's point of view, every time Luton's ever named, mentioned, hmm. he's still a terrorist. Yeah, and, and I've, I've sat quite happy in Fortnum now, it's to do with the English Defence League, yeah? Because it's to do with resistance to the terrorists, right? Because, and, 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 but, the, but the, knock, the story went, when they'd done that to the soldiers, we watched it, we was pissed off, we said, right, um, we, need to, we need to let the country know that the people of Luton support our armed forces, yeah? That what happened this day is not how we feel, yeah? Mm. So we organised a rally, I organised a rally. And I went around, all, I, I made leaflets and it had pictures of the Royal Anglian soldiers that had died, there's 14 of them. And it had pictures of all the extremists who were protesting. It said, it said heroes and it said scum. And then I realised the problems we've got. Because then I went around, as I went around all the, I went, first of all, it was community based. We wasn't looking for trouble, if I'm honest. Yeah? It was community based. So my aunties were there. We, we all turned up to get to the town hall to mm. pay our respects. The police blocked us. They drew batons on horses. They knocked my mate, Craig, little black lad, they knocked his teeth out. We had placards that said, Muslim, no problem, extremist Muslim, big problem. Yeah? We made it very clear. And the reason we made it very clear, because we're from Lewin. Mm. We know loads of Muslims. Yeah? And these extremists were our problem. Yeah? And we're, not, we're fed up on them. Right? We're fed up, they're taking this. So that day we turned up and the police kettled us in for three hours. They made my auntie urinate in the street. Yeah? They, they stopped us and I videoed the whole day. There's a video, you can watch this online, it's under Luton Protest on YouTube. It's called The United People of Luton. This was before mm. any English Defence League. This, this is what gave birth to the English Defence League. Um, so that day, the, the, police, the police made us take our shoes and socks off. Mm. The police made us take our, take our shoes off, take our socks off. Yeah? And as they're doing all this and I'm videoing it, they're putting their hands in our pockets. I said, lads, 
I watched you that day. Yeah? When they come down to attack our soldiers, you didn't put their, you take, make them take their shoes and socks off. You didn't put your hands on them. You certainly didn't make their women piss in the street. Mm. I said, how, how, how dare you do this to us? Yeah? When we're just coming down to show our support for our armed forces. So they blocked it all. And then, then they raided 14 of our houses. They went to my house. They went to my mum's house. Yeah? And then the lads that they, I wasn't home. So the lads they knit, they get bail conditions not to enter Luton 24 hours a day, seven days a week for four months. Now, we, what we'd done between this is we'd set up a petition asking for Al Mujahideen, the terrorist group, to be banned from the town. Rather than ban them, they banned us. Mm. So then the next demonstration, I went to all the estates, met with all the lads from the estates, lads that hated each other. Like certain estates are at war with each other. Mm. Went to them all and said, oh, oh, look, listen, on the 20th, oh, it was a second bank holiday in May, I said, we've got to come out against the police, against all of them. And then I handed all the leaf, I went around all the estates talking to people. And on that day, I'd say 700 Luton lads turned up and, they, and, they were loot, and the lads weren't backing down. And, the, and there's videos of it, you can watch the videos. And when, when I turned up in the morning, I gave everyone balaclavas. Yeah? So I met at the pub, we all had t-shirts, I said no surrender to Al Qaeda. And I handed balaclavas to everyone and said, put the balaclavas on when we leave this, we, we met, met another pub, a pub on the estate. And the reason for the balaclavas was because I was wanted. Yeah? Mm. As, and other lads had bail conditions not to enter the town but I said why shouldn't we enter the town so things went wrong on that day because the police tried to stop it again and I rang the police I rang the police anonymously and said listen because lads were putting petrol bombs in vans Yeah, the, the town was about to blow I mean like it was so close I don't know how the whole town didn't go on fire yeah? everyone was so pissed off and angry with what they'd done but not what it wasn't really the trigger for it wasn't what they'd done the trigger for it was the police's reaction the trigger for it was how they thought they could treat us and compared to how they treat them. And at that point, I rang the police. The lads had a, the lads had a, 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 a transit van parked near Farley. We, we were the ones stopping it, yeah, mm. if I'm honest, stopping it. Because Farley, Farley all backs down onto the Muslim community. And then when we, and then I rang the police and said, I'm telling you straight, if, lads, if we don't get to that war memorial, the town's going on fire. And that's how strong everyone's feeling about it. Mm. So just stay the fuck out of the way. Stay the fuck out of the way and let everyone get to that war memorial. But that, and then the news, then when I watch on the news, as our, our councillors and our MPs are saying, all these people come into Luton from outside of Luton. Like, watch the video. The whole place is singing, we are Luton Town. Mm. The whole place. But there was aggression, anger, frustration. That was the birth of the English Defence League. Okay. Um, it went mad from there. <laughs> so can I ask you a question? Yep. After listening to everything you said and having a discussion, because you obviously agree with me in terms of the government and divide and conquer mm. and they have agendas and they do things. Do you not think that your reaction and creating the English Defence League, you fell into their trap? Because before 9-11 happened, there was no problems with Muslims. Yeah, I, be, I there believe, was, I believe there, that, yeah. there was no terrorism and there was no problems with Muslims. So the 9-11... Personally, my personal, it's going to get a bit controversial, but my personal beliefs, and I'm entitled to my personal beliefs, yeah. is that it was an inside job. And there's a lot of people who, who feel I the same way. I don't think you're way. alone in that opinion. Right. There's a lot of people who feel the same way. I don't think that um, the, the Arabs who they're claiming flew a plane into the Twin Towers. And their passport um, dropped on the floor. And their part, yeah. It, it, you know. <laughs> Undamaged. And they, the way you think about it now, it's absolutely insanity, isn't it? That anybody even bought it. And then they had no intelligence, the MI5, the Mossad, the, the, the FBI, all of these people had no intelligence whatsoever, they didn't know what was going to happen, and these people just came out of nowhere and, and flew planes into the building. So if that is correct, and they did do that, there's obviously an agenda and a reason why they did do that. And the reason why they did that is to divide and conquer and to make Islam and the Muslims look bad, so then they can then get the reaction of people like yourself, who do EDL, English Defence League, divide and conquer. Now they've got you guys fighting against the Muslims. And then the Muslims, in regards to the Muslims, I think there's two types of Muslims, three types. There's one type who I feel are not even Muslims and they get paid by government officials to carry out the acts, that they, to, to put a beard on and pretend that they're Muslims and carry out these atrocities in the name of Allah. Um, perpetrating to be Muslim so that they can get people angered up to want to, to wanna fight against them. Then you have the Muslims who are uneducated and are brainwashed, are shown footage of uh, people being attacked 
innocent Muslim people dying. They're saying to them, look what the government's doing to them, revving them up to get up and get ready for war, brainwashing them. And then when they get over there, they realise that that's not the case at all and they actually regret going over there, but it's too late by then. They've already carried out the atrocities or whatever it is they've done. Um, they're most wanted, they're in Guantanamo Bay, it's, it's done for them. Then you have the third who don't do anything at all. I'd, I'd say, I'd say that before September 11th, there's 1,400 years of history of Islamic Jihad. The Battle of the Gates of Vienna in 1683 was the Ottoman Empire massacring the whole of Christianity. Mm -hmm. There would be no Christianity if it wasn't for the Battle of the Gates of Vienna. That was on September 11th, actually, 1683. I believe that if we want to go through historical battles of Jihad, where Islam and followers of Islam mm. were violently driving their way through the world to take over it, then it's there. But we can also say that about the Christians. We went with the Crusades, which was taking back the yeah, land that was taken. But what I'm saying, what I'm, what I'm saying is, so yes, I totally sim sympathise or agree that many times attacks I never would have brought into false flags. Again, my mindset shifts a lot as I grow, as I get older and look at lo lots of things that don't make sense. Yeah? I believe that the attacks on September 11th were needed by the American war machine, and I think they wanted them. Um, so whether whether they whether they took part in it, whether they allowed it, whatever, you, none of us are ever going to know. Yeah, but I, I don't believe 19 Saudis. Um, of their own accord, without the American intelligence services knowing anything about it, committed that attack in the way they did. Mm. You know, I don't believe the World Trade Center. I don't believe it. Yeah? I don't believe it with the more evidence that's come up, uh, about now, but I believe that that attack allowed America and allowed the support of the American public, more importantly, because they didn't have it otherwise, mm -hmm. to invade those countries. I believe they wanted to invade those countries. I believe even like now with the Assad, they wanted rid of Assad. They wanted rid of Gaddafi. They wanted to destabilize the Middle East. Um, to rob the Middle East. I, I, I believe all those things, but I don't believe that, and I believe that did you, the question was, did, to, did we play our part? As I said, I've grown up in Luton. I'm not talking about September the 11th. I'm not talking about terrorism. Certain parts I am. I know many of the men that have been joined these radical groups. I know them. Yeah, they're not mm -hmm. actors. Mm -hmm. Roger I used to hang around with. Yeah? I know him. Beaky I went to school with. Saif al-Islam, I know him. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I know the majority of those men who joined that group, they will tell you they're Muslim. Mm -hmm. They believe every word that's in that book. They believe they are fighting a very just cause. They believe they are following the instructions of Allah. Mm -hmm. That's what they believe. And they believe wholeheartedly, which you, can, you have to not admire, but they, they don't doubt for one second they're doing the right thing. Yeah? You may call that brainwashing. Some people may call that brainwashing. But that, that's what they do. And so do I believe we played our part? It's like currently now. It's currently now with the Palestinian demonstrations. So for six months nearly, four months, five months, they've took liberties in, in London. Took, Who? Uh, people climbing war memorials, people trying for gassing of Jews, people flying Hamas flags, people flying ISIS flags. The hatred we're seeing, yeah? And the police have done fuck all about it. I'm banned from London. They nicked me. I'm banned, yeah? So I believe, will I be playing my part? So the minute my band's off from London, I will lead a, a march to stop those rallies. Yeah? Mm. Because there's been no opposition to them. There's no opposition. Yeah? They're just allowed to do this week in, week out. They're allowed. If I wanted to protest outside the East London Mosque, say I did, yeah? I don't. Right? Mm. You used to think it was a good idea? Don't now, yeah? Say I wanted to. They wouldn't let me. So why are you letting them march past our war memorials? On, on sacred at sacred times. Why are you allowing them to go and desecrate them? Why are you allowing them to climb up them? Yeah? You wouldn't let us. If we're climbing mosques, you, they're, they're, we'll all be in jail. Yeah? Why are you allowing it? Sometimes, and I think they're allowing it because they're scared. They don't know what to do. They've got so many problems. They've, they don't, they've got so many extremists now. They don't know what to do. And they're clamping down on anyone who speaks out against it. So did we play our part with the English Defence League? As I've said, we set up a petition. We tried to have them banned. Didn't work. I'd watched as they, took, as they destroyed my hometown. I've watched as they've absolutely destroyed the hometown. Yeah? And nothing's happened. Now, the, 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 the story before we, we went from Luton... And Jem Chowdhury and his group held an Islamic roadshow in Birmingham. There was a young boy called Sean who they converted, he was 11 years old, they converted him to Islam. Mm, I saw that. Now the Islam they converted him to. So then there's many Muslims who are moderate, many Muslims who, if someone leaves Islam, won't want to kill them. Yeah? But many Muslims don't believe you can leave Islam. 
Yeah, it's punishable by death. It's the same. It's the same in Saudi Arabia. It's the same in Qatar. You leave Islam to convert to Christianity, you're dead. Yeah, we're actually going to get to that because yeah. I, I disagree with that yeah. completely. Yeah, you, you're dead. But so, so then they're converting evidence. people. They're converting a child mm. yeah, whose life's now in danger if he actually wants to leave. Yeah, and no one said anything. So we watched, and no one, no one stopped it. I was waiting for the Labour politicians. I was waiting for the media to do something. No one done anything. So I believe that we need the English Defence League was needed at that moment in time. At that time in in, in our history. At a time when the police forces across this country had conspired with governments and religious leaders to hide the fact that a generation of our daughters had been enslaved, raped, tortured and murdered across this country by Islamic rape gangs, they'd covered it up and they could cover it up no more when thousands of young men were hitting the streets, screaming about it, singing about it, placards about it. Um, so I believe it was needed at the time. Did I, I left the English Defence League. Remember, I left. I didn't get forced to leave. Mm. I left the English Defence League because I felt at that moment... I felt, I felt by continuously hitting into Muslim areas, we were giving the radicals perfect, perfect feeding to say, look, like they hate us. Yeah, I believe at that time it didn't. I I, I know because I I'm from Luton and we'd had two rallies in Luton. I didn't think it benefited to march through Luton again. So if it didn't benefit to march through my hometown again, because I believe we'd put a rocket into the council already. Mm. We'd already made them think, fucking hell, these lot are angry, yeah? We need to start addressing some of the problems, which they did. They started mm. addressing grooming. They started addressing the rapes. They started looking at funding. The Luton Borough Council called me for a meeting in the first three months of set. When things eventually blew up, they called me for a meeting. I sat down. I went down to the meeting. There's about 10 of them there. They set up cameras. They had a baroness, a black baroness from the Labour government there. And I said to them, there's about 10 of them, and I said, I said, I'm going to prove my point here. Where do you live? St Albans. Where do you live? Harpenham. Where do you live? Hitchin. These are all the people who are running Luton Borough Council. Mm. They're all posh places. They're nice, like here. Mm. Yeah? None of you live in Luton. Mohammed, because one of the councillors was Mohammed. I said, you live in Berry Park, don't you, bruv? He said, yeah, I do. I said, yeah, you're in touch with what's going on in this town. The rest of you, you don't represent me. None of you represent us. And they said, OK, so tell, tell us why you're angry. Tell us what you are angry about. I goes, all right. And I took them, yeah, and I took a journalist with me. And we went up to Farley Hill. Farley Hill's one of the most deprived council estates in Great Britain, yeah? one of the poorest. Mm. And it was, it's not now, at that time, because everything everywhere's changing so quick, it was a white working class council estate. I said, you see this park? This park here is from the 1970s. You built this in the 1970s. We we'll drive down the road to the Muslim community. That's a 330,000 pound state of the art park. You're taking the piss. Yeah? Everything has gone to them. Yeah? Their community centres are free. Yeah? When, Luton, but when Luton played at Wembley Stadium, yeah? 45,000 fans, where everyone stand outside, as, and, and I had this out with the council, about 10 coaches pulled up and loads of Muslim kids got off. And they're all free, all put on for free. Yeah? Mm. I said, what, what's that? I said, we're trying to integrate into, into... I said, integration would have been white, black and Asian kids in the, on the coaches. You're just pissing us off. I said, you're taking, you're taking liberties. Yeah? You've absolutely forgotten us and neglected us, white working class. Now, the biggest academic un underachievers, nationally, white working class children. 40% yeah? of black kids on free males go to university. 13% yeah? of white kids. Yeah? We have been failed institutionally. You've forgotten us. Now, in Luton, the way that Labour Party regained power is they do a deal with the Council of Mosques. It was 19 mosques. It's now 45. I'm going back to when we started the English Defence League. Mm. So they sit down with the Muslim community. They do an agreement. Yeah? You'll get this. You'll get this. We'll fund this. One field with those. They build, and then they get voted in. We, we're irrelevant now. We're irrelevant. We don't organise ourselves in a military fashion to vote. I remember Luton Borough Council. Hazel Simmons was the head of it. And when we went up to her at a meeting, she just said, there's not enough here. She looked at us like shit. Not enough here. They didn't care. We're not keeping them power. The Muslim community are. Now at that point, and Muslim leaders then come on the radio, yeah, mm. having a go. There was a church debate, and the Muslim leaders said, you, you, "We haven't. You've done it to us. You've overfunded us." Yeah, and they had overfunded them. And so I took the council and I showed them all these things, and, and I went through why we're why we're upset. We're upset because certain certain people we know's daughters are being raped. Police aren't doing anything. Certain girls are converting to Islam, not allowed to see right. their parents. We're going to get to that because yeah. I've got I've got all of that coming yes. up. There's so many questions that I want to ask you. But before we get to that, yep. um, I want to say, is it fair to say that at the time when you first started the EDO, that you was a racist and that you was fooled by violence, hate, 
and violence and hate towards the Muslims and Islam. Mm. The reason why I say this is because the EDO are a far-right extremist movement that are driven by hate, racism and violence. A movement that concludes of football hooligans and far-right activists who hate and target Muslims and Islam. They have no control over their behaviour and conduct themselves in an in inappropriate manner. They get drunk and chant racial abuse such as the following, Allah is a pedo, astaghfirullah. We all hate Muslims and derogatory words as nigger, etc. Um, they also attack police officers, protesters, as well as black people, and have even fought uh, journalists. Um, example, Bolton, March the 20th, 2010, more than 1,000 people turned up to oppose the EDL. Police made 73 arrests and 54 of them were anti-racist arrests. Also, five years ago, Ali Dar was invited to speak at the Freedom of Speech event. He was turned away as apparently you decided that you didn't, you no longer wanted him to speak. Is that true? I'll, I'll explain it all now. Okay. Um, when Ali tried to make inquiries as to why he was no longer able to talk, things got out of hand. Um, outnumbered by football lads associations, brother Ali, who was accompanied by brother Muhammad Hijab, was attacked. He was punched and kicked from all angles. The EDL supporters were screaming and shouting things like, your, your prophet is a paedophile. These people are all uneducated, ignorant, arrogant individuals who talked about wanting um, foreigners out of the UK. My question is, do they not take into consideration the fact that their own government are responsible for conquering and invading more countries and nations than any other nation in history? And just to give a few facts in it, just to, make a, just to, to name a few, I'm going to start with Europe first. So Ireland, France, Spain, Belgium, Italy, Iceland, Norway, Denmark, Austria, Corsica, Germany, Russia, basically all of Europe. Then we look at, look at Africa. Again, I'm going to name only a few, not all. Gambia, Sierra Leone, Zimbabwe, Ghana, South Africa, Eritrea, Egypt, Papua New Guinea, Botswana, Libya, Cameroon and Nigeria, the Americas. Canada, Oregon, Bahamas, St. Lucia, Honduras, Cuba, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Panama, Peru, Mexico. Other countries such as Bosnia, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Iran three times, Lebanon, Turkey, Yemen, Malaysia, India, Pakistan, Singapore, China, Thailand, Australia. And these are just a few. Well, um, these are just a few of the countries that they've invaded, but there's, oh. there's, there's way more. But yet the EDL are saying that they want foreigners out of their country, which I find... So I'll, I'll start off at the start. I'll start off at the start. First of all, you started saying the EDL was a far-right extremist racist yeah. organisation. Where would you get that from? By... It's a, no, a well-known fact. Where would you get that from? I got that from news, I got that from news, journalists, media, I got media. that from watching, um, watching so, so their so ideology, so so the so, so the Metropolitan Police Force in Scotland Yard have, a, have an extremism unit whose job it is mm. to categorise organisations like the English Defence League. Okay. So the entire time I led the English Defence League, it mm. was categorised as a centrist organisation, not far right. Because okay. what part of the ideology, if you look at the mission statement of the English Defence League, fits under far right? Which, which part? The, the English Defence League had a lesbian and gay division. Yeah? It had a Sikh division, a Hindu division, a Jewish division. Mm. Yeah? It had Muslims. Abdul was a famous Muslim supporter of the English Defence League. So which part of that fits into far right? There's nothing that fits into far right. Which is why the police's advice to mm. Muslims was to talk to the English Defence League. Yeah? That's police advice. So where you, you've said you got all that from the media. Mm. The same media who pushed the war in Afghanistan. The same media who pushed weapons of mass destruction. The same media, do you believe in the vaccine and COVID? No. The same media who told you all those lies? That same media? Like, it, it's like, it's like, so the media, if you tell a lie enough times, it becomes a fact, as you've just stated. The English Defence League was a far right racist organisation. Okay, so let's take, let's take the far right out, because yeah. to me, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. They was racist though. There's what, racist there's, within there's, the English there's, Defence League. Yeah, within, there's footage of them yeah. actually chanting out, um, the Prophet Muhammad is a paedophile. Um, That's not racist. Well, it kind of is. And no, it's it's, not, no. it's, or, or call if someone, if someone, said, people, if someone said Jesus, calling black people the n-word, nigga, the, that's racist. Yes, that is totally racist. I've right? seen footage of that myself. If you could send me that footage, can we put it in this video? Yeah. I'll if there's footage it. of an English Defence League supporter seeing that, I haven't seen it yet. What I'd say is there's racist in the Metropolitan Police Force. There's racist within Islam. Yeah. Does mm. that mean the whole of Islam's racist? No. No, so there's, there's, there's a couple of racist dickheads within the English Defence League. Yeah? Does that mean the English Defence League is racist? Or are you going to separate? Because what you wouldn't want to happen, mm. you wouldn't want the Muslim community to be tarnished because of the actions of a few. Mm. But everyone's happy to tarnish the English Defence League because of the actions of a few. You're talking like every English Defence League supporter was a racist dickhead. Yeah? Whereas 
You no, I, I can't. I can't say that because I don't know them all um, no. individually. I can't, so obviously, obviously I the English Defence League was a nationalist organisation. It attracted the brave and at times the stupid. Mm. Yeah, at times. Because you even decided to. I have battles yourself, within. Right? The, I have. I have battles with racists in my leadership of the English Defence League. Yeah, that. But the ma vast majority of people I met in that organisation were decent, hardworking, patriotic. British people who are fed up, yeah, who are, and in fact, the same sort of people now who would convert to Islam are the same sort of people, or, or be driven to extremism, mm. were the same sort of people who were lost as well within the within groups like this, yeah. So, you, so you do agree that there were some people within EDL that was racist. A hundred percent, of okay. course there was. Yeah, of course there were. But when they raised their hand, heads, they were kicked down again. Like if you if you cherry pick it, yeah, but if you don't, and you actually take, so some people. There's only one thing anyone can ever take. I gave probably 100 speeches at 100 demonstrations at the English Defence League. Do you know after Lee Rigby's murder? Mm. Do you know what I said in my speech when I stood up to 10,000 English Defence League supporters? 600 Muslims are serving in the British Armed Forces. Yeah? They're doing a lot more than us. Right? If you abuse a Muslim woman walking down the street, you're a coward and a scumbag. If you smash up a mosque, you're a moron. Mm. Why don't that ever get played? Why does no one say that? And do you know what did? They clapped. They agreed. Yeah? But the portrayal that's given, and I try to under, I try to explain to Muslims, like it's like going to a football on a match day. Yeah, we're going into a city where people are coming out each time to attack us. Mm. Yeah, you sit those people down, which I done with Muslims. I, I held a meeting with English Defence League leaders from across the country and brought Muslims into the meeting. I said, let's all talk. Yeah, let's all talk. Let us tell you why we're pissed off. You tell us why you're pissed off. Mm. We found a lot of the reasons we're pissed off isn't actually to do with each other. It's to do with the council. A lot of them. It's to do with the council changing the name of Christmas. It's to do with the council sort of trying to appease communities when the like, I don't think there's a Muslim in the UK who gives a shit if we have Christmas mm. yeah? but the council want to call it winter illuminations and stuff like that which pisses us all off and it, who's it? And when it pisses us off or, or Christians or non-Muslims we get pissed off thinking it's the Muslims or, or and, and that's partly to do to, with some liberal moron within the council making a decision based on diversity that no one wants but but a lot of the issues you read there so you, so in regards to, to Ali Dawa, okay, uh, Ali Dawa. So Ali Dawa made a video. Ali Dawa, where my mother used to live. Ali Dawa went and made a video at the end, end of the road at my mum's address. Yeah, mm. and, uh, and you can yeah, see I saw some, I saw he made a video like and he's talking in the video, and, it, and behind it is a thing that's next to my mum's old house. Right? Mm. What happened? What had to happen then? Because Muslims do want to kill me. Yeah, when he put that address out and he said the number, the door number, when he put that out, that family had to have police guard. I had to go sit with that family who had bought the house off my mum. Yeah? It was a young mother with kids. Right? So this was before the Freedom Rally? This is before the Freedom Rally. Okay. Yeah? Young mother with kids. Right? So I sat down and she's crying her eyes out in her new home. I said, I'm so sorry, man. They're doing this because they think that this address is linked to me. Yeah? And I made a video saying, it's not my house. Right? There's some poor woman in this house now, you mug. Right? And then he rang me up, didn't he? And he's talking about door numbers. And I said, mate, you knock on my door, I'll murder you. It's as simple as that. I've got kids in my house. I'm not going to play games. If, if you think you're going to knock on the door and be funny of a camera when you're a little jihadi supporter, I'll kill you on my doorstep. So don't come to my house. Yeah? Because if you think you're going to track me down and find me at my house, it's going to end badly for you, Addy. Yeah? So that had happened. right? So when there was, we were holding a freedom of speech event that was costing me, that cost me £25,000. Right? Didn't cost Ali Dow anything. Yeah? He didn't contribute to that event. Yeah? Now, Lucy, who worked for me at the time, who's a liberal, bit clueless, mm. yeah, if I'm honest, mm. who doesn't understand... Ali Dower, you said brother Ali. Ali believes that he, he Ali would marry his daughter off at nine years old. Do you want me to show you the video when he said that? No, I saw, I saw the video. Do you, do you still call him brother? I, I, yeah, he, 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 do you still call him brother? Yeah, I, I do still call him Even brother. Even though he'd marry his nine year old no, he daughter? Wouldn't, off? He wouldn't. He said I, he wouldn't. No, he, I watched I watched the video. He's talking yeah. about when he saw you outside the court. No, he no, not that day. No, there's another video of him at Speaker's Corner. Saying yeah, I'd allow my daughter to marry. Nine? Yeah, but he also he also does state that it's not just when you reach the age of nine. There's there's a criteria to it. You have to reach the Quran for, for you to be able to marry off somebody at the age of nine. The, the, you can't just do that. There's That's a right. Had to start there's, there's a, yeah, but there has to be the mental element. The, the, who, does, who, the, decide, who decides the mental element? Probably maybe the parent, the guardian. The parent. So if Ali, and, and Ali said, yeah, yeah, but I'm sure he if he thought that that was those elements were. So if there, a parent decides, I don't, the I don't think he would let. I don't think he would let his his. Uh, he his said he would. Are. He said he would. And so if the uh, brother Ali and brother, brother Muhammad Hijab. Now Muhammad Hijab turned up with a gum yeah, shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A gum shield. Yeah. So he didn't come to debate. He turned up so at a rally to provoke with a gum shield. In. Now Ali Dawa, what I said to Lucy, I said. I said we were holding a free speech event. I believe in free speech. I said, if Ali wants to, if Ali wants to, yeah, because tell him he needs to go, not, he needs to ring my mum. Tell him he needs to go apologise to my mother. 
yeah? Mm. Because of the heart upset he caused by messing around with her address, yeah? That's what he needs to do. So get him to ring me and tell him to do it, yeah? He didn't ring me and he didn't do it. So, so, so the next day, so so pre so he, previous he was never to that, talking. Previous never to told that, did you talking. agree to, that he was no, able? No, she, she said about Ali Dawa, mm. and I said, tell him to ring me, yeah? Okay. And tell him to make an apology, yeah? If he does that, Let's talk. Yeah, he didn't do that. Yeah, I think if he, if he did do that, that was wrong. He shouldn't have done that. He did and do I that. There's videos of him at the end of my yeah, mum's Yeah, he, he should have. Um, I didn't go to his mum's house. I've never been to his mum's house. Yeah, that's house. very wrong. He didn't do that, and he should have. And not just that, that, but the threats. He's a little. He's a little jihadist supporter. So is, so is Mohammed Hijab. They've always been that play. They turned up to provoke a reaction. They got the reaction they wanted. Yeah. If I walked into the middle of a, a Muslim demonstration with a gum shield on, yeah. They're going to react a certain way, and rightfully so. Yeah. If I went there talking, so I went to a mat. There was Muslims protesting about the burning of the Quran recently mm. outside the embassy. They were very pleasant to me. Yeah. I went. There's hundreds of them there. But if I'd have gone with, if I'd have gone with my, with my mates in an aggressive manner like they did, mm. yeah, and turned up with gum shields on, ready to fight, basically, then uh, then it would have been a different scenario. They come. They got what they wanted. They wanted a bit of attention. That's what Ali wanted. Yeah. He wanted attention. He was always trying to track me down to get attention. Yeah? Mm. off the back of my support, off the back of confronting me. When he did confront me, he admitted that he believes the legal age of sex should be when a girl starts her puberty, which means, in my eyes, he's a paedophile. So, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't be calling a paedophile my brother. I don't think it's a good look. Okay, but the only <laughs> thing is, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with what you say. That's your, that's your perception, yeah. um, because he does clearly state that you know, it's not just he says you're nine years old, you can get married. He does say that there's a criteria to it. And but also, what's the criteria? We're going to get to that. Yeah. That's, that's going to come yeah. That's yeah. going to come after. We, we are going to get to that. There's a few things that um, I'm going to touch up. What was the other point you made about the English Defence League? So, yeah, we're going back to the in English Defence League again. You said, um, yeah. So I wanted to ask you, you, obviously you made a decision to leave the EDL, yep. which I, gr I greatly respect, and it must have been a very difficult decision yep. uh, to make. When you left the EDL, what was that like? Because um, you obviously must, they, I'm sorry. sure they wasn't happy with uh -huh. the fact that you had left the EDL. So leaving the EDL was probably the hardest decision I've ever made, probably. In the sense that the English Defence League became my life, took over my life. It ended up becoming part of who I was. Mm. Um, I say it to anyone. Who did I say it to yesterday? I said to some fellow mate yesterday, I said, your life's about to change. Because once you dip your toes into these politics, if you believe in this, if you believe in the cause, it's mm. going to take over your life. And it took over my life. It took over my, like, I always said I was, I was a great leader to the English Defence League, but at the time probably not a great father and not a great husband. Certainly not a great husband, actually. Sorry, Jenna. Um, but I wasn't a great husband. Um, it took over my life. So when I made the decision to leave, it was a difficult decision, but, but it ended up being, for me, remember, the things you were talking about, people acting like idiots, Who's the face in the English Defence League? You. Who has to sit there and take the flak for some you. moron who I don't even agree with? Yeah, I don't agree with what he's saying or doing, and now I'm the one. It, it's on my head. Yeah, yeah. and and so I'd, I'd fought for years, as you said. So you can get the footage. There's footage in um, in about two years into the English Defence League, 2010, 2011. I went to a Blackburn demonstration, and there was a group within the English Defence League who had a, their own name. It was North East Infidels and North West Infidels. Yeah, two separate groups. Right, mm. in, the, in the northwest and the northeast, who stood very differently against what I was standing against. I didn't want to talk against immigration yeah, from the start. Yeah, my problem was with, with Islam and followers of Islam and the extremism within Islam. That's what I wanted to, my, my, to discuss. I didn't want to go off and talk about any other things. I just wanted to focus on this one point. And um, they didn't like that. And they were and they were they were far right. Yeah, they were racist um, against everyone basically. Yeah? Mm. Many of them were. Um, but they hadn't done enough. So we started looking at them. And at first they'd drawn up, some, some of them, even this group from Wales, they, 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 when they first turned up, they dressed normally. Mm. As the demonstrations went on, they got Dr. Martin boots on, they're, they're coming out of themselves, who they are. And then I went up and uh, I remember there was a Channel 4 documentary, you can, you can watch it, it's called Proud and Prejudiced. And I met up and these journalists were coming to film a documentary with me for the first time. And when they turned up, I said, um, they goes, what's happening today? I said, I'm kicking it all off, lads. And they said, what? I said, I'm going to kick it off when we get up here. Yeah. And then, so, and, and when I got up on stage, there's footage of this. I hold a Sikh, an Asian Sikh lad's hand up, mm. and I say, if you don't like what you see here, yeah, you're in the wrong movement. Okay. So this is our movement, yeah, created on our principles, right? And I say this because of my upbringing. I'm not from an exclusively white area. Yeah. Most of the people I love ain't white. Right. That's how I'm brought up. So I said, if you if you have a problem with this. 
I said, he's as English as any one of you. Yeah? He's born here. He's as English as any one of you. Yeah? So if you have a problem with that, and I think we've done a lot to educate some white working class from, from, from council estates around the country. We've done a lot to push education on them, on the contributions of other sections of, of immigrants that have done to the country as well, especially the Sikh community. Yeah? So I said, if you don't like what you see, you're in the wrong place. And then I started reading out their names. I said, uh, Alan, what's his name? Alan Smith, show yourself. Yeah? I said, come up and show yourself. I said, because you're in here, fucking, I'm, re I'm reading all your racist bullshit and you shouldn't be here. And then about 30 of them come us. They all come marched up to the stage. They've all got Skull and Crossbones t-shirts on, which is the sign of Combat 18. So real far-right extremist groups. They all come up. Um, I come off the stage. Remember, Alan Smith is from Newcastle, the Geordie. I come off the stage. And my, my intention was to knock them out on camera. My intention was to kick it all off. Remember, I wasn't a politician. Mm. Yeah? I'm not a politician. Well, I'm running a street movement. Mm. Right? I'm running a street movement, and we need to divide this street movement. And when this happened, all hell broke loose. Everyone's fighting. And the people, the newspaper media said the English Defence League are fighting each other. It's like, no, we're clearing out. Yeah, we're getting rid of them. Mm. Yeah. And then when I, and after that, so I, I actually got prosecuted. So one of my prosecutions is for knocking out an RC. Everyone's like, yeah, you got done for an ABH. I said, yeah, well, we had to. At that stage, well, that was my intention. And then when I got back to the stage, I can show you the pictures. There's about 30 of them waiting, corkscrews in their hands. All hell's gone off again. And then, but it worked. They never come back. So they never come back. And then I made a video when I got home. I said, listen, if you turn back up, it's on. Yeah? Because most football hooligans, which was the men that filled the ranks of the English Defence League, are not racist, not neo-Nazi, and won't tolerate it. Yeah? Mm. They're not going to tolerate the, the N-word. They're not going to tolerate all that. Yeah? Because they're normal lads. They're normal lads. In most football hooligan firms around the country are black lads. Yeah? So no one's tolerating it. We're at, at, so at that point, I made a video saying, turn up again, it's on. Now the, the line's been drawn. Yeah? And it worked. And then I went to jail. And when I went to jail, they were all back. So I come out of jail, and I'm looking at videos, thinking the fucking and, and Northwest Infidels flags at my demo. Yeah? Mm. And, and for me, I said, I'm, I'm the face of this. And then, so then I looked and thought, if th those groups come about when I kicked people out of the English Defence League. Mm. So we had Southie, we, we had all these different letters, three letters of groups, yeah? And they, they had the English Defence League here, and they'd all loiter around, and they'd attack me for anything I'm doing, yeah? They hate me. I'm a race traitor. I'm now a Zionist. I'm all these things, yeah? So they'd always be attacking me because they wanted to, they wanted what we had, but they can't do it. Because the reason the English Defence League was so big and such a phenomenon that, that made so many headlines and had people in their numbers on the streets was because it wasn't racist. Yeah? Mm. It's because it wasn't neo-Nazi. Because neo-Nazis get 20 people on the street. Because they're, they're, they're morons, yeah? The, Brit, the English Defence League was mainstream. The reason the people filled the ranks of it was because they were listening to the message mm. of non-racism, yeah? Of equality. I always say it was English Defence League or it was equality, democracy, liberty, yeah? We were standing for, we were standing for things and, and we weren't promoting hatred, yeah? And if you listen to our speeches, mm. if you listen to my speeches at every rally, yeah? Not listen to the little 10 second clips that they were pulling out or what they'd do is they'd come to a demonstration with 5,000 people and they'd clip four, four lads with bald heads and, and, and cans of beer and they'd portray that as the movement. Yeah? But, um, there was one that I saw you do but I know that you, I think Piers Morgan pulled you up on it and I know you cleared it up and you apologised and you said that you didn't mean it in that way where you was addressing... Um, the Muslim community. Yeah, yeah I did mean, said, I did mean, I did every mean it every single Muslim, yeah, all you Muslims. 2011, yeah. yeah. It was in Tower Hamlets. You can see why yeah. that looks as though yeah yeah that it yeah. does no yeah. i did uh, no it yeah. doesn't look like it it was like i it. wasn't going to mention it because you really spoke about it and apologized yeah. no so i, I did like it's it. fair to keep i did like up, i did i was a leader of a pressure movement our job was to put pressure on the islamic community and the police mm. yeah we thought that the within the islamic community would cause a revolution where the m mainstream muslim community would get that pissed off with the extremists they'd mm. turn on them that didn't happen yeah that didn't happen so my job was to put pressure that's what i was trying to do was put pressure in that speech what i said is I said um, in two thousand. I said in seven seven, you got away with killing the main men on the streets of our country. You won't, you won't do, you won't get away with it again. Mm. I said we've built, a, we've built an army across the country. Yeah? Again, young out of one hundred speeches, that is the only thing. Think about yeah. how many times I've been on camera. Yeah. Think about all the covert recordings there are of me. Yeah, that's but, why I wasn't going to mention. No, 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 it, no, because you mentioned it. But yeah, but, but, that, but I did say that, and um, yeah. <coughs> but my point is that the English Defence League was not far right. We tackled more. Do you know I went home? And when I went home, I made a video. And um, I made a video saying, if anyone's got a problem, come to Luton. To the far right. Yeah? I made a video calling out Al-Majradeen and Blood and Honour. 
Yeah, I didn't just call out the the the, the, the Islamic radicals. Mm. I called out the white the white supremacists. Yeah, mm -hmm. who's and and you saw a Marx for Union speech. They made a video. Silly, these dickheads made a video. Remember, I used to do the merchandise. Yeah, so they made a video burning the English Defence League flag. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it had another logo on it. It had another finger on it. So this bloke, they're all wearing balaclavas, saying Tommy Robinson, you're dead. Yeah, I just went on, looked up, and thought, where does send that? Some dickhead in Birmingham rang him up. So we doing? We'll take the balaclava off. I know you are, buff. Like, why are you wearing a balaclava? <laughs> yeah. But then I made a video. I made a video saying, if any of you got a problem, if anyone's got a problem with me, I'm five foot six and I'm in Lubin. Yeah, yeah, I'm not hard to find, lads. Yeah, mm. stop giving it because they're all saying they're going to kill me. I I got it from both sides. I still get it from both sides. The most hate I get really comes from the white supremacists. Yeah? So it, I, I'm still getting it from both sides. But I made the video saying anyone's got a problem, and then I was out. I was in London, and I get a phone call from Luke, where where Luton's football hooligans drink. The landlord rings up and says, some fella in here from Newcastle wants you, Tommy. I said, all right, sound. So I've jumped on the train, I've come back. Alan Smith was his name. And uh, I walked in, he's one of the North East Infidels. He goes, I watched your video, I was so pissed off. When I watched your video, you're calling us all out. He said, so I've come down here. He goes, now I'm here, I'm not as pissed. I said, get out of the back of the pub. And then we went and swung it out of the back of the pub. I pulled a whitey afterwards. I was so unfit, man. I got sick. I got no, sick. No, that's one thing about you. I do yeah. say though, you got, you got, um, you got balls. But this is uh, when, when I went, and then I'm getting called a Nazi. I think we've done more to combat them than anyone's done. We've done more to educate than anyone's done. You may not like my opinion, and I'm very strong on it. Yeah, about Islam. Mm. Yeah, I still am. We're right? gonna, um, we're gonna yeah. get to that. We're gonna yeah, come cool. to that. Come to that next. So you, you state that you're not a racist and that yep. you're not against. Muslims. I don't think, as you said, you said, you said, calling Muhammad a pedophile. You, some Muslims take that as racism. I find that insane. If you insult Jesus, it's not racism. If you insult Buddha, it's not All right, racism. We're, we're going to get to that as Go well. On. We're going we're gonna to get to Go that on. as well. So you state that you're not a racist and that you're not against Muslims, but you're against Islam as a religion, when in fact... As an ideology. Yeah, okay, as an ideology. But also... Masquerading also, as a religion. Also, also, wait, so Islam is a religion. It's a full concept of life. It's law, it's legal, exactly. it's, it's everything. Yeah, so yeah. More it's, than it's, religion. Yeah, well, we're going to get to that. Um, when in fact, you should be saying the opposite. Because Islam is not the problem, the so-called Muslims are the problem. And then just to clarify what an Islamophobe is. So the, the, the dictionary... No, it wasn't in the dictionary. Go back through history, there's no such word in the dictionary. Yeah, well now, now it is. Oh, now they've created it. Now they've created it. They've created, so, so now they've created, <laughs> they've created yeah, so a word to protect <laughs> Islam from criticism. <laughs> so and stuff so in the it's dictionary. the dislike <laughs> of or prejudice against Islam or Muslims, especially as a political force, or the fear of, hatred of, or prejudice against the religion of Islam or Muslims in general. So I'll ask you again. Where did you get that word from, Islamophobe? From, um, it's, I don't know, it's a word that gets from. No, but what I mean is, is it in the dictionary? Yeah, it's in, now it's in the dictionary. It's Christian phobe in the dictionary. Do you know what? I didn't check no, that. No, it's not. You know? Why not? I didn't check it's that. It's not. Why not? But we'll, we'll get to that. So wait. So I'm going to after, 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 after giving you... Just as long as this protection, yeah? Wait, listen. Oh yeah, because obviously, right, <laughs> things, like, like obviously, like, um, things will have to adapt, isn't it? Because as the few, as time goes, things change. For, so, for example, before, we didn't have telephones. We didn't have internet. We So now there's new laws that, that apply to uh, online harassment, for example, which never existed before. So as new things come, new laws are going to apply, right? New words. New words, right. Anyway, so look, so after I've just given you the definition of an Islamophobe, I'm going to ask you again one more time. Do you consider yourself as an There's Islamophobe? There's no such word. So uh, a phobia is mm. an irrational fear, right? Okay. It's rational to fear. If I open up a book mm. and there's verses in there that call for my death, as a non-Muslim, yeah? mm. if there's verses in there that talk about enslaving women, if there's verses in there that talk about beating women, if there's all these verses, is it irrational when this is being promoted to fear it? Is it irrational to fear? If it, is it irrational to fear the scenes we saw at the Ariana the Grande concert? Is it irrational to fear knowing that there are four thousand, three to four thousand uh, terrorists on a twenty-four hour day, seven, seven, seven days a week, twenty-four hour watch? Yeah? Knowing that four times as many British Muslims went to join ISIS than have ever joined the British Army, is it irrational? All right, can I answer that? Yeah, go on. Okay, it's not irrational. It's not um, In hang on, wait. If we're talking about the actual Quran and we're talking about the actual real Islam, mm. then it's irrational because what? there's explanations for all of this stuff that you're saying. But if we're talking no, about, no, no, no. I'm going to get to okay. it. But if we're talking about people who are who are um, terrorists, mm. they are not Muslims because you see, you're saying okay, you're saying that that these people are terrorists. They, they, they are, you, you mentioned the Ari, Ari, Ariana Grande concert. Yep. What they did, that's not Islam. That's that's against Islam. Says who? 
Islam. So, so okay, so Salman Abedi, who committed that terrorist attack, could Wait. recite the Quran without looking at it. Okay, that doesn't who, mean anything. Who knows the Quran more? That doesn't mean who anything. Who knows the Quran better, though, him or you? If he can recite it without looking at mm, it, okay, but it's not, it's, not, it's not as simple as that. It's not. I, I'm more educated than him. Yeah. Even if I don't know it, as I'm more educated than him because the way he interprets it. Interpret. I wouldn't do what he does because I know. Look, that's in, you, but in that's Islam, you, but no, but it's not. It's not. It's me. Do. No, no, it's not. It's me. It's because I'm a Muslim and I follow the correct way of Islam. It's not because it's me. So, for example, it in Islam, mm -hmm. yeah, it clearly states. Allah states that if you take the the life of one soul, it's as though you took the soul of the whole of humanity. If you save one soul, it's as though you save the whole soul of humanity. Do you know what when it comes to do, war, do you know what no, verse I don't. I don't. Okay, but so one sec, one sec, okay. one sec. It, when it comes to war, yeah, there's rules. To war. Yeah. So if you're in battle, you're not allowed to, to touch a tree. You're not allowed to touch someone who's in prayer. You're not allowed to, to attack someone who's not attacking you. You're not allowed to attack innocent people, women or children. There's rules. Unlike Christianity, okay. where they okay. tell you to, but, to but kill you children, see, see women, verse, donkeys. You see the verse you just quoted? Yeah. If you kill one man, you kill, kill all of humanity. Do you mm. know what? Do you mind if I do something? Because I am here. Yeah? Let me just... Because cause it's, it, it's, it has to be done, man. It's not right that... And I only have this, this uh, we're, we're going to interview someone about the Quran, yeah? mm. 5.33, 5.32, so look, what it actually says, yeah? let's read it, huh? what it actually says is, if you kill one man, you kill all of humanity, mm -hmm. unless they cause mischief. And then you execute. Yeah, but again, the see, the see, there you go again. You're taking it out of context. Right. This this applies to a certain time. This applies to the yeah. time of the Prophet. Yeah, Ibn, and, no, no, and it, it Ibn, applies. Ibn Kathir is the biggest Saudi scholar in the world. Okay. Ibn Kathir says mm. that the word mischief means not believing in Allah. Ibn Kathir is the most recognised and renowned Saudi scholar there is. His, his now, now this isn't your interpretation. It's so great, but his interpretation, he's the most listened to. Okay. Says that the word mischief mm. means not believing in Allah. So the verse you quoted, if you kill one man, you kill all of humanity. Yeah? Unless, which is a big word, they cause mischief. And then you execute them, you cut off their hands and feet, and you exile them from the land. Okay, again. So kill them. So the again, verse, you again, the verse no, no, that you no, said wait. is peaceful again, actually again, says kill them. No, again, you're, ta you're taking it out of context. I'm not taking it out of context. That's the first thing. And yeah. who, Ibn Kafir, yeah. he said that that word means... Mischief. Mischief means non-believer. Mischief. Yeah, but he, he, he means so, not believing so, so one sec. So just because he is somebody that a lot of people listen to, that means we have to take what he says. No, it means that millions do, so it's a problem. But that's their problem. That's not Islam's problem. But it's our problem because it's Islamic teaching. Yeah, it's not our problem as Muslims because that's not Islamic but it's our problem because these people okay but uh, okay so let's so th it is a problem because you quoted yeah because of that we ordained in the children of Israel that if anyone killed a person not in retaliation of murder or to spread mischief in the land it would be as if he killed all of mankind that's right. the verse you quoted yeah? okay and if anyone saved life he saved all of mankind. Mm -hmm. the problem is when you're talking about context yeah as you carry on reading mm -hmm. the the recompense of those who wage war against Allah and his messenger and do mischief in the land is only that they shall be killed or crucified mm. or their hands and feet cut off okay. from opposite sides or to be exiled from the land. Mm. That is their disgrace in the world. So when we're talking about context and understanding, now it's great that you don't, that you ignore number Okay, 33. wait, wait. Go back to the beginning of that again. Read that because again. of that, we ordained for the children. No, no, no. Go back to... Yeah, okay, go on. Yeah, go, we go ordained back. for the children of Israel that okay. if anyone killed... So, right, children of Israel. So what does that mean? That if anyone, no, no, this is that if anyone killed a person, not in retaliation... No, no, when, when Allah speaks in the Quran and yeah. he says children of Israel, yeah. he's talking about the time of the Prophet. He's talking about the children of Israel in the time of the Prophet. That doesn't apply to now, this time. You see no, what I'm talking does. about when I say... Anyone who wages war no, against no, Allah and his that, No, it doesn't. That is all one verse. That's the same. He's still talking about the same thing. That doesn't apply to now. Do you understand what I'm trying to say now about taking it out of context? This does not apply to today. This applies to the time of the Prophet, peace but be upon him. But that's not what, what, so, so what Muhammad said back then only mattered back then? Yeah. That, so that doesn't matter now? No, that doesn't apply to so now. So why don't we get rid of this? Because it's why don't we get rid of this because he, no, you can't get rid of that. We know that you can't get rid of that because that applies to that time. We we in order for us to understand our religion now, we need to understand what happened in our history to understand our current and to understand okay, our so future. But, but the verse says clearly. Yeah. That if anyone causes mischief, which is yeah. actually Lee Wigby's killer, handed over that exact verse. Okay. That's the verse he handed over. Okay. And and justified his killing of Lee Wigby based on. But that again, that's not to do with Islam. That's say, to do with him. Out, say out of context. So I'll let you say, say out of context. Yeah. Read this one, number thirty-four. So this is Surah four, verse thirty-four. Can where, you read, read where would that you, where, which so okay. So it'll start. It will start here. Yeah. Men are in charge of women. Men are in charge of women. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it says, Bismillah. 
Men are in charge of women because Allah hath made one of them to excel the other, and because they spend of their property for support of women. So good women are the obedient, guarding in secret that which Allah has, has hath guarded. As for those from whom ye fear, rebel rebellion, admonish them and banish them to, to beds apart and sc and scourge them. Scourge them, do you know what scourge means? What does it mean? We'll get a translation up from the from the from the translation. Okay. That's a whip used as an instrument. Okay. So what he's saying is if your wife doesn't obey you, whip her. Firstly who wrote this Quran? That's the okay, first thing. Okay, this is the main. This is the main recognized Quran. Yeah. This so is let's go to go to there. Hilali. Because okay. again, this is this is misleading again. Okay. Because the word you're going to find is different. It's dara. That is sold. It's darabun. The word is darabun. That's yeah. what it is. And the word darabun. There's loads of meanings for darabun. Darabun doesn't just mean hit. So should See? we delete that verse? We'll delete the translation. Delete the translation. Yeah, delete so the translation. Definitely delete the translation. We don't know. This is what book is this? I've never seen a Quran like this before in my life. That's the Quran. Read who's from. Where are we? Carol jacket ja jacket Sarah design by Carol. Who wrote this Quran? Okay, so for, for, for this is Al Halali. Isn't it? it doesn't even say who wrote this Quran. This one's Al Halali. It's the most recognised in the world. Yeah, Al okay, one second. Everyone's this is Al Halali. So Alfred, he's not even a Muslim. The person that did it the is. person that this is not even a Muslim. Let me see. Yes. That is. Wait, wait. Alfred, that's not a Muslim name. Alfred. That's the printer. Yeah. Okay. Every man's library. That's so library. Where's, where's the person that actually wrote this? Because I've never seen this Quran in my life. That's what I'm saying. You have to be careful this what books you're reading. Okay. Because people have agendas. The meaning. Is, this is this is the Quran. Yeah. This is the Quran. But look here. Okay. This nah, is this is Al Halali. I don't, I don't think this I is Al Halali. Al Halali. Men are the protectors and maintainers of women. Okay. Let me read that one. Take because that. Allah has made one over the other. Yeah. Which is true. That's not yeah. a lie. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Where is it? And then. Okay, so men are the protectors and maintainers of women because Allah has made one of them to excel the other and because they spend to support them, which is true, from their means. Therefore, the righteous women are devoutly obedient to Allah and to their husbands and guard in their husband's absence what Allah orders. Yeah, this is this is more correct. Okay. Um, to guard, e.g. their sh chastity and their husband's property. As to those women on whose part you see ill conduct. Okay. okay. Ah, okay, okay. And now where's this little tape over there? Yeah, there. Um. I think, it, I think it, care, oh, is it does it come on here? Yeah, uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. yeah. Yeah, this is the verse. So this is correct. The other one you showed me, that's not yeah. correct. So, um, admonish them first. Next, refuse to share the, their beds. And last, beat them lightly. No, okay, so. Beat them, but lightly is in Wait, sure. wait. See, this is this yeah. is the problem. Now. This is the translation again. Beat them lightly. But if you read the Quran, and to understand it, you have to read it in Arabic, because that's the original language of it, Maybe right? It says in the so, one. one sec. So, here, I'm going to tell you what. I don't need I that. I know it says, it says beat them. It's, it says doesn't say lightly. One sec. It says darabun. That's the word. Darabun. It doesn't now, say lightly. Now, the beautiful thing about the Arabic language is one word can mean many things. Yeah. It has so many meanings. One dot, one one little line can change the whole meaning. Now, darabun doesn't necessarily mean hit. Darabun, there is uh, many translations. It means demonstration. It means protest. So, so why, why would Al Halali, the most yeah. recognised English Quran, yeah. Yeah, why would it say beat them? I don't know why he would so say that. So shall we get rid of this? Al Halali's Quran. Maybe the translation. Would you support Maybe. getting rid of that? I don't. I don't support his translation. I don't think he should say. I don't think. I think he should say darabun, but he should explain in the translation or in the footnote that there is different meanings to darabun. At the end of the day, the word B is used in every single one of them. No, in it's, every it's not used in every. Yeah, in, in, every, in, every, in every, every English translation in, of Quran. Yes, but they should. They should. They. Sh you have to remember. Yeah, that. Th th there's people who corrupt the Bible. There is also people who are out here working trying to corrupt the Quran. Okay. Now we know that well, Arabun, Al he's a Muslim. So Al 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 it doesn't matter just because he's a Muslim. Let me let me tell you something. Tommy. So the argument is that if this you see, corrupt. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying his translation may be may be corrupt. Maybe it's maybe it's not. Darabun, he he's translated it as in How as in Darabun? as in hit. Uh, so D A Hold on one sec. D A R A yeah. B O N. But you'd have to do it in Arabic. Because the thing is, I came across... See, when I used to go down to speak... I'm going to be so honest with you, Tommy. I used to go down to speakers' corner. And I used to think I know so much about the religion. And still I get, until I started getting asked questions by people. And they're asking me, how do you explain this? And how do you... When I read this Darabin, verse... But how do you spell Darabin? Uh, D... But you have to do it in Arabic. Okay, can you write Arabic? Cause what Arabic I yeah. can't write Arabic. D-A-R-A-B-O-N, I think, in English. D -A -R -A -B -O -N. Okay, yeah, so it comes up as that. Now, uh, p copy and paste that and put the different different meanings 
of this word and it's going to tell you it's going to come up as demonstra dem demonstration protest so, so amongst I, other words why, why, why would yeah why would mm. every English translation in the Quran mm -hmm. say beat your wife I don't know but why why wouldn't they also explain that Darabon has many different meanings it doesn't necessarily mean hit See, it could but mean the answer protest can't be, when you pick up an English Quran yeah. it says the word beat them yeah? we were talking about interpretation when it clearly says beat your wife she mm. doesn't agree with you yeah it says beat them with a whip in one it says beat them in the English one yeah, yeah? Every, okay okay if look. it says that yeah okay, then we've look. got a bit of a problem with we no, but we do. We do have a bit of a problem. Whoever whoever translated this needs to clear this up, and they should write that there is different meanings for well, the word actually, darabun. They've actually inserted so you're right. Not in it, but but well. also we can also argue and say that uh, Muslims the, who do, who no do they word, follow? There's no word darabun. You, you need to do. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to I'm going to do it for myself after, and yep. I'm going to send it to okay. you, and then you can add it into the video. Yeah. So it's but um, also, who do the, the Muslims follow? The Prophet Muhammad. Right. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did he ever beat his wife? Did he ever beat his wife? Never. Did. Well, there's lo lots of hadith. So the Prophet Muhammad, they follow the Prophet Muhammad, which is why the age for consent is when a girl We're going to get to that. No, we're going to get to that because I've, mm. I've already... So you see this, what we're talking about now? I had a huge problem with this. Why? Because I'm not a Muslim that just follows blindly. If I see something that I don't agree with, yeah. like I will question it. I will get really personal about it. And yeah. if, I, if that came out to be true, I, w I would not. I'd say, do you know what? I don't want to be a part of that. So would you support not selling this Quran in the UK and getting rid of it? No, I wouldn't support mosque? that. But what I would support is put the different trans... Put, put the, that Darabun has many meanings. Don't just put Darabun and then let people speculate because then you're going to have this kind of problem. So can I ask you, is that the only problem that you have with this verse? Is just the fact of the Darabun, the word Darabun? Yeah, or do you have also have the problem that men are strong over women and... Men own women. Men don't... It doesn't say that men own women. What's it say? Men are, men are the property, of, or women is the property of the man, yeah? It, it didn't say that. Men are, men are, have, have made one of them to excel the other. And because they spend to support them, from their means, therefore... Do you know what, I'm, I'm actually, because I've got the Arabic one here, so I'm, meet, I'm meeting an Arabic lad on Wednesday to go through all this. Okay. For another, for another video, yeah? Yeah. For another video, because everyone says it has to be the Arabic, Arabic translation. Yeah. But when we look, I've got lots of verses that I have a problem with here, yeah? That, like, like the one, the one you quoted, yeah? If you kill one man, you kill all of humanity. Yeah, but I, I answered that unless, for you. I answered that Unless for you. they kill... Yeah, but that's in context. That's in the, in, when you say, oh, Beni Israel, yeah, children of Israel, he's talking about the days of the prophet. He's not talking about... That doesn't apply now. Well, you need to... Well, okay, so it doesn't apply now, but Lee Rigby's killer handed that verse over as to why he killed Okay, so Lee Rigby, he's evilly mentally ill. He's, or he's been brainwashed. Or maybe this shouldn't be accessible. No, with maybe, verses no, 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 no. He needs to understand. You can't read a book if you don't have an, an, an understanding. There needs to be an understanding. Salman Abedin so, had an understanding. Okay, he so is it, is it the Quran's fault or is it Allah's fault that this guy didn't? Why is it I have an understanding and he doesn't understand, have an understanding? Well, I don't. Th I think you're ignoring it. You think I'm ignoring it? Ignoring trust me, any I'm not. Though. Trust me, I'm not ignoring it. I question every single. Say, I, for example, I question first. everything. So, okay, so let's look at that. You see, even we're going to get, I don't want to get to it now, but you see, even the apostates. Yeah. You can ask Muhammad Hijab and you can, you can ask Ali Dawa this. One day I was in Speaker's Corner yeah, yeah. and somebody came up to me, even about Sophia. People come up to me and they said to me, Oh, did you know that if, you was an, if, you, if, you, that if you're an apostate, you get killed? I was like, What? That's the first time I'd ever heard that. And I totally disagree with that. So I got really upset and I got really angry. And I remember Muhammad Hijab was in the middle of, of a discussion in Speaker's Corner. Yeah. I think even Shemsi, I, I went up to him as well and Ali Dawa and I said, look, I, I, I need an answer for this now. Is this true? They said to me, yes, there is hadith that say this. I actually went home and I was crying. I went to my dad, I had tears in my eyes and I was crying because I was like, look, if this is true, this doesn't sit, this doesn't sit with me. So I went out of my way to do research on it and I'm going to get to that after because that's also here as well. So I'm not the person who chooses to ignore because I can't ignore. If something doesn't sit with me, then I need to find the, the reason why it's not sitting with me. I'm not going to blindly follow something and dedicate my life to something that is not sitting with me. Can, I, can you read this? Number, number, so this is 65 for you. Let me see. Read this one out loud. Okay. Because when it comes down to interpretation, like, I'd love to know your answer on this. Okay, and those of your women as have Let's passed the age... Let's talk about marriage and divorce, yeah? It's explaining who you can marry, who can divorce, when you can be married. Okay, yeah? and those of your women as have passed the age of monthly courses, for them, the idha, okay, pres prescribed period. If you have doubt about their periods, is three months. And for those who have no courses, i.e. they are still immature, their idha prescribed period is three months. Likewise, except in case of death. So that's um, telling you how to divorce someone who hasn't started puberty. 
No, it's not. Where I mean, did yeah. you get that from? Because it says if you haven't, if you're immature and haven't started your courses. Okay, wait, wait, hang on. What context is this now again? It's divorce. It's telling it, Mohammed's giving explanations of how to. If someone's divorcing someone, One he's telling them Allah, that, will be that you can divorce them. Allah yeah? Allah if they're immature and haven't started their puberty yet. Yeah? Wait for him to get up. He will provide him from sources he never could imagine, and whoever puts his trust in Allah, then he will suffice him. Verily, Allah will. Let's explain Muslims how to divorce purpose. a prepubescent child. Indeed, Allah has set a measure for all things, and those. Of your women as have passed the age of monthly courses for them the idha period prescribed if you have doubt about their periods this has got nothing to do with if you have doubt about their periods i said this is about divorce okay hang yeah, on like except in case of death and for those who are pregnant whether they are divorced or their husbands are dead their idha prescribed period is until they lay so you have down to wait three months after and someone's fears been Allah divorced in and case they're pregnant to him he will make but what it says oh, hang on hang on and for those who are pregnant whether they are divorced or their husbands are dead. Yeah, but this is it's not... It's the immature bit. The immature is, bit is, he, he says, is, if you're immature, yeah, you have no, to start this No, is, this, is this is not saying what you're... Again, you, 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 you see, you're not understanding well, it explain right. Explain to me what he's saying. This, he's just... He's saying, and for those who, who are? are pregnant, whether they no, are no, divorced... No, not pregnant. Immature. The immature part. Where is that? Just um, a bit higher. For those who have no courses, i.e. they are still immature. So if those so who haven't started puberty, who are still immature, he's telling you how to divorce them. Age or period. He's not telling you how to divorce them. This is nothing. This this up here is nothing to do with divorce. This is to do with divorce. He's giving you different scenarios. He's, this is nothing to do with divorce. So what, at the top. what was he talking about? Someone being. He's just talking about in general. He say he's just talking about in general. In general, what? So, so he's talking about an immature woman who hasn't started a puberty. Uh, who hasn't started a. a well, right, okay. Look, look. Let's start from the testament. That will be an admonish, ad, ad, admonition given to him who believes in Allah in the last day and whoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to him. He will make a way for him to get out of every difficulty and he will provide for him sources he never could imagine. This is nothing to do with divorce. Yeah, yeah? Then you carry on card to number four. And those of your women as have passed the age of monthly courses for them, the idha prescribed period. If What's you have, mean? So basically, I'm, we're going to get to this as well because yeah. you spoke about, um, you spoke about Sophia yeah. where you said that the Prophet... Um, Beheaded her, kill, her kill, killed kill, her kill father, yeah. and killed her son, and then he slept with her the same night. Basically, he raped her. This is the idha. It, what you said is impossible. He couldn't have slept with Sophia the same night. No, two nights, two nights later, three nights Even later, two nights is impossible nights. because, oh. it, as explained to you here, the idha. He has to wait for the idha because, especially given the fact that she was already married, he has to wait. A that's month. in the hadith. No, no, that's in the biography of Muhammad. No, no, this is this is this is this is uh, this is Sahih. This is Islam. This yeah, is you. So can, you can cannot you cannot go by that. So he he could not have raped her that night. He, could not, he couldn't have slept with her. That's idha. You got away. Divorce. Yeah. It, no, that's not divorce. Idha yeah. is so. For example, she was married. When he married her, he can't just sleep with her. He has to wait at least a month, up to three months, to make sure she's not. Which pregnant. is what I'm saying here. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. get carry on reading and get to the bit where he says. All right. And those of your women as have women passed the immature. age of monthly courses for them, the idha prescribed period. If you have doubt about their periods, is three months. And for those who have no courses, i.e., they are still immature, the idha prescribed period is three so months. The waiting period. Like of divorce is three months for someone who hasn't started puberty. Yeah, but this is not implying that they need to get married. No, this is this is him giving the rule. Yeah. At the rules, the rules of, of how what? long to wait. Yeah. For if you're divorcing someone, how long to wait till they remarry? Yeah, but he's not talking about. He's not saying that the people, the the people who haven't had, no, who are immature, if they are still immature, the idha prescribed period is three months. Likewise. Yeah, so, so, so what's he mean there? Um, hang on, for those who have no courses, i.e., they are still immature. So those of you who haven't had puberty. Hang on, wait, wait, wait. You see, again, this is again a translate. Some women, some yeah. women, they don't get periods. Are you saying immature? The words yeah, but who? But if you look at those of you who have not started your periods and you're immature. Okay, so look, look. I.e., they are still immature. That's in brackets. Yeah. So that's not what he said. That's what this person is translating. Yeah. Okay. You understand? So how does he know that that's what that means? Well, that's what it's okay. Okay. There's. I have a friend. I have a friend of mine. One second. I have a friend of mine who doesn't have periods at all. She never had a period in her life, but she could still have kids. Okay. So he could be meaning. As for those who don't have periods, you still have to wait three months because they still could be pregnant, but they don't have periods. It could be meaning. Yeah, because it's in brackets. But that's not from it the words of that's not from the okay, words of Allah. Okay, we, what we need to take is from the words of Allah in Arabic. That's what so we need to take. So do you support getting rid of Al Hilali's Quran? Because at the minute it says beat your wife, and it also says I think that they need to be. I think that they need to be more 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 broad on their translation. Well, more broad their translation. The problem is this is to millions of British Muslims are going through these. Yeah, problems. I agree with you. I agree with you. I think that's a, that's a huge problem. I absolutely agree with you. Because and again, when we say interpretation, some like, people they so don't the, have the, the, experts, the, the experts, capacity to question these. Al Halali and these experts, mm. yeah, are taking it a different way to you're taking it. 
Yeah. Well, that's that's a problem. Okay. That is okay, a problem. Okay, so this is the same way they're saying, gra grab the, wherever you see the Jews and the Christians, grab them and kill them, they're taking it as in this day, now and age. No, it's not. Again, it's out of Which context. Which is great. But whose problem is that? It's not Islam. It's not the Quran. It's the Muslims. That's why when you say, well, for me, I, for me, I have for a me, problem me, with Islam. For me, if, if that verse wasn't in there, yeah. neither of those verses. Mm. Yeah. If we said, okay, well, that's not applicable to today, why don't they just put in brackets, not applicable anymore? Yeah. Why they don't should. They? You know, like you have a smoke, you have a cigarette. Not, box. not, no. It, I don't think they should put not applicable anymore. They should explain that this was in the time of the problem. But, so but then so again, then again, yeah, but hang on, hang on. Then again, saying, that, up, get, saying that, saying that. Listen, we're yeah. we're living in an age now where everything knowledge is at your fingertips. Yeah. Why don't these people get up and go and research? Because they'll go pick this up, mm -hmm. like I have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you want, do you think it's Islamophobic for me to read these verses as I just have mm -hmm. and have a problem with them? I think it's. Bear in mind, this I is think, I, think, I think it's Islamophobic if you read those verses and don't do the research to find out what's re what it really means. So is Michael Adeblajo, Lee Rigby's killer, Islamophobic? Is he Islamophobic? I, he no. Islamophobic? I think he's either mentally Was mentally Salman ill. Abedi Islamophobic? He's either mentally ill or he's misguided, and he that's not that's he's either mentally ill, being paid by the government, or he's 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 misguided. He doesn't know. See, he just know. for me, it just seems a cop out to take the blame away. But it's not. It's, it's like not. If if this book, it's not. If this if if, the, if those words were not in this book, <clears throat> yeah. Then there's no excuse. If those words came directly from Allah Himself or from the Prophet Alayhi Salam, I'm with you. I agree with you. Because you're saying Qala Allah, no one can argue with that. But if those words are in bracket and it's a translation of the person who's translating well, the Quran, when you're saying then bracket, but when you're saying this bracket, person is just a human so being. Okay, so you can't have it both ways because the bracket bit yeah. said lightly. B. The actual word is B. Yeah, and, but why and, did, and then why did he... Why did he... Okay, so why? All right. Lightly. Okay, okay. So, but it, okay. That, so Dara Bourne has many different meanings. Why did he choose that meaning? Why didn't he choose demonstrate? He's the Islamic expert. But he's not... He's not he's it's his Quran that's selling to millions and millions well, of he's people. Well, he... Yeah, okay, that's fine. This but he, he should fringe, still... He this should is not still, a fringe Quran. Okay, that's fine. Look, no, be, may God, may God bless him. I'm not going to I'm not gonna say anything bad about him. Because Al Hilal is one of the most recognised scholars. Yeah, but still, he. it's a fact that Dara Bourne means many different things. That's a fact. But the, do, you, do you understand why, as a British citizen... No, I understand. I, I, I don't totally really, understand. I don't really care to have this whole argument about interpretation. I, just don't I totally it. understand. I, just don't I totally it. understand and I, so, I, because, and I agree. Like, it is a like, problem. Okay, that's it is wrong, a problem. That's and this doesn't mean this. But when we've got when we've got children being blown up in Manchester, people being beheaded, yeah. we've got people literally... That's a problem. Picture, people literally quoting this stuff. That's a problem. When we've got... Yeah, even the grooming gangs... Problem. The grooming gangs make comments to these verses. Yeah? Mm -hmm. There's ver four verses. Uh, we can get them up if you want again. All right. Your grooming gangs. This mm. is what we're moving on to on. next. Okay. So you claim to be concerned with gro grooming, grooming gangs, paedophiles, rape, etc. However, you only seem to focus on the Muslims or particularly the Asians. Mm. If you are genu genuinely concerned with this, then why do you not focus on it as a whole? As it's not, it's not only the Asians who commit um, these heinous crimes. In fact, research and statistics from the Home Office 2020 are most commonly shows that that people who do this are most commonly white and come from diverse backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Grooming is actively huge right now. Hollywood society, music industry, the modern industry, Prince Andrew, Epstein, Jimmy Savile, Harvey Weinstein, popes, priests. The list goes on. Why is it that you only choose to focus on the Asians? Mm -hmm. The Home, the Home Office actually fudged those figures. So that 2020 report, mm. what they did, there's two different types of paedophile gangs. Yeah? Mm. The, the vast majority are white. Yeah? Lone, uh, predatory paedophiles. Mm. Yeah, men going on their own and committing paedophilia, whether it be within the family or whatever. I think upwards of 90% in the UK are white males. Yeah? Mm. Right? Then there's another section of, mm. of paedophiles, which is the overrepresentation of the Muslim community, yeah? which is groups. Groups. Now, what the Home Office done was change it to, to a figure of two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then they could muddy the waters between paedophilia and and the two different categories. Mm -hmm. So then they could fudge the figures. Now the figures actually show. And one gentleman done this called Peter McLaughlin. What he done was he took every conviction mm. of gangs of men. Yeah. So say there was eight men, and he took their names because we don't ask for their religion. He took their names and traced their names to see if they're Islamic names. And in that study, Quilliam, Muslim organisation, mm. said it was eighty four percent. He said it was 90%. 30% of the men convicted for this type, so I am being clear, yeah, this type of sexual exploitation of children where groups of men who know each other, work colleagues, friends, brothers, cousins, sometimes fathers and sons, mm -hmm. are raping children. 30% of the men convicted are called Muhammad. 30%. Okay. Yeah. Muslims make up 4-5% of the UK. I believe it's 10, but 4-5% mm. of the UK. So Muslim males make up 2% of the UK. 
How are they representative of 90% of the convictions? There's a problem. Now, the question was, why don't I look at others? My cousin was a victim of these gangs in Luton, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I grew up knowing of this problem. We have different journalists who cover different things. Some cover sport, some cover politics, yeah? I, I, I focused on exposing a crime that had been facilitated, accommodated, and hidden, yeah? By a section of a community. Mm -hmm. The reason it was facilitated, accommodated, and hidden was because of who these men were. They're Pakistani and they're Muslim. That's now come out in the Rochdale report, in the Rotherham report, in the uh, Telford report. It's come out in every investigation that's gone on. The police let it happen mm. through fear of being branded racist. Okay. So the reason I focus on it is because it was hidden, it was allowed, and no one was doing anything about it. Yeah? That's why I focused on it. Successfully focused on it mm -hmm. to bring it up to, to a point of everyone understanding it. Mm -hmm. Now in Telford, Telford is where I've done a five-part series called The Rape of Britain. Mm -hmm. This is where the numbers are absolutely terrifying. And I want to make one thing clear, yeah, which I've done in my Leeds case. In my, when I was outside Leeds Court and I got remanded, what I said is, I know Muslims lads that I've grown up with who would want to kick the fuck out of these lot. Yeah? Who, I know lads who would not stand by yeah, while, while this paedophilia has gone on. Yeah? But that doesn't change what's happened and it doesn't change the numbers. Now in Telford, the police, the police inquiry identified 200 men. Hmm. There's only 3,000 Muslims in Telford. Yeah? 200 men, when you get rid of the under-16s, when you, when you cut it down, there's only 1,000 Muslim men who fit the age bracket. Yeah? Okay. That's 20% of the men were identified as raping kids. Okay. Only 11 got charged. 20%. That is an astronomical problem if 20% of the Muslims in one town were... We're, we're, we're raping kids. This is something we've never seen before. Where work colleagues, if, if any other company, if there was a non-Muslim business and seven workers, and one of the workers said, I've got a 12-year-old girl, mm. they get battered. Yeah? How come all of them literally queue up and rape the girl? How come brothers, cousins, colleagues, fathers and sons are raping children together? There's something very different. Now, what I ask is, and what I believe we need to ask this question, is how come we're not getting these statistics from the Sikh community? How come we're not getting them from the Hindu community? Why not? Why is it that 90% of convictions are Muslim men? Why okay. is it that 30% are called Mohammed? Why okay. is it that the man in the Bristol case stood up and said it was his religious duty to do it? Why is it that the Rochdale case, before the man murdered her, he, me he messaged his friend and said, I'm going to bury this Kafar bitch about her being a non-Muslim? Why is it that all the girls, they make racial and religious comments to them? Why? Okay, so that's I, my can issue. I, can I answer that? Yeah, go on. Okay, so firstly, um, just to, to, to just to be sorry clear. if I seem like I'm no, no, I'm you're very clear. passionate. Yeah, yeah, about I am it. passionate. And I, so uh, I don't want the passionate to come no, out. No, no, no. I'm just even pulling out the Quran. No, it's fine. No, I'm glad. I'm glad you did yeah, that. I'm glad you did that. I'm, I I, this is real. This yeah. is real. I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. Anything you feel like yeah. doing or saying, I want you to. I'm say. actually going to Sweden, and we're preparing because I'm going to Sweden to meet yeah. someone who keeps burning the Quran, and I'm going to him to say, well, why are you doing? I respect that. Why? I don't know. In the sense that I think. I don't think I don't think burning it helps. Yeah, I think reading it helps. Doing going through verses. Yeah. I welcome. To understand, yeah. I welcome yeah. sitting with people. No, I appreciate yeah. you doing that, yeah. and I want so, you to yeah. be yourself. I want yeah. you to be passionate. I yeah. want you to say whatever it is you want to say. Mm. But so back to the grooming gangs. Um, I think I just want to say I don't condone grooming. Rape, rape is one of the worst things. I, I absolutely hate rape. If I was a judge and someone came up before me on rape, I'd throw the book at them. Honestly, I really hate rape, so I, I just like to make it clear that I don't con condone any of that. However, rapists and paedophiles come from all different backgrounds and all, are all over the world, and it's very prevalent, especially now in this day in this day and age. Okay, but when a white person rapes somebody, or uh, you never hear oh Christian or atheist, but it's like whenever an Asian rapes someone, it's always Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. Why do they not just say Asian instead of saying Muslims? Because when right? you say Asian, that, that unfairly that unfairly stereotypes the Sikh community and Hindu community have got nothing to do with these crimes. Okay, but then when you say Muslims, that unfairly targets Muslims don't, that don't do that don't do this. But kind of the stuff. reason the reason given, so I, I give a speech, I consider it in Russia called the rape uh, called the rape, called the rape of Britain again. Mm -hmm. I give a presentation in Russia where I went through the men's statements in court. Yeah. Okay. And what the victims said they said, okay. they literally quote the Quran. They literally quote the Quran. Okay, so I'm glad you said that. If we are going to talk about Asians and Muslims, okay, the, I've heard, because I've, I've, I've watched a few of your stuff when you're speaking about it and, and, and other documentaries and stuff where they say that these Asians use alcohol to groom some of these younger girls. So, firstly, alcohol is haram. It's forbidden in Islam. You're not allowed to drink. That's the first thing. So the fact that they're, they're using alcohol in the first place shows that they're not abiding by Islamic rules and that's actually not 
a Muslim. They say that the, the, the line between a Muslim and a non-Muslim is prayer. If you pray, then you don't drink. It's impossible to drink and pray at the same time. Some people do, but uh, it, alcohol is haram. It's against the religion. So them using uh, alcohol to groom these young girls, say for example, that's nothing okay, to do with Islam. Say for example, One second. Young, say, but say for example, the actual, sex, the actual yeah. sex act in itself is haram. You're not allowed to have sex before marriage. That's fornication. That's considered zina. You're not allowed to do that. So these these acts that these people carry, intoxication, drinking alcohol, grooming, having sex before marriage, this is all un-Islamic. Okay. Islam is free from what this. What about the verses in the Quran that state outside your four wives you can take whatever your right arm possess? Again, in what context are you talking about? Concubines. That's in war. Con yeah, that's, war. That's in yeah, war. war. At war. Okay. Yeah. okay, so when at war, yeah? Yeah. But, so you have, you have house of war and house of God yeah? okay. in Islam. Elder Arab and Elder Islam. So... All, what we're saying is, is that if at war, so mm -hmm. many Muslims, yeah. many Muslims will feel they're at war with Britain, and you know, the Britons at war with them. Many yeah, Muslims. but you see, that's 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 not Muslims. No, okay, but to, because to, as so a to Muslim, as a crimes, Muslim, you you have to respect. And this is what I'm about to come to now. Yeah. The video of the, of the Oxford. As a Muslim, so basically, I watched the the, the Oxford full address video where you played footage from uh, Stacey Dooley, who I greatly admire. I really love her work. Um, the documentary where extreme Muslims were marching and protesting and they were chanting British police go to hell, UK go to hell. This woman who was wearing a, a, a burqa and a niqab covering her face also told Stacey that she was naked and asked her who she, it was that she was trying to, to seduce. Now I want to make it clear that I, I, I want to apologise to Stacey for having that experience off of that woman because that's not Islamic. That woman has no right to tell Stacey what to wear or what not to wear in her own country. If you don't, and this goes for all sisters out there, and I'm, I, I might get backlash for this, I might, I don't care. I just say it how it is. Do you understand the reception you'd get if you walk through with your gentleman here, yeah. through Lutonsbury Park, as a Muslim, with your hair like this and not covering up? Yeah, but the thing is, I don't, I don't really care. No, no, but, but, but what I'm saying is, so I don't have, say, I can say Yeah, I don't care. They can't you, say nothing to me because I'm a Muslim. Will, yeah? No, they can try to, no, but, but if will. I tell, if my, I'm... My point being, my okay. point being, my yeah. point being... We can sit here, people can watch this, yeah. you're lovely, you're a nice person, mm. you're a Muslim. If only every, every Muslim followed it the way you do. What I'm saying is, in, in towns like Okay, Luton, so that's what I'm trying to show you. Yeah, so this, like I'm glad you just said that. What I'm trying to show you is, the problem is not Islam, it's the people. So I'm, 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 I'm a, a prime example of what it should be like, of what how the thought process should be like. These people who are out here, are carry, that, that's disgusting. That behaviour is... The, first there's whole organisations and look, mass numbers I'm a Muslim, of thousands I'm a Muslim, of she's a Muslim. Yeah. What she did was disgusting. That angered me. That absolutely angered me. How dare you say to Stacey Doody, you're naked. Firstly, she wasn't naked. She was wearing a dress and she was quite covered. If she wants to dress up that way, that's her business. This is her country. If you don't like it, you go back to your country. Which is great, but that's not the mindset coming out of the Muslim community of Luton. That's because yeah. that's their problem. They're they're not educated. I'd say you're in the minority. I don't think I don't think I'm in the minority. I think that they're in the minority. Not wearing a hijab, you're totally in the minority. No, Every single Muslim no, there's minority. people who wear hijabs and niqabs and they don't think like that. They do not look. Okay, Islam, I mean, okay. Islam tells you. Allah tells you when you are in a land that is not your land, you must respect and abide by their rules. Unless they're 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 taking you away from your religion, mm -hmm. and Britain doesn't do that. We've got mosques everywhere. What Britain's never well, said to us you're not allowed to pray in a mosque. Many people say when it, Britain invaded Afghanistan, they broke the covenant. They broke. They broke it. Well, I don't know what covenant they're what, talking what about, about. What about? What would you? So, what would you say to to uh, to Britain? Yeah, you're British. You, where was you born? I was born in London. Yeah, so you're British. So, what would you say? Yeah. Do, do you think? Do you think London's got better or worse growing up there? To think? be honest with you, I think London's got worse. Do you think? We should, because we're going to do a separate podcast. Should we just do it all as one? Do you think that we should? Do you, what about mass immigration? Would you shut the borders to immigration? Do you think we should continue having? I would shut the I would shut the borders to immigration. Yeah, yeah and I will tell you why. Um, not because I'm racist or because I just think that if you are uh, failing to be able to supply for your own people who are already here. Yeah, why then why would you open the doors and let other people come in? You're giving jobs that you could be giving to people who are born and bred here to people who are coming from other countries. Not that I'm saying they don't... If, if there was the capacity, if we had the jobs, if we had the houses, by all means open the gates and let them in. But if we don't and we're struggling and we can't even give our own people who are born and bred here, then what, why are we opening doors for people and letting them in when we don't have the what, means what about, to what provide? About, what about, like, say Saudi Arabia? Would you allow Saudi Arabia to fund mosques? Would I allow, allow Saudi Arabia? Would you allow Saudi money? I would allow or Iranian money. 
I would allow. Uh, I mean, I don't. Because uh, uh, what I'm saying is, I make mm. lots of comments of what I think we should be doing. Yeah. yeah. I think we've got a big problem, right? I think that if everyone was sitting here as a Muslim following the way, the way you interpret it, mm -hmm. we haven't got a problem, yeah? Mm -hmm. Right? So, but they're not. So what do we do as British people when the majority of people in Luton, majority major, majority that we meet in Luton, mm. want, well, 40% of British Muslims want Sharia law? Mm -hmm. What do we do with that? That's absolutely absurd. But, but that 40%, that's a statistic. 40% of British Muslims want Sharia This is not your country. Law. Okay, but what do we do with that 40%? That's two, two well, million. You know, what when, do we you, do when you uh, had a conversation with Ali Dawa, and I remember mm. you saying to him, uh, why are you Muslims not getting up speaking to these jihadists and these extremists. I absolutely agree with you. Yeah. I think that they should, we should be doing more. We should be getting up and we should be speaking to these people and we should be telling them, you know, that that's not the way to conduct yourself. You're making things worse for us as Muslims. You're making, I can, look, you must be, I'm going to be so honest with you. I can see why people hate Muslims. Yeah. If I wasn't a Muslim myself and I didn't know my religion, I would hate Muslims. How about that? Because of the way they conduct themselves, because of the way they speak, because of the way, the things that they say and the things that they do. But do you think it's Islamophobic? So if you would feel like, do you think it's Islamophobic when many in the many British public who are decent people, loving mm. people, who don't have a problem with people based mm. on anything, are sitting there now looking, thinking, Jesus, what's going on in our country, man? And, and as I said, if 40% of British Muslims want Sharia law, what do we do about that? Do you think it's Islamophobic for us to be worried? Like, come on. I don't, think, I don't think it's Islamophobic for you guys to be worried, and but you guys shouldn't be worried because it's but, your country and it's never going to be a Sharia law. That's well, not I don't, many, I don't see many, that happening. Many areas of London yeah. will never look the same. Many areas of London are now dominated with Islam. I think we need to get to the root cause of these extremists and these jihadis, and we need to stop. We need to stop. Well, the root them. cause of them is Saudi Arabian money, mm -hmm. Iranian money, Qatari money. But then again, where is that coming from? Is the government doing this? Are the government are the government funding them? Are the government pushing them to do this so that again we can well, divide and conquer and fight each other? Yeah, but what? So you because but even yeah. the Saudi, even the Saudi government, that's supposed to be an Islamic state. That's supposed to be the most pious, the most. That's where the Prophet ﷺ was. Why are they so corrupt? Why are they pushing these agendas? Why are they but the doing... But the problem I mean is, for many British people... Yeah. ...who are looking at our country, we're looking at the Hamas rallies, we're looking at the ISIS flags, we're looking at the... We're looking at the calls for jihad on the streets. Yeah, that's, what, that's why when I was watching what your, the do? Oxford Full Address and you had, the, you had the, um, uh, uh, Adam Chowdhury... Yeah. And he was saying, uh, he, he was saying But the leader of his, his but to here, they've now prescribed yeah. him, but he organises the biggest... He organised the biggest Gaza rally at the start mm. and they were calling for jihad, jihad, jihad. What do we do? What do the British public we do? Need to put, we need to put a stop to this. We need to get, we need to get Muslims to stand understand? up do, do, do against this. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah? Yeah. But if they haven't, if they haven't yet, and they didn't stand up to the grooming gangs, so there's not one single case, not one case in any of the towns and cities mm. where a Muslim reported on another Muslim for those rapes. Not one. But one case. But they in probably fact, wasn't aware, to be honest. But Even, no, if, there was, if, there wasn't, if they wasn't, if, if they wasn't a part of it, then they're not going to tell other people what they're doing. But everyone knew what's going on. Police knew it was going yeah, on. I, think, I knew it was going on. Yeah, but so I think Muslims not, knew it was going on. Yeah, I get that, but I don't. In regards to um, the rapes and the grooming, I don't think that Muslims. If I knew that that was going on, I'd report okay, it. Okay, I think a lot of Muslims it, were actually no. A lot of Muslims did report it. A lot of people okay, were against it. No, not Muslims, one reported. It. All right, they were stood up against it though. They but were protested against. Only it protested stuff. after the. Only protested after it came out, and they protested. Yeah. Let me tell you why they protested in Rotherham because they wanted to put cameras in their taxis. That's why they protested. They didn't protest about the rapes. Yeah, and. And if most Muslims were against it, uh, Councillor Hussain went to court and gave a character reference for the Rochdale rapists. Mm. The ex-mayor Muslim went to court and gave a character reference. Since he gave that character reference, the Labour Muslim councillor, he's been promoted through the Labour Party. Okay. Yeah? He gave a character reference for men who raped... One girl, so he, that girl who lived in his constituency was raped a hundred times and he didn't go to court to help her. The councillor went to court and he got mm. voted back in. Okay. Yeah? He got voted back in. So it's like... It's not viewed with the same venom or but disgust. But I think, I, think, I think with grooming, when it comes to grooming, it's mainly happening... And they blame in, the girls. That's in Luton. It's not happening everywhere. No, there's so, 65 seats. So, okay, 65 seats. But that's, more, that's, every, more, of every a, that's more of a uh, police criminal investigation. That's more... But in terms of jihadists and terrorism, that's something where all Muslims can get up and stand up and speak against it and try to stop this there's ideology 40, from going by. Say, for example, from there's, there's 40,000 British Muslims on the terror watch list. 40,000? Mm. Yeah. What do we do with them? Do you understand? I know because people, we're Islamophobic, racist, far right. If we've got 40,000, mm. if we've got grooming, if I'm picking up this book and reading these verses which literally say beat your wife or literally say how to, how to divorce, you're going to say it's the wrong translation. That's the main Quran in the UK for mm. Muslims. Do you get 
that it's not far right, it's not racist, it's just we're worried. Okay, but again, look, we can look at it from this angle then. Why don't we look at the root cause of it? Why did why did the, say the, that is, why I, did the US government uh, do 9-11? Yeah, why I'll, did I'll, why I'll did the US government why I'll did the US helps. government send troops into Iraq, Afghanistan, um, all of these countries? W look at look at what's happening now in Palestine. Why are they doing all all, all of these things? For every action is a reaction. I'm not saying it's the correct reaction, but for every action is a reaction. There's people who are sitting back watching this, feeling violated. There's people who who have had their mums bombed. There's people who have had their daughters bombed, their dads bombed, their families bombed. They've been bombed. They've lost the arm, lost the arm or leg. How do you think these people feel? I get it. So we have to look at, at both sides. It, but but uh, yeah, look at both sides. But again, not that but I condone what, what this, I'm saying I want to make it clear. Is, I do, do not condone terrorism. Do you understand why we, or why people who follow me, who are being called racist and extremists mm -hmm. and, and Islamophobes, mm -hmm. for simply being concerned about all the problems. I, each, each time I've pointed out a problem, whether it be terrorists, you say, yeah, I'd, I'd stop it. I'd do that. So you're agreeing with me mm -hmm. on a lot of the issues mm -hmm. that make me a racist and extremist. Well, I don't think, I think if you're... Like, you I'm said gonna, that's not I'm right. Gonna, I'm going to be honest right. with you. This isn't right. When Ooh. I first um, used to watch you and, and uh, knew about you, I thought you was a racist. Mm. I really did think you was a racist. After I started speaking to you and watching some of your stuff and how... I started being co conflicted. Because I'm a Muslim and the way you speak to me, you talk to me with respect, you know, we bust joke, we laugh, like mm. you don't treat me any different, you know. And then when you're... you're I, I, but I, now I don't look at you as a racist and the reason why I don't look at you as a racist is because I can see that the reason why you have the perception that you have is because of these things that these jihadis are doing, these terrorists are doing, these grooming gangs are doing. You're, you're, you know, this is your country. You're thinking these people are coming into my country and they're doing this. I need to put my foot down and I need to, you know, I need to fight for my country. So from that angle, I respect, I respect what you're doing. However, I feel like I don't think you're a bad person. I just feel like you're 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 not. I think you still need to be educated, and I say this in a respectful way. I feel I feel like you still need to be a bit more educated in regards to Islam, the real Islam, the See, real I, religion I think, of I think, Islam. I think that the debate is like: should we just let our country be a experiment for who's going to decide what the real Islam is? It's like I don't want it to. I don't want to add the problem anymore. So, which is why I keep saying: look, we've got a lot of Muslims in the UK. Mm. Let's stop adding to the problem. Okay? Until Islam within itself and the Muslim community of, within themselves sort out the problems we've got. Because yeah? as you've said, if that's not right, sort it out. If Grim Gat, sort it out. Yeah, but at the yeah minute, we, do. We, need, we do need to. We need to get up. And, and, until, and, and all I say is until that, until that. You see, my, my angle is this, Tommy. I think a lot of people, as you're saying, is divide and conquer. Mm. The Christians fighting against the Muslims telling them you're following the wrong road. The Jews fighting against the Christians telling them you're following the wrong road. The Muslims fighting, they're all fighting each other saying that you guys are all on the wrong path, when really and truly, it's, it's all one. It's all one religion. We should all be together, not fighting each other. That's my angle, because the Torah... But there's so many verses in this that don't allow that. No, but it's... it's the it's take, it's take, look, look, there's two, if I'm gonna sh I'll show you verses in there. I was shocked to myself that I read. It says that if you're, if you're a Christian and a Jew, and you're upon the real haq, the real truth, do not worry, you're going to go to heaven. Yeah, but then, do you know, you understand with applications. So, so one second, one second, one second. Do you see how in the book, no one talks about that though. People talk about, oh, grab the Jews, but kill the Christians. Is, that's Medina, one that's second, from Medina. One second, in, in, Medina. in the verse that doesn't apply to anything, it applies in, for, for all time, Not for, it's not in a context. Allah clearly says, if you're a Christian or you're a Jew and you're upon the haq, which is the truth, you have nothing to fear. Right? Yeah. So that's the first but thing. When did Muhammad say that? Muhammad didn't say that, Allah said that. But Muhammad, it, it, it's come to Muhammad. Yeah, the it, messenger. It, it, yeah. But what I'm saying is, but with, it's for all with, time. With abrogation, whatever Muhammad yeah. said later in his life supersedes what he said earlier. I'll give you a book next week. I've got a new book coming out next week. Yeah? Mm. It's new, they cancelled it about five years ago. In that book, what we do is we take for Islamic experts, not me, not my opinion, okay. we take for Islamic experts and we put the Quran in chronological order. Because okay. when you pick that up, one thing Muhammad said one day is next to Sankey said 20 years later. Yeah? It doesn't yeah. make sense. It's, hard, it's very hard to put that in context and understand it Yeah, in any of the Qurans. Yeah. Now, if you put them in date order and the, the, how his life went, then what he says through abrogation, which is the laws of Islam, what he says, la la if you've got two verses that contradict each other, what he says later in his life supersedes what he said earlier. Yeah? So if he says, be peaceful, and then be peaceful to Jews here, mm. and then 10 years later he says, we need to kill the Jews, then this takes 
quality over no, this. No, you see, again, again, no, no. <laughs> again, you, you have to understand. So let's say 10 years previous, yeah? Let's just say, for example, 10 years previous, he said, wherever you see a Jew or a Christian, you grab him and you kill them. That context is talking about at the time of that war or at the time of that, what's going on. Then later on when he says, be peaceful, he's talking about in all time. Well, but so no, in you the have first to, 10 years, you have to, you have to understand. Yeah, later in his life, he, he, yeah, he introduced because you jihad. Have, you have to take into consideration what was going on during those times. You see? It's, yeah. it's not as simple as that. The Quran is a very complicated book. It's not as simple as that. Uh, okay, so, so, so but, but that's why us, there okay. is no other book it like very, it. it and also, book. also, also, do you know that the Torah and and the Bible is the true word of God? Do you know that? Because Muhammad, yeah, Muhammad took took Jesus Christ as a, as the Son of God and made him a dustman. No, he, Muhammad didn't do that. You see what I'm saying? Again, you're not. You need. This is what I'm trying to say. I don't think you're educated on Islam. That's not what happened. So the, the look, people you need to educate on there's, Islam is, there's is, three, is the, the reason ISIS why I'm saying this is because around. that's why I'm, I'm doing this video. Yeah. So hopefully people will listen and watch this. Yeah. I'm not a scholar. I hope they do. I'm not a scholar. But the scholars will yeah? disagree with you. Well, that's that, that's their business. But that's the problem. At the end of the day, even even um, if if Allah if Allah said. Or the Prophet Salem said, and it's in the Quran, I don't care about what this one says or what that one says or what this one, even a hadith, even a hadith. If, if there's something that contradicts the Quran, and for example, Sahih Bukhari, right, he's supposed to be the most authentic. He said from his own mouth, if there is one single page that contradicts what comes out of the Quran, you throw it against the wall. And I'm going to get to that. But Sahih okay? Bukhari also gave the, Sahih Bukhari... And Wait, let like, me just finish give, the give, point. Give, give I Aisha's age yeah? six. At no, you see, okay, I'm going to get to that now. And this, does. I'm going to get a lot of. Um, Sorry, I'm going to okay. get. Sorry, people are, after this video six. and I say what I say, it's going to go crazy. And I'm going to get a lot of Muslims. Yeah, it's going to get a lot. But you know what? I don't care. This I'm going to prove to you I think that's that great. I don't care. No, I'm going to no, say no, it I and I don't care what their reaction is because you know why? Qal Allah. Do you recognize Sahih Bukhari? I do recognize Sahih Bukhari and I do think he's authentic in some of the stuff. Some, if it contradicts the Quran, I'm going to put Allah over Sahih Bukhari. So Even the Prophet, <laughs> salam, I'm going to put Allah over the Prophet. But so, so, okay, it's so as simple as that. Well, so, so what I was going to say, yeah. the Torah, right? Because yeah. there's in, if we need to speak about all the religions of the world, there's, there's, there's a, only three Abrahamic religions, which to me are the true religions. Okay, So you've got the Torah. The Torah is the true word of God. The only difference is they didn't accept Muhammad as the prophet because Muhammad came from the Arab lineage. That's the only reason. That's the only difference. Then you got the Quran. Yeah, you're gonna get. I some mean, then, then you, yeah, of course. I will. <laughs> then, you, then you got. Then you got the, the. Then you got the Bible. They're gonna hate you more than me. I, I'm fine with it. I don't They're mind. Gone. Then you got the Bible. Okay, but the Bible is is the true word of God. But it was tampered with because back in the days, in those days when there was a Bible, people, people couldn't read. People couldn't read those Muhammad days. Muhammad couldn't write, people, right? No, Muhammad, he ended up... He, he ended was up, illiterate, right? Yeah, he was illiterate, but then obviously he, how he many learned... Years, how many years after Muhammad's life was the Bible, was the Quran wrote? I think it was... I'm not too sure to... But one thing about me, I never speak Two, on something that, that I don't know. But wait, let's, we'll get to that after. Mm. So then you've got, you got Christianity, okay? So Christianity, back in the days, firstly the Bible... A lot of Christians don't even know what Bible means. Bible means books of libraries. That's what it means. Back in the days, people couldn't read. So they used to have to go and knock on the church doors and ask the priests to tell them, what does the Bible say about this? What does the Bible say? That's why in the Quran, it, say, it says, it, the, the, we have come. So basically, the books that have come before it, i.e. the Torah and the, the, the Quran, uh, the, the Bible is the true word of God. But we have come as a watcher over it to take up the falsehood and to verify the, the truth. Yeah, so he took, because, he took what was already there and took right? bits he liked and changed. No, no, no. What it did, it, it, it showed what is false and what's real. So obviously, the Torah, they deny Muhammad. The Quran is saying, no, no. Because Muhammad was written in the Torah. How do, how, how do we get... How, how do we explain... I don't know anything about the Torah. How do we explain then? How, how do we... If Sahih Bukhari translates that Aisha was six. All right, um, let's get to that. How then. do we do hey, that? We're going to get to this now. Because okay? so, this is something that I even say, I say to lads and Muslims, I'm like, how do you get your head around that then? How do you okay, defend cool. that? Okay, cool. So there's, there's, all right, so I'm going to, I've, I've been doing research on this, cool. okay? So there's a, a parasol of the Quran, a yeah, what? that will reveal that the marriage in Islam is a civil contract, Misak, 421, and as such, it can be finalized only between persons who are intellectually and physically mature enough to understand and fulfill the relationships of such a contract. Okay. Now I'm going to get a lot of um, backlash for this, but uh, this, uh, again, this, who decides mature? Low Elam, Allah knows best, but th I kind of agree with this. Okay. So this can be further understood from the verse and test the orphans until they reach the age of nikah, which is the age of marriage. Okay, uh, puberty, maturity for marriage. And if you find in the maturity of intellect, release their property to them. Four six. It may be noted here that the Quran makes intellectual maturity, which also falls beyond 
the age of puberty the basis to arrive at the age of marriage yeah so the Quranic description of marriage as emotional bonding between the two mutually compatible persons through which they seek to dwell in tranquility c7 189 and 321 in companionship of each other which is not possible if either of the spouses is mentally undeveloped okay so child marriage in islam is justified on the basis of of a hadith in sahih bukhari which says that the prophet married aisha Allah, when she was six and consummated it when she was nine okay the hadith now, actually says she was playing with her dolls yeah played with her dolls right so now this hadith it cannot be true for several reasons so you don't believe in sahih bukhari. right so no i believe in sahih bukhari but not everything in sahih bukhari is is, is always going to be but true then wait just wait choose, hang on right? no let me finish yeah. sahih bukhari said himself what does sahih mean Sahih Bukhari, I think. What does the word Sahih mean? Uh, authentic. 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 Yeah, I think it means authentic. So this uh, and Sahih Bukhari second, and Sahih second, Muslim are second, the two most authentic. One second. One part second. Of the six most authentic. Sahih Bukhari said himself. He said himself. If you find even a page, a single page that contradicts the Quran, pick it up and throw it against the wall. So he's telling you that he does not know everything and that he may. There's a possibility he may have made mistakes. So, so if it, so who's it, more Muhammad important? Here at six one second. Or? No. No, no, I don't think he did. No, well, sorry, Muslim and I'm going to well. get yeah, I'm going to get to that now. Mm. Now look, uh, even Muslims can't argue with you. Whose word is whose word are you going to take more? Allah Himself or mm. Sahih Bukhari? Yeah, but Sahih Bukhari is, is is given the age of how old Muhammad okay, was. Okay, cool. And how old age so let's 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 get to let's Muhammad get to the 50, next bit. Fifty three. So weird. look, look, th this hadith cannot be true for several reasons. First, the Prophet peace be upon him could not have gone against the Quran to marry a physically and in and in an intellectually immature child. Secondly, the age of Aisha can be easily can be easily um, counted by the age of her sister, her, her older sister Isma, who was ten years older than Aisha Radhanallah. Waladin Muhammad Abdullah Al Khatib Al Amri Tabrizi, the famous author of Miskath Miskath, in his biography of narrators Esma or Rijal, writes that Esma died in the year 73 of Hijrah at the age of 100. Yeah, 10 or 12 days after the martyrdom of her son Abdullah ibn Zubair. It is common knowledge that the Islamic calendar starts from the year of the Hijrah or the Prophet's migration from Mecca and Medina to Medina. Therefore, by deducting 73, the year of Hazrat Esma's death from 100, her age at the time, we can easily conclude she was 27 during Hijrah. This puts the age of Aisha radian Allah um, at 17 during the same period. I've heard this argument. Right? But as all, one second, yeah. as all the biographers um, of the Prophet agree that he consummated his marriage with Aisha Allah in the year 2 Hijrah, it can be conclusively said um, that she, has, she was 19 at the time and not 9. And don't you think that's such a coincidence that, they, that it's 19 but then they put it down to nine. So okay, all they so had to do, one sec, all okay. they had to do was take off the one and leave the nine. And like I said before, Sahih Bukhari said himself, if you find any one single hadith of mine that contradicts the Quran, throw it against the wall. Okay, so so under an Islamic state, yeah. if we've got an Islamic state tomorrow, if it, obviously yeah. is, Islam's ruling the world, mm -hmm. everyone becomes a Muslim. Yeah. yeah. What's the age for what's the age for marriage and sex? So the age for under marriage and sex state, under that Islamic sex will be um, maturity. So first, maturity? when they start their period, when and not just period. not just because they start their period, it has to be they have to have a um, I wrote it down. They have to have the the intellectual. So who decides that? The it would probably be marrying the kid. No, not at all. Obviously, that 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 the child and dad that must have a parent. So again, again, okay, so. Okay. In, in God's okay. Perfect so world. let's say, let's say, world. let's say so the parent, world. let's say the parent who yeah. you said is going to get paid. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then do you know what? That sin is upon that parent. So okay. So Alex, Alice, perfect. He's created the world, and mm -hmm. he's created these rules, mm -hmm. right? If everything was perfect, I don't think there'd be the confusion about everything. He wouldn't create a word that has seven different meanings. It, it, it would be perfect. Yeah. But if Alice's perfect, he's created this world as perfect. Yeah. As you said, a child starts her periods. She's then going to be married. No, 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 it's not, ba it's not on the basis of just your period. Okay, so in okay, a perfect so look, world, for example, who decides let, let, let's, let's get technical, let's get technical, okay? Let's say you have a child who's autistic, yep. severely autistic, yep. and she started her period, okay? And she's, not, she's 15, 16, she's 17, she's 18, she's 21. Who yeah? decides? 
Is she? Is she, me- is she mentally? To, is she mentally is, capable? Okay, but the reason we have British, the reason we have law, separation of church and state, okay. we have law yeah. so that we can come up with these laws. Okay. Are better than, okay. Are better than, All right. Do you agree that the okay. British law of sixteen no, is no. better than Alice? Wait, wait. Um, no, no, oh. no. But I'm glad you said that. Let's talk about British law. You want to talk about British law? Let's talk about British law. No, Listen, no. I want to. I still want to understand. We're gonna we're gonna stay to I that. Still but this is some facts on child marriages. Yeah. So let's talk about British law. Let's talk about child marriage now. Do you know that now child marriage is actually legal in the USA right now as we speak yeah, that it's, it's 12 that, it's 12 that, in some in some right so some m- more than 200,000 minors were married between 2002 and 2015 Idaho compare, has one, one second one second no, because look, you, no no that's not what we're doing because back in those days of the prophet not that I'm making an excuse but back in those days of the prophet that was the norm well you can you can marry that, Richard, now Richard, we are, we're, Richard, in, the, we're in 2024 yeah, but was Muhammad perfect Yes, of course he was perfect. What's the problem if he married a nine-year-old? If he married but a six-year-old? I don't think he married a nine-year-old. No, okay, uh, but, but then again, it's, okay, so if what it says in Sahih Bukhari was wrong, it yeah. wouldn't still be here. What do you it mean? It wouldn't still be promoted. Sahih Bukhari is one of the most authentic hadiths in the world. There's six. Sahih Muslims are one of the most authentic Do you know what? Do you know and what? And it's promoted see, and being see, taught. So you again, see, again, you see again. a lot of Muslims, yeah? yeah. And they're, again, they're not going to like this, what I'm going to say. They're not going to like this. A lot of Muslims, not all of them, some of them do, but a lot of Muslims, they don't think outside the box. They don't question... I understand that, but what, 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 what I'm coming to a conclusion of mm. is that whenever there's anything that you don't like mm. that's problematic, you have your own justification for getting around it, but it's still here in the book and it's still being promoted to millions of people. So any Im- Islamic countries around the world... Right, wish to look, let Islam. me give you another the example. Age for there's, a hadith, there's a hadith that yeah. says yeah, that uh, when a woman is going to get married to a man, that the man is allowed to see her butt naked and decide whether he wants to marry her or not. Now, because that's a hadith, does that make it authentic and true? No, because it's not no, one of the authentic hadiths. But, but, but it doesn't matter though, it's still a hadith. People can still argue and say, no, that's, yeah, there's loads of that's mad, the truth. There's loads of but, mental hadiths. But how do we, how like do we, how do we... The devil just shit in your ear if you How, if, how do we, wait Tommy, how, do how do we differentiate between the, what's, what's sahih and what's not? Easy, we go to the Quran. If it contradicts anything that's in the Quran, we throw it out. Now, but we've gone the, to the Quran. The, ain't this, we've but, gone to the yeah, Quran. We're, talking, but we're talking about, doesn't that contradict? Doesn't that contradict no, what the Quran, the Quran says? No, in the Quran it says if they're intellectually or, or mature. But what I'm saying is who decides the maturity? The, pa- the parents should. The guardians so or the, the parents, parents should. Well, when I interviewed Ali Dawa... All right, so you're I've a father. I've interviewed you have a child, right? UK, you have yeah, a child. You're yeah. a father. You have a child. You love your daughter, right? Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. You'd never let anything bad happen to her. Yeah. Right. So if your daughter, um, if your daughter came to the age of puberty, but you felt like she wasn't mentally ready... If my daughter come to the age of puberty, I'd yeah. kill anyone if they thought of marrying her. All oh, right, that's fine. That's your discretion. And if my daughter, yeah, that's so your discretion. What I'm saying but, is, but when, let's when say you've got people who think yeah. Muhammad was perfect, mm-hmm. and he married at nine, he married at six and nine, which is why I asked Ali Dawa. Ali Dawa said, "Yeah, if she's mature." And then other Muslim when I was outside court, and any scholars I've spoke to, I said, well, "In your, in your," I said it to Kadir Baskin, Luke, yeah. the main imam. In your ideal society, what would the legal age be? He, he said, "When a girl," he said, "God, Allah has chose that. When a girl starts her menstrual, yeah. when a girl starts her periods, yeah. she's she's mature." No, but you can't just stop there. You're saying when a girl starts her periods, she's mature. No. No, but you have to take the, you have to take the mental and 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 the other the other components into consideration. All right, you know what? Let's do this. But I don't think it's perfect. Do you, Let's do this. Would, so I, let I, me I ask you this. Let yeah. me ask you this. Right? What's better? Let, you tell me what's better. Yeah, let me ask you a question. 18. You tell me what's better. There's girls out here who are 12 years old yeah. getting pregnant yeah. and yeah. having abortions and having babies. Yeah. What's better? Is it better if that 12 year old gets married? No. It's, it's not. So it's no, it's so you. So you see, this is the. Pro- so it's you. Bad. You think it's better for a twelve-year-old girl to go out there and commit zina, fornicate, and have sex no, with all think, different people, no, I think it's and be- get pregnant, have abortions, and have a child, no. and most likely not stay with that person and become a single no, I don't, mother. No, I, don't, I think and it's better if the twelve-year-old has a stable family and yeah. all these things. Right. So, would, so then, so then, marriage is better, no? No, not a twelve. You but they're, allow they're, a twelve okay, be but, married to but, ma- a but, man. And but these twelve-year-olds in school now that, that we're going to school, they're getting taught about sex education. They're getting given condoms. They are allowed to go. You're not even allowed to buy cigarettes in a shop that, at the age of sixteen. But yet you're allowed to go and have an abortion so at the think, age of eleven so and twelve. Do you think? A t- say, say there was an eight, a twenty-year-old man. Would you think it's better that he married that twelve-year-old girl? Well, I think. Well, to be honest with you, I don't know. I think it depends because the age gap is a bit different. I'd, I'd prefer somebody who's a bit younger to marry her. But if you are, gave me the option of, will my daughter get married and have kids, or go out on the streets and have sex with loads of different men and have abortion after abortion, or or kids at a young age, I would choose marriage. Definitely, I would choose even, marriage. Even 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 if your daughter was eleven and the man was twenty years old. No, I don't. But but that, that, that's what they do here. Look, let me let me show you something. All right, so here we go. 
Only till 100 years ago in the UK, children were getting married at 12. For females, it was 12 year olds in the age of the UK, and for boys, it was 14 years we old. We now know that's wrong. Now, okay, but still, this was so. All right, so we now know that was we wrong. We evolved with time. But one second, we recognize But mistakes. this was only 100 years ago. The yeah. Prophet's day was 1400 years ago. Yeah, but, you think, but Muslims believe now he's perfect. Yeah, I believe he's we, perfect. Richard, but hang on, Richard one second. Richard Lionheart, Richard Lionheart Look, Henry, Henry, the Henry the Young King, age 17, yeah, married to Margaret of France, age 13. Yeah, yeah? Richard, Richard Lionheart. William Lionheart. Adelaine, age 15, son and heir of Henry I of England, married to Matilda mm -hmm. of Anglo, age 13. The, the, the difference is that yeah. we don't grow up believing that Henry, whatever his name was, yeah. was perfect. We accept, well, that's a bit strange. Okay. We'll develop as a society. Mm -hmm. We'll look at children. We'll understand they develop, uh, that their minds aren't developed. And then we'll bring in laws. Okay, fine. We elect. Okay, fine. We change. I think in this day and age with everything that's going on, yeah, all this LGBT stuff, all the music, all the, the Cardi B's, all of these things that are going on. It's sick. It's sick. And the women now, young girls now, are, are becoming sexually mature very early to the time they're supposed to be. They're knowing about sex. They're going out. They're having boyfriends. They're having sex. Taking drugs, drinking alcohol. Alcohol. So yeah, I would prefer my child to get married not to if, an adult. if not to an adult, but to someone who's similar, similar of an age. Yeah. Would you not when your child when, just when to you be talk about the prophet, hang on. Let's 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 also let's also make it clear. The prophet is not just anybody. Peace be upon him. He's not just anybody. And Aisha Allah. Okay, is. to you he is. To, but, everyone, to but, everyone else, he's but just but a woman. To, to billions of people on earth, and these people are all different people. Some of them are revert. Some of them are doctors. Some of them are scientists. Some of them have a high, look at Andrew Tate for example. His uh, his IQ is so high. Why does he respect? the prophet i've never heard him talk about the prophet but he's a muslim he doesn't yeah, need to talk, about the, talk about the prophet but for him to be a muslim that means he follows the way of the prophet this guy has got a high iq he's very he's very educated but how many why so why are all of these billions of people you know, why are all of these billions of people brainwashed are they not have you ever read the life of the prophet yeah Do you know, well look, we, Muhammad, can't, we can't we can't compare we can't compare muhammad peace be upon him to any other person and we can't compare Aisha Radhanallah. She was a very intelligent woman, very very smart. She was she was very she educated in medicine. She? No, she didn't. She loved the Prophet. She loved the Prophet she, greatly. Look, uh, can I? I just I, the thing is the thing is all these conversations. It's great to have the conversation. Yeah. I, I, I do enjoy, it. and I think people will like listen to it. But mm. this all comes down to your view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The problem we have mm -hmm. is that there's thousands, tens of thousands, mm. recently hundreds of thousands, marching. Mm. or calling out other views which are extremely extreme mm -hmm. and extremely problematic for the future of Great Britain. Yeah, but we've, I've already said that's a problem. And we yeah, need, I'm, I'm, it needs I'm to be, I'm so, with so you on we, that. So, so I'm with we, you on that. And so I think we, we need to get up and do something future, about it. I don't want to gamble with the future of this country based on this book that someone might think means something else. Okay. I also wanted to ask you a question about Sophia. Yeah. Because I know that you've mentioned it a few times, um, and I wanted to ask you because obviously I know you're a journalist, you're a very intelligent man, mm. and you do your research. So when you are talking about Sophia and you're making the claims and you're saying, "Oh yeah, the prophet grabbed her and he killed her dad and he killed her brother and he took her and he raped her," have you ever done research? And I want you to be genuine with me. Yeah, yeah the biography. Have I, you ever I, done I would research? have brought the book with me. Yeah, so the bio again, it's the biography of Muhammad by Ibn Ishtaq. Yeah. Okay. So the the Jews surrender mm -hmm. six hundred of them, okay. um, which includes her husband. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in, in fact, before he surrenders, because the Prophet wanted his gold, because Kanana was very wealthy, mm -hmm. so he sets fire to his stomach, tortures him, gets to get his money, yeah? then he kills them all. No, okay, he, no. he either orders them. Okay, he orders I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know what research you've done, but the, 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 what actually happened was, um, they did a treaty, uh, he, the Prophet Salam, had a treaty with them, and they were all supposed to be living in peace. Her father broke that treaty, and they went to war. Now, when you're in war, Chopping off a head, okay, is, that's just standard, especially back in those days. Things were barbaric those days. Things were barbaric in, in, in England, because I've done criminology. I studied cr criminology of police and forensic science. Just a hundred years ago, the, the punishments were barbaric. They used to get people and they used to tie them up from their hands and their leg on horses and make the horses run out that's and they take from, from their limbs. That's barbaric. Mm. So if you want to compare that to 1400 years ago, that's pretty much normal. Yeah, but the difference when is you're not, in, when but you're but we're not war. comparing it, but when people think he's perfect, it's no, but one still, sec, it's, are one we sec. still cutting off heads now? Muslims are all over no, the world. No, we're not cutting off heads now. Muslims did because, on October 7th. But we can't compare. They're well, still doing it well, now. Look what the government are doing now. Look, what the, look what's happening in Palestine. Yeah. Little innocent kids are being are being bombed. They're being what is is that not barbaric? Is that not what's, barbaric? What's worse? That's what's worse? The the prophet chopping off a traitor his head or what they're doing to the little kids in Palestine? But the prophet. No, that, let's that, let's be that, real. That, that this is this is two thousand and twenty four. Mm. How, how he how do you know he didn't surrender? 
He never surrendered. The, Maybe the in your version, he surrendered. He didn't surrender. It was the Prophet who who, who got them all together. In the biography he, of Muhammad. Yeah, surrendered. well, that's wrong. That's not the right story. That's, that's the not, most. That's, that's not the right Islam story. Is the most recognized biography of Muhammad. Well, life. they didn't surrender. Again, there's a problem because that's the most recognized worldwide biography. All right. Anyway, look, and, that's, and that's, 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 that's neither here nor yeah. there. He broke the treaty. He was an enemy. This is war. This is what happens in war. Okay. This was 1400 years ago. No, we're going to get to Jesus. Oh, we're going to get to Jesus next. Don't worry about that. We're going to get to Jesus. How many people did Jesus get? I'm going to. We're going to get to Jesus, and Jesus is still going to come and he's still going to do and Jesus is going to do worse than what Muhammad did but we're going to get to that so now you're saying to me that that was barbaric but that was back then and there was a good enough reason for it because it was it was basically it's like treason so torturing him he, taking he his gold that's, he the, broke, that's the act of broke, a prophet I think, well he wanted to kill the prophet yeah. so torturing, he wanted him, to kill torturing the prophet. him taking his gold so it's either, it's, either, it's either you or me and who's the one they, who broke they, the treaty? They, 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 who's the one who broke the treaty? They all it was, stood there it was, with their heads it, down. It was, it was, it was, yeah, of course they did because they were outpowered. Yeah. But before they were outpowered, they wanted to kill the, the prophet. But anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. The second thing is you said that he took Sophia and he forced her to marry him and he raped her basically the same night. Now, the true story is she, Sophia. She loved him, did she? Sophia, yeah, she did. She did actually so love she him. Fell in love so, with one second, one second. So, so you, you, you got the story, right, from, from the hadiths, obviously, and from Islam, and you believed the part. That he beheaded his her husband. But you believe the part that he killed her, her father. So why do you not believe the part that she actually wanted to marry the prophet? Because that's all in the same. It's all in the same hadith. It's all in the same. Because no, if, if someone kills someone's husband, brother, family yeah. members, beheads yeah. them in front of them, they're not going to fall. In love yeah, she felt away by it. She did feel away by it. But she she actually if had you a dream. She fell in love with she, him. She, him. Yeah, towards it, and she did. She had a dream. That, that's um, the problem. Like, one that's second. Never no, happen. but look. At the end of the day, I can't not believe it because if I'm going to believe that he he killed her father and her brother and then he married her, then I also have to believe what the rest you're that comes with. You're it. finding an excuse to accept. No, I'm not. Why he I'm not finding. You're, you're, you're look, giving no, Sophia an excuse. Is, she fell in love with him. All right. So look. Must, look right, one second. One second. Yeah. He, he wasn't. He wasn't going to marry her. One second. One second. He wasn't going to marry her at first. Somebody else was. Then that person that had her came to the Prophet and said to the Prophet she is the the daughter. And her father was a, he was a lady, he was a very big person. Yeah. They said it's not befitting. Look at the mercy that they had. They said she's not befitting to marry someone who's beneath. If anything, she should marry someone so he done like her you. Favor. So he done no, her favor. one second, he didn't do it. She chose. He, she brought, chose she, he, he, he summoned her. This is, this is, this See, is I think a, most people are going to find this as madness. Her husband was beheaded, her family were killed, all in front of her. Yeah. And then we're actually meant to believe that she willingly fell in love with Mohammed after he done Okay, wait, so if you let me finish, she, he, they, they summoned her, she came to him. And the fact that this story he, even exists he, of someone who we call a prophet is just insanity. Okay, but that's your, that's, that's your perception. It'll be every that's non-Muslim's your, perception. Okay, that's fine, but the, like all the billions of Muslims who do believe in Islam, that's not their perception. So I, I'd say the majority know. of Muslims who, who, a majority of Muslims don't even know about this story. Well, even I didn't know about the story, and when I first found out, I, I, mean. I was upset. But when I did my research, I, mean, I found majority, out I w I'm all right with it. But anyway, but anyway, no um, she came to him, and she already she, she he gave her the choice. He said to her, you, "Have a choice. You can become a Muslim if you want, and you can become my wife, or you can stay a uh, Jew, and you can I will let, I'll give you your freedom." She chose not to take her freedom. So you can't say he forced her because she had that choice to leave. She didn't want to leave. She, she chose to stay. She, she was taken as a concubine. No, slave. she chose to see. Look, you you say that Muslims pick and choose. You're picking and choosing now. No, I'm, from, I'm not. You are because you're, you're choosing to believe you know that do? he I'll beheaded them. The I'll get up for this. You're, you're, you're choosing. I'll, I'll you're this you're choosing to believe that he beheaded them and killed them, but you're not choosing to believe that she chose to marry him. But anyway, never mind. It doesn't say she chose to marry. Him. She d it does in the hadith. It does say that in the hadith. Uh, yeah. It's like yeah, but again, that's where the again, that's the most where the source came. All, right, all right, hang on. Where, so in the hadith, where did this? Where you're did you're this arguing, arguing, one second, you're, arguing, one second, you're arguing the case of the hadith, but then you're saying you don't believe the hadith when it says. Oh, all right, so then, so then we can say he didn't chop his head off. Then that's a lie, is all. But it's in the biography of Muhammad by the most recognised biographer of his life. Ibn okay. Ishaq, all right, in cool. So, but that's fine. It explains all of it. But he he didn't write the hadith, did he? But that's that's that can't be the get out on every case. Is that the problem is? It says this. The problem is that mm. there's books that say it. The problem is that there's millions of Muslims worldwide that are following this scripture. Mm. That's the problem. The problem is right. you, but the problem is that for me, picking that up, it's a problem. Okay, that's fine. But I, all I want to do is just clarify what you said, because what you said is not true. Islamically and in hadiths, it's not true. He didn't rape her. He didn't force her. She made that choice. He married her. And, yeah, he married her. She, she made the choice to marry him. She and didn't he, make he no didn't, choice. Come he on, man. He beheaded he, her husband. He, he, Come where, on. Where's your evidence that she didn't make the choice? Where's your evidence? But that can't... He no, but... Okay, I'll tell you my evidence. Where's evidence. your evidence that she... Where did she ever say no, Can I, I ask marry. you as a, as a woman? Yeah. That's your partner. Yeah. 
If someone come in now and beheaded him in front of you, mm -hmm. would you ever fall in love with that man? Did you know that her partner was abusive and used would to beat her? But would you ever fall? So was Mohammed. But would you ever fall in love with that man? Mohammed's never. Could ever you beat ever? A woman. No, tell me you're a woman. Could you ever fall in love, in love with a man that beheaded him? Could you? Well, you know what? If her father was not a good man and she knows that that is the prophet, she knew that he, her father knew he was the prophet. If I know that this guy is the prophet, he's the true messenger of God. So some dude comes yeah. in here and says, I'm a messenger of God, but yeah. head your partner. He, he comes in and says that. No, I'm but he, no, no, it, do, it doesn't just work like that. It doesn't just go right. like that. She was there living in the time. She knew that this was the prophet. And me personally, whether you're my dad, she you're my brother, well, well, you ask me, to I'm going to answer personally. If I knew that that was the prophet, the real prophet of God, and he came from God, I'm going to pick him. You need to leave her, brother. No, that's the truth. <laughs> I think he will agree with me. <laughs> Run! No, hey, if I was abusive, <laughs> if I was abusive, yeah, she would be happy for something. Yeah, but who says she, who says he was abusive? He wasn't. She, 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 she told the Prophet, alayhi salam, he asked her, oh, what's, the prophet what's that bruise in your, in your eye? The Prophet said. And she said to him, I had a dream that the moon landed on my, on my, on my, um, on my lap. She told her husband, the Jewish husband that she was married to before the dream, he interpreted it and it meant that she was going to marry the Prophet ﷺ, so he hit her. The, who says this? The Prophet? He slapped her. This is, this, the the no, this is in the hadith. She told <laughs> the Prophet this. She told the, he she told the Prophet her husband this. and raped her. Okay, cool. But you, so you're obviously you're not going to budge on this, but that's Islamic. <laughs> that's the Islamic perspective, and that's the truth. The Islamic perspective is not so, guaranteed, unfortunately. The Islamic perspective is right, not so from listen, you. It's from your listen, listen, it's So you, 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 you said about Christians. Uh, you wanted you wanted to talk about Christianity. I didn't so want to talk about Christianity. Let's talk about Christianity. I didn't want to talk about Christianity. Yeah. Christianity. I just do you, asked do you know? Again. Yeah, because you you make it out like the Prophet peace be upon him was barbaric and was. and is like, but so is Christianity. So was Jesus though. So and I'm going to prove that to you now. Well, he's, yeah, he's going to be a murderer. You're going to see. He's so, be. yeah. So, Christian, oh, he no, he he's, he will be. He will be. Listen. So, li this is from this is from the Bible. This is from the scriptures. Yeah, it's not from me. I never said this. Old Testament. But um, Old Testament. And new. I'm gonna I'm gonna quote you exactly where from. So, Christianity has been called the bloodiest religion in all history, including Islam. The Old Testament contains. Has been called by who? Uh, I don't know. Just clowns. Yeah. I don't know, but it, but it can it can be. We're not finished. To be honest, to be honest, we're not finished reading. Yeah, go on. I'll let you finish reading. Yeah. But to be honest, so, I'm not. I, we, we're going to get into. I'm not here to defend anything. I'm no, here. because the reason why I think that this is very important yeah. is because you you know you Jesus quote said you quote Archie. verses. One second. You Jesus say said you say that you you yeah said, cut the yeah. Head but head. I'm going to show you. He didn't he didn't just say that. He didn't no. just say turn the other cheek. I'm going to show you. He actually is worse than than the prophet peace be upon him. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to tell you why. So. Christianity has been called the bloodiest religion in history. Do you understand how Christi Christian phobic this is? Okay, that's cool, that's fine. But <laughs> if it's Christian phobic, it's from your it's own scriptures. Hate crime, it's from your own scriptures. You got to, if you've got a problem with it, you've got to go to your own scriptures, not to me. So hey, anyway, look. Criticise whatever you so, want. I'm, I'm playing with so, you. I don't um, believe in Christian phobic. Okay, I believe that if you can pick up any book and criticise it. Right, look. So listen, yeah. So Isaiah 19.2. I will stir up Egyptian against Egyptian brother. We'll fight against brother, neighbour against neighbour. City against city and kingdom against kingdom, okay? Then Zechariah 10.5. Together, they will be like warriors in battle, trampling their enemy into the mud of the streets. They will fight because the Lord is with them. They will put the enemy horsemen to shame, yeah? Yep. Now, Just, I, what I'd Zachariah, what I'd one sec, one sec, because it gets worse, yeah? Okay. Zechariah 14.2. I will gather all the nations to Jerusalem to fight against it. This city will be captured, the houses ransacked, and the women raped. Okay, look what he says, the women raped. This is what Jesus is saying. Now, Jesus. yeah, this is what Jesus is saying. He's saying that the women's raped. Why would, in Islam, we don't, we don't rape women. They don't rape women in Islam. Uh, they do. No, they don't. They do. They don't, they don't they rape women. They take sexual slaves. How can you rape a war. woman if, if, if before... Oh, because they marry you, them. Yes, you have to marry them. <laughs> you have to marry them first. Come but on. I think that's it anyway. Let's They're not Now, them, now this, this, one, this one's the worst. This one is the worst now, Come yeah? On. And I'm going to, there's another point in this. Because you yeah. said, so there was a conversation we had with Ali Dawa. Yep. And I've been dying to put you up on this for time. Cool. And it's finally happening today, right? So it's not anything major, but... So you was laughing at Ali Dawa and you were saying about the hijra of the Prophet, peace be upon him. You was like, ah, oh, what? You really believe that he got on a horse of wings and he flew up, right? That's what you said. Yeah. All right. Now, you said you're a Christian, right? Now, I'm going to read this to you. Revelation 19, 11, 21, ESV. I believe that's the new, the new standard revision one, right? So this is, what, this is what it says. It says, Then I saw heaven open, opened, and behold, a white horse. So the heaven opened, that means it's the clouds in the sky and a white horse. That white horse must be flying, right? If it, I don't believe there was a white horse flying. Well, then you're not, you're not a Christian then. Okay, so. You're not fine. a Christian. You don't believe in the Bible. No, what I, said, what, I said is, what I said is the Christian way of life is a good way to live by. Even if you don't believe in it, it's a good, it's a good all foundation right, cool, for society. But, all right, fine. But Christians you know, do. Christians thou shalt not that. murder. 
Turn Christians up. believe that though. I go anyway. Let's yeah. let's let's go. I'm again, the, the, point, white horse. the point I make to Muhammad was not, I don't believe Muhammad flew up to heaven on a winged unicorn. Okay, on. that's fine. Do you? Yeah. Do you? I believe it. Yeah, I do believe it. But see, wait, we're gonna get to that. We're gonna mad. get to that. We're gonna get to that. Yeah. Okay. Well, here you go. Cri pink? Christians believe that Jesus is gonna come on a white horse. The white horse pink? is flying. So why can't I believe that Muhammad? You can believe that. I'm not saying you can't. All right. Okay. Let me ask you a question then. Do you believe that God exists? I believe there's a higher power. Right. Do you believe that that higher power created all of us? Do I believe, uh, let me, uh, is it Ramadan? When's Ramadan? Yeah, I think it's in a few weeks, isn't it? Two. What's the purpose of Ramadan? No, wait, answer my question. Okay, cool, Do you on. believe that God created us? I believe that... The earth, the animals, everything I that's in it. I believe that, yeah, a higher power created where we are. Yeah. Okay, so this higher power that created us and created, created all of us, he, Do you know what? I never, he created I, horses, I, I, right? I, 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 the only reason why I've been drawn to believe in, in Christianity and drawn more mm. to believe in God is because I can see the, se se uh, the Satanism. I can see the believers okay, of Satan. Okay, I'm with you on that I one. Can I yeah. can see if how dark... If Satan exists, then there must be a I light. I believe how evil... I see, how, I see the yeah. evil. I see it. I see Hollywood. I see I see all their evil logos, all their signs. Mm. And I see that there's something there that they have a power structure that they're believing in. Yeah, so there must satanic. be a light. Right, so that's so why you come to the conclusion to. that there, there, must, there, be there must be a God. To. So if there is a God, he's the creator, right? He created yeah, everything. Gone, yeah. He created you, me, okay. uh, the birds, the sun, the sea, the clouds, the animals. Do you Are you then trying to say that he's restricted and he can't create a horse with wings that fly? Yeah, good argument. Yeah, good argument. Yeah. All right, thanks. Yeah, I've been waiting for ages for that one. Yeah. No, let me ask you. Uh, let me ask well, you. Well, I haven't yeah. finished. Because no, you're, <laughs> you're saying that Jesus is, turn, said turn the other cheek. Watch what Jesus is going to say now, yeah? So, it's going to make me love truth. Jesus even now. And in, <laughs> look, and in righteousness, he judges and makes war. He makes war, you yeah? You see all you Christians His eyes. Confirm <laughs> Jesus, man. Yeah, Jesus tell him. on it. Yeah, tell him. Jesus, Jesus is on it. What are you talking about? Anyway, Stop saying Christianity's with Jesus on it. Can't go war, bro. Listen, yeah? His eyes are like a flame of fire. <laughs> and on his head are many di diadems and he has a name written that no one knows but himself he is clothed in a robe dripped in blood and the name by which he is called is the word of God. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in the fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From, so it's not only him that was on a white flying horse, it was his people as well, yeah? From his mouth comes a sharp um, sword with which to strike down the nations. Now listen to this. And he will rule them with a rod of iron. Jesus will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread and winepress of the fury of the wrath of God and the Almighty. Then in I can't wait for Jesus to come back. Has something I don't know the name of it. it goes, <laughs> so it, this this uh, the reason why I put this down: a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for love. Because this also applies to the prophet. He can't always be peaceful, right? Now watch this one. This is the killer of them all, right? Number but, one. You know, I wish I was versed on this. Where, where, where is this come from? Because I'll be this honest. This comes from the Bible. So this is 1 Samuel 15, 3. Okay, I have The ESV, English Standard Revised Version. So this is kind of the new one, yeah? Now look what Jesus says. Look at what he says. <laughs> you tell me that he's not worse than Muhammad. What's he say? Upon him. He said, now go and strike Amalek and devote to destruction all that they have. Do not spare them. But watch this bit now. But kill both man and women Child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. What did the donkeys do? Oh, the donkeys are shit. What did the donkeys do? <laughs> and, do, babies, do no. and babies. And babies and women and child. I can't comment. At this. least in Islam, there's rules to war. I you're can't not, you're this. not allowed to even cut a tree. You're not allowed to touch an elderly person. You're um, not allowed to attack someone who's not you are, actually you are attacking if you. Kafar, I'm not Muslim. No, even if they're not Kafar. I wish I, wish I had. The, I wish you bought the book, and I, and I wish I was versing it because unfortunately I'm not. So I don't know what what you're reading. So yeah, that's but all my, I might my, well my... go to church. <laughs> and then also, 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 you saying how about basically you think? Can I ask the you? last point I wanted to yeah, make on, was on. you've mentioned a few times you think that religion should be um, open to be mocked. You you say yeah, that definitely. You, you say you say. But the thing is, uh, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. That firstly, do you think it should be illegal to do what you just said about Jesus? No, not if it's coming from the scriptures. No, if it's me saying, "Ask oh, Jesus is this and that," and I'm being, well, then yeah, I don't think that's right. I would never but disrespect. Should, who, I wouldn't you, disrespect you other religion. Do you think the state should be able to make it criminalised for someone to express mockery of a religious figure? I just don't. I think people should respect other people. Okay, religion. okay. But wait, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question, right? Yeah. So you think that all religions should be open to be mocked? Yeah? Totally. Do you think your mum should be open to be mocked? Her religion. No, your mum, your actual mum, or your your son, or your daughter, or your wife. Do you think they should be open to be mocked? Um, and be I careful I how you answer I, I, this. I believe the state should not have. A, yeah, I believe they should. Yeah, if someone done it, I might give them a dick. Yeah, but that's the consequence for what's happened. Yeah, okay. that, that I don't believe the the government or the police so. should have a, a a role in any of that. 
So look, I might no, not no, Mohammed, someone so might punch me in the nose, yeah? But I don't, I, I, I shouldn't be arrested for it. So you think, as a man, yeah. who's supposed to be the protector and provider of your wife and your kids... I don't believe the government them. or the police should have a role in deciding what we can and can't mock. Yeah? So okay, I don't cool. believe they should be able but, to but, interfere. But, all right, so the state should not have but, an interference. But you think people should have a right to mock? I think they should be total... I, I believe in total freedom of speech. So you think... As a, so you think it doesn't mean there's not think, consequence. You think it's all right for your, your, for your wife and your kids to, to be open to be mocked? No, I punch them. Uh, it may well end up right. in, a, in now, a different situation. Now, why is that? Why is that? It's because that's your wife and your kid. You love them, right? Yeah. Well, it's, it's the same as people who love their prophet, and it's the same for people who love Jesus. It's the same for people that love their, love their religion. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, what I'm saying is, you, I'm saying there shouldn't be a law against it. It shouldn't be unlawful or illegal. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. It shouldn't be unlawful or illegal. But at the, the same the government time, should have no, it shouldn't be open for people to mock. It, it should, shouldn't. It should be free. And, and that's the it, thing. It should be. See, if I wanted to pick that up, I'm not going to. Yeah. If I wanted to pick this up mm. and I wanted to set fire to it, for example, yeah, mm. then that should not result in a prison sentence. It shouldn't. Okay, that's fine. But then it will, you will get some kind of reaction for it, though. But there's. Re I, I, I'm aware of that. If you choose but, to but take if, that if, action, but if you burn the Bible, you wouldn't mm. get reaction. But then that's because that shows you that shows, shows you, you how strong Islam is. No, it Islam shows doesn't bend. No, it shows you that there's, shows, there's is God weak or is he strong? No, there's, there's scripture in there that that says if you mock Muhammad, you, like Muhammad had all the all, all the, all the um, poets killed, yeah, because they were. No, you're not, no, he didn't have them killed. You're not he allowed to draw. You're not allowed to draw. But that's that's the huge. For their that's a huge amount of respect that people have for Muhammad and no, people they, have for God. Well, what, they respect us Muslims. Respect our God. You know what? To be honest with you, I'm gonna go in this deep. Us Muslims respect Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, more than Christians do. How about that? Christians allow people to disrespect Jesus. They allow people to walk around with t-shirts saying F Jesus, this, and they don't. They find it funny, they laugh. Try walking around with, with a t-shirt saying that about the prophet. Yeah, but I just think that shows that the inherently violent followers of a certain no, religion. No, I don't think so. I think it shows how dedicated and how much we love our prophet. And but I don't, our I don't see some people, I hear people celebrate that. I don't think that should be... If it, Why would Jesus need... If Jesus was the messenger... If Muhammad was the messenger and, and the prophet of God, mm. yeah, if, if he was... Why does he need to be protected so much from ridicule or com or, or even conversation? Because because he's what? loved. If somebody walks why around, is it, why if is somebody walks around with a T-shirt of your mum on it or why your, or your wife death? saying, I don't know, something. That, would you like that? No, we're not. You know, I get it. But why, right. why, why was it punishable to leave? Can I? Because you know. We were oh yeah. Sorry, that was the last thing, no. isn't it? So this is where I'm going to get the most slack now, right? Yep. So apostasy. This is going to go crazy. All the Muslims are going to turn on you, but I don't really care to be honest. I've just law alim Allah knows best. But this is from so my, they'll my, say, my they'll friend. They'll say you're right? not Muslim. That's that's up to them. They might they might say, oh, you you you're not. The hadith says this and the hadith says that. But like I said before, I'm gonna listen to what Allah says, um, and I'll put what Allah says, the Quran, over the hadith as Sahih Bukhari told me to. So people speak about apostasy in Islam, where if a if a believer becomes a non-believer, he is killed. All right. Yes, many Muslims indeed do say this. Many scholars, and it is written in the hadith Sahih Bukhari. However, I do not see this to be true. La alam Allah knows best, and if I'm wrong, may Allah forgive me. Um, and there are also many other Muslims who do not see this to be true, but God knows best. I'll explain why. So you see, Sahih Bukhari himself states that if you find any one single hadith of mine that contradicts the Quran, then throw it against the wall. These are his own words, not mine. So if the Muslims have got a problem with that, they need to go and take it up with Sahih Bukhari or with the hadiths. Firstly, Islam is not spread by the sword. That's the first thing. Secondly, if God willed, everyone would be Muslim. So if he wanted everyone to be Muslim, they would be Muslim. Otherwise, what, what's the point? Allah tells Muhammad in the Quran, had your Lord wanted everyone to be Muslim, he would have made them Muslim. Would you, Muhammad, um, force the people to be a Muslim? Allah also states to Muhammad, peace be upon him, we have not sent you to the people as a watcher. You tell them and they do as they do. Okay? Yeah. Then, there is no direct orders in the Quran to kill apostates. Nowhere in the Quran does it say kill an apostate. Surah Al-Baqarah 2 Two five six says there is no compulsion in religion. The truth is distinct from misguidance. That's what he says. Surah Nisa four one three seven. Verily, those who believed and then disbelieved and increased and then believed and then disbelieved and then increased in disbelief, never will Allah forgive them nor will He guide them to the right way. Now He never said nothing about kill them, slaughter them, behead them, murder them. If he wanted to, if that was the, f and he wanted to, he would have said that. He didn't say that. One more. <coughs> Surah Al Kef, 1829. There's multiple verses in there that contradict that. All right, we're, we're going to get to that. Yeah. So, Surah Al Kef, 1829. Say, the truth is from your Lord. So, whoever wills, let him believe. And whoever wills, let him disbelieve. That's yeah, it. yeah, that's what it says here. As right. Well. Um, and uh, the truth is from your Lord that whoever wills, let him believe, and whoever will, wills, let him disbelieve. Right, so what does that mean? Well, carry on reading. Go on. We have prepared 
for the polytheists yeah. and the wrongdoers, yeah. a fire whose walls will be surrounding them. Yeah. Disbelievers in the, in the oneness of Allah. Yeah. And if they ask for help, relief or water, they will be granted water like boiling oil. Yeah. That will be schooled. So again, it, the, you carry on reading, it just totally contradicts. The no, it doesn't. Words. It doesn't contradict. The, did he say kill them? It will be schooled no, no, in their no. faces. Did he, he say kill them? Did he say kill them? Faces? Yeah, in the hereafter. Terrible is the drink. In and the hereafter. Of tar, dwelling and yeah, that's place. fine. That's in the hereafter. That's not here. He doesn't say kill them. There, there is. You will not find anywhere in the Quran that he directly orders the killing of of uh, but again, Okay, okay. Well, well, we'll look now. But the hadiths, which you yeah. said are authentic. I didn't say they're authentic. You Sahih, accepted Sahih, Sahih Bukhari. Bukhari are supposed to be authentic. Okay, but, so in Sahih Bukhari, but, but, but I also Prophet said, but I also said, if it contradicts the Quran, then it's not. But, the, but it doesn't contradict the Quran because if, if the Quran doesn't say it, it doesn't contradict it. But it does contradict it because where where you he's saying you should kill them. Whatever. Where in the Quran does it say that? Oh in, in the Quran it's saying. If I'd have known, I'd be, be totally look, Listen, listen. Look, look. I wish I'd have known. Look, just this here, just this one here, all right? Just oh, no. this one here. here right? I obviously haven't. Look, look. Yeah. There is no. This is Allah. Listen, You'll listen. You'll find listen, others that me. wish to have security from you yeah. and security from their people every time they are sent back to temptation and the yield of. If they withdraw not from you, nor offer you peace, nor restrain their hands, take hold of them and kill them. So listen. You will find others that wish to have security from you and security from their people. Mm. Every time they are sent back to temptation, mm. they yield there too. If they would withdraw from you, mm. nor offer you peace, nor restrain their hands, take hold of them and kill them wherever you find them. Again, in their case, we no. have provided you with a clean... That's nothing to do with prophecy. So we've provided that's nothing you, to do with that's prophecy. What this, is, this verse is that's about That's nothing prophecy. to do... No, it's not. That's not we have provided you with a clear with warrant against them. I yeah. could go through... Oh, in fact... I should have done it if I knew. If I knew, I only that's nothing to again, do with apostasy, Tommy. Now, what's that to do? That's to do with something. Maybe I don't know what that's to do. That's, that's not. Does it say apostasy? It's a, it's does it say that someone doesn't believe? You will find others. Yeah. This, that's what it's talking about. It's talking about belief. No, how do you? Where does it say that's that it's talking, talking about belief? Where does in it say that? In the translations. Where? Where? It, again. Read it to me. You See, look, you're, now you'll be. You're, 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 no, because I haven't prepared. Genuine. I haven't prepared. Right, so no, if you're not prepared, say you're not prepared. Okay. So if you're not prepared, say you're not prepared. That's okay. nothing. Look, listen, okay, listen, look. listen, listen. Listen to what Here, the verse is. Listen, listen to the There is hundred verses listen, like this. Listen, listen. Kill listen. them. Surah Al Baqarah. Kill them. There is no compulsion in relation. Yeah, in which religion. Which is superseded. Which right? is superseded. In religion, right here, it says here, Verily, those who disbelieved and then believed and then disbelieved and increased in belief, never will Allah forgive them nor will He guide them, but He doesn't say any. Then it says here. Um, what are you reading? 2256. Here, listen to this one. Surah Al Kef. This one, this one here just slaughters them all, okay? So this one is Surah Al Kef, 1829. Say two, the two, truth is from your Lord. So whoever wills, yeah, let him believe, and whoever wills, let him disbelieve. He's given you the freedom. Yeah, yeah, but then if that's you contradicted to believe, by the abrogation of the latter verse. Of what? Of, of, no, there is nothing in the Quran that two, says. Two, five, six. That says kill him. <laughs> that's nothing to do with them. apostasy. The words actually, the words actually are kill them. Yeah, that's that's in the times of the war. That's in kill the times the of the prophet. It's nothing to do with apostasy. If they, if they don't put their hands. Trust up. me, you're not going to find anything in the Quran that says kill kill apostasy. Nothing. Okay. You find it in the hadith, but not in the Quran. The hadith which are authentic. So we get rid of all the hadiths. Again, I've said to you, Tahir Bukhari said yeah. himself. Should we get rid of the If kidneys? I say, if well, there's again, a single page, like a that doesn't that, does, all right, so Sahih Bukhari, doesn't yeah. that contradict what you just said here? Can we, um, what he says here? Give me a yes or no two, answer. 2256, you see this yeah. verse, carry on, yeah. reading, carry on reading that verse as well. Get, 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 I, I can't carry on because it's not here, but it no, says no, but here, what I mean is there is no compulsion in a religion. You need to carry on yeah? reading the verse to get the context. Okay, cool, let's get here. Say the truth is from your Lord, so whoever wills, let him believe, and whoever whoever wills, let him disbelieve. Again, the importance of abrogation. Okay, wait, if this is what it is, if this is what it is, yeah. Right? Is that me not, and you can one see sec, one sec. If just give me a yes or a no yeah, on, answer, Tommy, on, on, on. right? If this yeah. is how it is and it says what it is, does that not con contradict Sahih Bukhari? Sahih Bukhari? Yeah, when he so, says. So let's get rid of Sahih Bukhari. So Sahih, let's say that Sahih Bukhari is no longer authentic. No, we can't say that because some of the stuff he says is authentic. So some of the stuff. If, the stuff if, if he didn't say, if he didn't say, if he didn't say, if you find something of me of mine that contradicts, then yeah, then maybe we could have. But but at least, so, at least see, he the, said the it. Problem, at least he said it, is, which the means problem he is, knows there's a possibility he could have made mistakes. The problem is, yeah. The problem is that people. Obviously, you've got your interpretation. There's, there's interpretation. <laughs> But people are getting killed and murdered in the name. Give me my notes, people man. are getting killed Tommy, and murdered. Tommy, 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 Tommy. I want to see what's coming next. I want to see what's coming next. But people are getting murdered in the name. Listen, they're going to get on to me for this, you know. Do you realise what I've just done here? Do you oh, know what, can, 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 can we do something? Can we? Can we, so people who are watching this, from my point of view, understand mm. who you are? Can I go through you oh, and ask gosh. you questions? Oh, yeah, no problem. But, right, where are you? Where, where? You said you're Moroccan. Wait, we're going to go from Islam to rap. Yeah, let's go. Where did you? 
Uh, where, were you, where were your parents from? All right, so both of my parents are Moroccan, yep. which is North Africa. Um, they were born in Morocco. Tell my mates just opened a Perry Perry restaurant there. In Morocco? In, in Morocco, in Marrakesh. He says, killing it. He said, like, you know, like the equivalent of Nando's. Yeah, because they don't have no, no Nando's there's nothing. Perry he's, Perry he's, Perry he's, he goes, mate, I'm killing it. You know, I actually he's thought Pakistan. of that idea before. Yeah, he's killing it. Mm. But anyway, so you, your friends are, um, so your parents are Moroccan. When did they come in? My dad, I think he came, my dad came, I think, when he was like 10 or 11. And my mum came when she was 12 as well. Very young ages. Are they religious? My mum is not so much religious. My dad is religious, but he's not extreme. He's middle. So my so a bit of background on my dad. My dad is very well educated. Um, he used to go to a private school. His education was in a private school. His dad was a chef who used to cook. He was a personal chef of the King of Morocco, Hassan Tani and also to his son. Who's the um, new King of Morocco? You know that new Mohammed. prince who everyone's loving? Mohammed, yeah. The, are you talking about Mohammed's son, the younger the young prince? The young prince, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's his son. But, um, talking about like a gangster everywhere, man. Everyone's just bowing to him. I've just watched something yeah, on him recently. I watched that gear con, sorry. Yeah, so. Um, and so my dad, he's very intelligent, um, who, private education. Did they have money? Did they come from money? Yeah, they got, well, my granddad used to cook for the king. He was okay. his personal chef, and he was his personal chef for over 15 years. Um, he was the only one who used to cook for him. Um, and then my mum comes from so my dad's from the the capital which is Rabat which is where the king is from and my mom's from Laris which is a small city in Morocco um my mom's not so much religious to be honest my dad is religious I've, I can't remember a day that my dad never ever prayed but he's not extreme in fact he hates extreme many Moroccans aren't they yeah he's, he oh, no there is a lot of Moroccans who are because yeah. when you look at uh, the majority of tourists they come from oh yeah I've seen the numbers on how many went yeah there's Nisus. quite a large there's quite a large number of them but yeah my dad is just he's just in it because even Islamically you're taught not to be too much to the left not to be too much to the right you just stay in the middle you know so my dad's that kind of person but my dad also did music and you were born in London yeah I was born in London Where? Um, I was born in St Mary's Mary's no, actually, I was born in Hammersmith Hospital, sorry. Which where did you grow up? Which area of London? I grew up in West London, in Labrock Grove. In Labrock Grove? You're from Labrock Grove as well? Yeah. What was that like growing up there? What was the diversity like there? How old? Do you mind if I ask how old you are? No. Yeah, how old I'm you? 39. Oh, 39. Okay. Yeah. So what was it like growing up there then? To be honest with you, it was very, it was, it was quite rough. You had to be tough, to be honest. It was uh, diverse. There was a lot of like Moroccans, blacks, uh, gypsies, white, Irish. Um, Somalians. It's a very diverse, mixed area. Was it like that when you were growing up as well? Yeah, yeah it was okay. like that when I was growing up as well. Um, I don't think there was as many Somalians as there is now, mm -hmm. but yeah, it was very that it was very diverse, um, and it was very. You had to be tough. You had to be tough, especially me, because I looked like I was English. People used to think I was Irish with my little freckles and stuff, and I was short and small, so people used to try to target me, um, to bully me. So I had to be tough and fight. Was there any child? Only child? No, I've got two brothers, one older and one younger. Okay. Yeah, Ennis and Ineas. Okay, and you and what, did, what was school like for you? Um, what school did you go to? So, the first school I went to, I was never, I was always naughty, to be honest with you. Um, I never took to authority. I never ever liked being told like what to problem. do. Yeah, I've, I've always been. I've always been like that. Yeah. Um, I got kicked out of a few schools. The first school I went to was Fulham Cross Secondary School. Um, I used to get into fights all the time. Uh, then I, w I got permanently excluded from there. Went to Holland Park Secondary School. Got permanently excluded from there. Then went to a centre. It was not until I got a bit older that I decided to go. What did you get permanently excluded for? What, what does a young girl do to get permanently excluded? You know what? I, like I said, that they used to focus on me a lot to try and bully me. You know, because I used to look small, white, and and have freckles, and I used to I never used to stand up for it. So you're a victim of racism as a white girl. Yeah, I, you know what? It's a, yeah, thinking of it now, yeah, it was. You can say it was racism. Yeah, they used to think I was some white little girl with freckles, um, and that I was an easy target. So they used to try and bully me, and I used to stand up for myself. I never used to have. Any, I was quite tough. I never used to have mm. any of it. So I used to fight all the time. Um, I never used to listen to teachers. Um, if I felt like I was in the right and they was in the wrong. Because to be honest with you, my dad always taught me to stand up for myself and to speak my mind. And if I'm in the right, then I speak my mind, never back down. You know, obviously be respectful, never start trouble. But if someone starts and you always stick up for yourself. So he always instilled those principles and morals and characteristics in me. Um, and then I came from a huge family, so we was all we was all pretty kind of tough. So I always felt like I was very confident in myself. I I think that's more from my dad because I'm kind mm. of a, a a daddy's girl. 
and my dad's a very strong man and he's always taught me to be a strong independent woman so um i think that came from my dad i was always upright said said it how it is you like it or you don't like it and i'm still kind of like that to be honest till today did you tell him that when you got expelled it's your fault dad well <laughs> you know when i got expelled obviously they were upset they wasn't happy about it is your dad still about now yeah mm. yeah he's still about now in london yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You come out of school, what do you do when you come out of school? You get, so you got expelled, you went to then, what, one of these expelled schools mm -hmm. where the naughty kids go to? Yeah, I always just like, to be honest, you just live with my life, just um, hanging around with friends. Uh, I used to do street dance. I used to, I was a professional street dancer from the age of 13 until about, say, until about 17, What's 18. What's that mean, professional? Oh, so, so you, you joined a dance group? And yeah, the Royal Bar of Kens and the Chelsea dance oh, okay. group. Um, we used to tour, like we used to tour many countries uh, performing. Doing, I was actually a very good, very, very good dancer. I learned how to do moonwalk when I was five years old. Um, I could moonwalk backwards, frontwards, sideways. That I was very, very good. I was always... Any videos of your dancer? I don't, you know, because th those times there we never had uh, iPhones yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, YouTube, yeah. and I wish I did though, but um, I was a very, very good dancer. Mm. Very good dancer. And then I also, I also used to write um, poetry, which later on went into music, because my dad was actually the first British uh, Moroccan to get signed to Globe Records in 1990 and release an album. So, was. yeah, I used to go to his... So his influence of music, that's yeah. because I was going to say, because when I started researching, T, mm. when T asked me to do a podcast, I researched, I saw that she, she was a rapper, mm -hmm. which was different, mm -hmm. yeah? It, um, a rapper who got a degree, it was just, none of it fitted together, none of it fitted together, so, and a female. So, but now, so obviously the influence of your father being a musician is what's mm. then yeah, music and dance. Yeah, because I used to go to his tours and his shows and I'd be watching or sitting on a stage watching him perform. He's, he, my dad plays every instrument. He plays the guitar, the drums, every instrument you could think of, keyboard, piano, he plays everything. So I grew up watching him and listening to his music. Um, I also had music in me, to be honest. Even my younger brother, he's a rapper, he's very, very good. I started writing poetry, then I started doing music, and then um, I oh, realised... started doing music? So I started music at a very young age, I'd say probably about f 13, 14 writing, but I didn't do it professionally until I got a bit older, which I'd say probably about when I was 25. That's mm. when I started doing it professionally, because I realised that my dad was very connected in Morocco. He had some serious links, like TV presenters, shows, um, radio. So I thought to myself, why not? You know, it, it, and you started it, doing rap. Yes, yeah, so first, in, first in, no. in, in which language? No, first I started doing uh, R and B kind of songs. Okay. That's how I started. So the first song I ever wrote was CCTV, uh, which was inspired by a French artist, female artist. Um, but then what happened was I did. I went to Morocco. I did a few shows, interviews, and stuff. And then I did a live on TV, which was on Dizem, which is a Moroccan channel. And then it took me a while to find myself musically. So then I started, um, I was very amateur at the beginning. I started uh, going from different producers to different, writing different styles until I ended up meeting um, Z Dot, who is one of the biggest producers in the UK. He, he's a producer of Stormzy, Lady Leisha, uh, Bugsy Malone. Basically all the top UK, Rita Ora, all the top UK artists, he was, he's a producer for them, him and Crunchy. When I started working with them, uh, I realized the levels of professionalism and how much I needed to, to, um, find myself and become better in my music so because the music he was playing me that I was listening to from these these artists the levels were insane, insane. you know I actually felt embarrassed to record that day because I thought well I'm not on this level but then I worked on myself and then eventually I found I found my sound but then what happened was I was going to Morocco quite a lot and then I ended up going into rap because I ended up joining a group called CB4 in Morocco in Morocco, so CB4, CB4 gang, CB4 label, label. Are they a gang? Well, I mean, they're not a gang. People, they do consider them as a gang, but they're not a gang. CB4 is basically like a family. There's so many of us. There's over 50 of us. One does producing. They're like Soul Solo Crew. Yeah, kind of like Soul, so, kind of like Soul Solo Crew, but in Morocco. Yeah. Uh, one does producing, one does kickboxing, one does directing, one does rapping. All of us have different things that we do. Now, the thing of CB4, they're actually the biggest rap group in Morocco. CB4. They're the biggest. Yeah, they're the biggest rap. There's big artists who are single rappers. They're not a group, but uh, okay. as a rap group, we're the biggest rap group in Morocco. And CB4 was established by Moro. By who? Moro, a guy called Moro. Okay. He's originally from Morocco, Casablanca, and Zero Cat, which is Zero Four, is the area of where he 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 he, he grew up and he lived. But he's now currently living in between Switzerland and France. 
So I'm actually signed to his label. Moro is one of the biggest rappers in Morocco. He can easily get like 20 million views on, wow. on a video. He's huge, very well respected rapper. Um, there's Demon, Moro, there's loads of us. Uh, the only thing is, I'm actually the only female in that rap group. How's that work? Because they don't allow females. What do you think about that? <laughs> 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 they, don't, they don't actually... The missus um, of 49 lads. They don't actually allow females in their group because... Because of religion? No, because um, a lot of clashes happen within the rap world. As so in fights? As in like rap clashes, battles and battles stuff like that. Battles against others? Yeah. And you and think they'll use you as a term of... Yeah, so okay. if, if, a if, if, if a female, no, but I mean, like, if she doesn't respect herself and, you know, sleeps around or, that, yeah, she'll get rinsed. You know, like, for example, if you send a text message or a picture of yourself naked, which I, I don't do everywhere. things like that, that would get used against you and sent everywhere, literally, just to clash CB4. So they were very careful about who they allowed. Yeah. And they were very boy and very, you know, manly and they don't, they don't, they didn't even used to take pictures with females. They wouldn't even allow pictures with females. They were really, like, strict on that. It took me one year to get in there. But obviously, as they got to know me and stuff, they thought, you know, yeah, what, what's she's like? She's, she's like a guy anyway. You know, the raps is a uh, casa. His my rap is very. Um, it's not your typical average female, female rap. It's I rap like a guy would rap. It's strong. Mm -hmm. My rap is very like. It's you'd think if you didn't know it was a female voice, you'd think it was a guy rapping. Mm -hmm. The kind of stuff I come out with. You see, like what do you rap about? the Taliban. When you yeah, Taliban. Yeah. yeah. So that that's I basically. Google, I was in my research. Come up with a song called Taliban. Yeah, <laughs> so basically that song is a clash. What happened was um, there became a clash between the Algerian rappers and the Moroccan rappers. So I obviously was involved in that. And that turned into more than the clash? That did it, no, because they're in Algeria and we're in Morocco. Okay, so, so nothing, well, fr that things were said, like, I can't meet them on the borders and things like that, but nothing physically happened. But that was, that was a, a diss track, which I called Taliban. But um, I went in hard. What I went in hard in that one. Because in, in I say a punchline, one of them where I say, which means, um, I'm going to, all right, so how do I say, I don't want to say I'm going to shoot, but basically let off shots. Oh, so like it's, not, let, it's not Taliban as a we think. Yeah, Taliban. it's like let off shots like the Taliban, basically. Oh, okay. Kind of thing. Okay. So, so that's why I called it Taliban. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, Did you call it Taliban to provoke reaction? No, did it reaction? no, no, no! It didn't provoke any not reaction at all. No, okay. no, not at all. The Moroccan audience absolutely loved it because it was the first time they've ever seen a Moroccan female rapper involved in a clash like that. Because okay. that's not normal in Morocco. They don't see females doing that, mm -hmm. you know. So it was out of the norm. So if you look at the comments, there's like about six hundred comments. People are just like, wow, they don't see this stuff. They're like, oh my God, this is what we need in Morocco. This female, she's rapping, she's going harder than the male rappers. Like, it was something new to them. Yeah. So, when was um, this? When was this it? was a few years ago. I'd say, I think about three years ago. Okay. Yeah, about three years ago. Um, so this is all recent? Rap's all recent? Yeah, it's all recent. It's, okay. It is all recent. But I'm trying to come out of the music um, now. I'm just wrapping up an album that's going to be coming out really soon. I think there's about 22, 23 tracks on there, which is mixed. I also rap in Derija Arabic. So it's not Arabic Fushal, like the Quranic Arabic. It's uh, more like street Arabic. Okay. So I rap, in, I rap in Arabic, English. I also mix a bit of French and sometimes a bit of Spanish. You mix from the two? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mix from the two because I try to, to reach like a, a, a wider audience. And so that's all recent. So what, when did the degree happen? So from a girl who gets expelled from school, two schools? So basically what happened was... Okay, so I don't want to go too in, into it because I don't want to incriminate myself, but there, I was heavy in the streets. I was very heavy in the streets. In London? Yeah, in London. With and um, Just like in, within my area and just... I, when you say that, so without incriminating yourself, you're, mm. you're talking about street level criminality. Street yeah, level street, street level criminality. Okay. Yeah, I never took no shit off anyone. Was you um, heavy in the, in, in, in the streets because you was in a relationship with someone who was heavy in the streets? No, I was heavy in the streets because of who I was. I didn't need anybody. <laughs> I was, gone, gone. I, obviously, I have connections. I have connected. Basically, I was, I'm very liked. I'm very liked. I'm very well respected. And That's I, what I use when. I have, like, I do have... Um, <laughs> Obviously, I ha like you can't really say shit. Bro. I do have serious people that yeah. I know that are around me that if ever, if stuff ever did need to happen, it would happen. But mm -hmm. you know, alhamdulillah, thank God, I don't ever need I don't need that. But I've I've always been how I am myself. I've never needed anyone. Have you had people tell you you shouldn't be rapping as a female Muslim? Yeah, of course. As a female Muslim. Yeah, of course, definitely. I get that all the time. I get that all the time. From um, Muslims. From. Uh, do they say it's around? So I get it from. Um, 
Moroccans in Morocco, they'll make comments like, oh, you should be in the kitchen cooking. You shouldn't be out here rapping and stuff. Like, I get that. But again, it's a new movement. They still they still need to get they need to get used to it, you know. I do get that. I do get a lot of Muslims as well saying to me, oh, you know, sister, what you do is haram and this and that. Um, which obviously I get it. What they're saying is correct. But at the same time, I'm fully aware of what I'm doing and what I'm not doing. And I'm trying to come out of it because my plan is to get in, into my religion and a bit more into my deen. But I think, you know, everyone... Does rap fit in with your Dean? No. Does it? No. No, not at all. Because the stuff I rap about is not, it's not, um, it's not condoned in Islam or in any religion, to be honest with you. I rap about gang stuff. I just, I'll be straight. But the, the thing is, look, I think with female rap, you have two options. You so would you say that you, would you say then, as we've, yeah. pick, we've gone through some verses, that mm. you, you're picking and choosing what out of Islam to live your life by? No, I wouldn't say I'm picking and choosing. I would say that um, I know that I'm doing things I shouldn't be doing. And um, I hope, you know, I, I mean, I'm nothing compared to the, to, to the Prophet alayhi salam. Okay, so I'm not even comparing myself to him. But the Prophet became a Prophet at the age of 40. So, you know, people say that at the age of 40, you, you know where you're going. You either go on, on to your deen or you stay in the dunya. So I've always made a promise to myself and hopefully, inshallah, I'll stick to that. That if God lets me live long enough to the age of 40, I'm gonna, hopefully I'll be finished with all of this stuff and I'll get on, onto my deen. Because from a young age, I've always wanted to be a scholar. I've always wanted to get into my religion. But I went from, I just ended up in the music. It just happened. I just ended up in it. And, and, and my plan is to come out of it at some point. I'm just planning on wrapping up my album and then getting out of it. Because to be honest with you, it's a demonic industry. It is a demonic industry. You're like, I, I mean, alhamdulillah, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do anything. Have that you anymore. drunk and smoked for? Yeah, I have. Of course, I have. That's, it comes with, it comes hand in hand with that. that with the that, culture. With that life, of course. That you, you know, you're in studio sessions, you're sitting with top rappers. Look, a lot of people say that they're rappers and they do music, but they're not. All right, you do music, but it's at an amateur level. I do music at a professional level. Like the group that I'm in, they're all a like a celebrities. They get mm -hmm. millions of views. I've got a million something views on my channel. I sit with proper celebrities. So I'm in studios recording with top professionals. Uh, we do that. That work it, it, it consists of performing in nightclubs late at night, where it's demonic. It's a demonic. It's a de it's a demonic industry. You know, where me personally, like myself, I don't, but I know a lot of females rappers who have had to sleep with certain producers or directors to get to positions that they get to, if they want to feature or if they want to shoot a video or if they want to beat for free. Because in Morocco, there's poverty. People can't afford to pay four, five hundred pounds for a beat, you know, or somebody who wants to be famous so bad that she will do anything to do a feature with this certain individual rapper. Alhamdulillah, I've never had to do that. I've always kept myself clean. Yeah. So I'm grateful for that. But it is a demonic industry. It is. There's nothing good comes out of it. And even though you become successful, you get millions of views, if you're not consistent with it... Like, yeah. look at Michael Jackson. He was the greatest of all time, but he's dead now. No one's talking about him. No one's watching him. Yeah, he's still the greatest, but it's something that's consistent. You have to keep... You get tired of that eventually. How long are you going to be in a club late at night performing? How long are you going to be working free mixing with this one and that one, drinking alcohol? Because people drink alcohol, take drugs to help them be more creative, you know? So... For me, I think it's a demonic industry, personally. I mean, when you look at all of the top rappers, like, like they're all part of the Illuminati. They're all demonic. Their music's demonic. The way they dress is demonic. They dress like Satan himself, you know? Uh -huh. So it's all it's very Smith. demonic. Yeah, and Sounds if you want to reach a certain level of fame, you will have to sell your soul at some point, which I'm definitely not willing to do. When did the... Incriminate yourself, come on. When, what happened to the degree? What happened? So basically, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not going to incriminate myself. So no, basically, I'm only joking, an incident happened. Oh, okay. So you've uh, you've studied the degree to get out of saying. No, 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 huh? no. An incident happened where I did something that I, when I look at it now, I regret it. I shouldn't have done that. I don't think that um, what that person did was sufficient enough for me to do what I did as a form of retaliation. But I'm not going to go into it, and I, I do regret it, um, and I shouldn't have done it. Did you get done for it? No, I didn't get okay. done for it because the person was too scared to press charges against me. Um, thank God. But at the same time, I shouldn't have done what I did. But my dad sat me down and he said to me, look, you know, you've got two choices. You either fix up your life and you go choose to work or study, or you carry on doing what you're doing, you're going to either end up dead okay. or in prison. 
So I thought about it. It's mad to hear him from a woman talking like this. Yeah, I know, yeah. it is mad. But you know what, to be honest with you... Least of all after talking to you, for, for, I would never have put... I, would ne I don't think anyone listening to this at the start is going to have put you in for, as some cr crime criminal life. That's why they say you should never judge a book by its cover. Yeah, go on, come but on, yeah, sorry. So I, I decided to... I decided, I, that was a lucky getaway. I decided Do you mind if I ask to, what happened in that instant? Do you mind if I ask? No, I can't you don't because want to then I'm going to incriminate myself. Yeah, I don't, was it I don't another think, female? Yeah, it was another female. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've had altercations with men in that as well. With this female, have you um, have you repaired? No. Ever spoke to them? No, I'd I'd love to. I would like to, but I don't know where they are. Um, to be honest, I, and I don't know. Is that because you regret what went on, or because you? I just feel like what I did didn't. It was wasn't. It didn't soul. need. It, like, I was young. I had an ego. How young was you? I wasn't used to being disrespected. I was. How old was I? I think I was like sixteen. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was, I was really young. Okay. I had an ego. I wasn't used to being disrespected. She disrespected me. 16. It's yeah. like that demonic yeah. way of thinking. You know, that ego. Who does she think she's going to talk to me like that? That's not going to happen. I've got to prove my point. So I ended up going to where she was. And I ended up, yeah, things happened. And it also and happened in front of a camera. Yeah. I actually did it in front of a camera. That's how sick I was back then. I did it in front of a camera. But anyway, um, yeah, I ended up, thank God nothing happened. Nothing came of it. Then I sat down and I thought to myself, and I thought, you know what, for real, I need to change my life. I can't, I can't, if I stay on the streets, I'm just going to get worse and worse. So then I thought to myself, let me go to college, do an access course. So I did an access course, access to humanities and social science. I actually enjoyed it. It was a bit, it was a bit difficult at first because there was a language barrier. I wasn't well spoken. Uh, people would laugh at me because I was so street the way I used to speak. Um, I said, and it used to really hurt me and I felt so dumb. I actually felt really dumb. I thought to myself, oh my God, I can't even speak. I can't speak properly. These people are way more smarter than me, more intelligent than me, and more educated. I don't stand a chance. So it was very, very hard for me. But then I just stuck to it. I kept doing it, kept doing it, and then I actually enjoyed it. I found that I enjoyed learning new things. Um, so I stuck to it. I passed. Then when I passed, I was so happy because then I knew... You achieved something. I achieved something. Yeah. I am actually smart. I'm not just smart on the streets. I'm actually smart academically. So then that's when I decided to apply for university. So then I applied for university and I'm criminology, policing and forensic science. And I really loved it. Which I really, really loved it. I went to uh, Ealing, which is West London University now. Did you go live there? No, because no, I didn't live far anyway. Did yeah, I commuted. It was. Um, did you have the normal uni life? Did you go out partying? No, I didn't. No. You know what? I had just got married and I was pregnant at the time okay. with my with my daughter. So no, I didn't. I was just. It was hard, but I did it. I deferred a year back because I was always morning sickness and it was really hard. But then I was with me when I put my mind to something and I'm determined. I won't stop you until I do. You got married. You had a daughter, and then you went uni. No, I got married, then I went uni, and I was okay. pregnant in my first year. In your first year of uni? Yeah, okay. so I was constantly throwing up, and I was really not well, but um, deferred the year back, went back and continued studying, and I loved it. Like, I did forensic science, they taught us about um, policing, criminology. Um, I did not want to leave, I absolutely loved it. I was there every single day for my class, and then when I graduated, I was sad because I didn't want to leave. I wanted How to stay at uni. How many years did you do that course for? Five years. Okay, what did you graduate with? Um, a two, two. Okay. So it wasn't that great, but I did. It's still good. It's still good. I yeah. still passed. And obviously, I was pregnant at the time. I was married. I had my child was autistic. Do you mind if I ask who you married? Am I? Who you married? Oh, so I was, was married. Muslim? Yeah, he was a Muslim. Where, yeah. where is he from? He was. He's actually half French and half Algerian. Okay. Yeah, but he wasn't like um practicing. a proper practicing. He'd pray okay. like on and off from time to time, but he wasn't exactly practicing himself. But yeah. Because many Muslim women in the marriage like, ain't going to university either, are they? Many? Many Muslim, uh, Muslim women who are married, yeah. are they going to university? Well, the really? thing is, when he, when he came to ask for my hand in marriage to my dad, my dad said to him, look, um, I will let you marry her on one condition, that you yeah, let her finish her education and she goes to university, and he agreed to it. So okay. that was part of the condition. He couldn't tell me not to go. He never ever tried to stop me, to be honest, to be fair. He's very westernised. He didn't have a problem with it. So, yeah, that's how I got my degree. And then you didn't follow through with a, a, a job involved in any, any of that? Well, so the problem was I actually wanted to be, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I actually wanted to be a CID officer. Okay. I wanted to work in firearms. I was going to go to Czech Republic to do a two-week course on firearms. And then what happened was I took a nasty drop on the stairs and I damaged my back. Um, so now I've got a sciatica car, two slip discs, bulging, wear and tear. My back's really, really what bad. What was that? That was when I was 23. Okay. 
23, yeah. Just so gone, just gone out of there was no way I could have been a CID officer or worked because yeah. obviously in them kind of jobs, you need to be able to run, you need to be able to be active and healthy. And I was not able to do it. There was times when I couldn't even walk for a month. Yeah. A whole month I didn't walk on my feet. So I kind of studied for five years. I won't say for nothing. I did get the intelligence and education and it helped me to speak a bit better. I'm, I'm still not that articulate and that well-spoken, but I'm much better compared to how I used to be. I've done a four-year apprenticeship and then went to jail. Lost my career as well. Yeah, see? <laughs> I've come out like, what are we going to do now? But yeah. Yeah, so, and then I ended up just doing the music. Ended up getting into music. Yeah, ended up getting into music. And now I'm doing podcasting. Yeah, I saw you with Kevin Lane. Yeah. How are you finding it? You know what, to what be honest with you... was your first podcast? My first podcast was actually Darren G. Wow, oh, he's off his head. Yeah, Darren he started, G. You know, he started talking about me once. I didn't even know what he was going on about. <laughs> I, looked, and, and, and I, I put it back to, I must have made a video, yeah? Where I was talking about, it wasn't talking about him. <laughs> yeah. But he somehow yeah. has thought that's about him. Okay. Like, What's going on? Just look, whatever madness you've got going on, keep me out of it, mate. <laughs> yeah, but that was a controversial um, podcast. Darren G was your first one? Yeah, he was my first How one. How was your first one? Because Young Spade was my first one. Oh. oh and I wish I could redo it. I wish I could redo Yeah, it. I wish I could redo mine. Yeah, I wish I could redo I it. I didn't put it out because I don't think I, I did. Didn't put I didn't, no, put I don't out. think I did good in it. No, it don't matter. Put it out. I don't think I did good. No, because I didn't do good. And I didn't do good and I've done a disservice to Young Spray. Because when you watch it, see, I've done that. He come to stay with me. I was out in Benidorm. He come, we had, a, we had a great time there. He come to stay with me and the first, and, and we done it the first day. We done it the first day. And he was obviously very wary of me, yeah, as I am. I'm mm -hmm. thinking you're trying to set me up, yeah? Okay. And he's thinking, you're going to try and set me up, Tommy, yeah? yeah? So he's not relaxed at all. We then went out, and then the real Young Spray, like, I got to really know Young Spray over those next three days. Yeah. And I wish I could have done it again, because I don't think I got enough out of Young Spray for the public to listen to him. He actually is an intelligent, really yeah, good... Yeah, he's a cool guy. I like, a I've, cool met, guy. I've, met, um, I've, yet, I've met Young Spray. Yeah, he's a cool uh, guy. Before. He's actually and, a really and, nice guy. And I think that, uh, yeah, I think that, I wish I could have done it again. And obviously, it's my first ever podcast, so whether you like it or not, you get nervous. You done it, you're, you're not used to doing it. It was my first one. And, um, and I didn't want to, you see, like, I didn't really want to do this with you, yeah? I didn't, I didn't want to, with Young Spray, turn it into a Muslim thing. Mm. Because I just want to hear his life. Who are you? Tell me who you are, Young Spray. Yeah. Tell me who you are. You get on rapping, you're a woman. So that's what my thing was with Young Spray. And I think that, I think that he, got, he got edgy, I was edgy. It, it weren't the best, man. I'd like to probably redo it at some point. Yeah, me too. I think I, think I, could, have, I could have done it. But you know what? It was the first one. Get him one. back on again now. So, yeah, always I'm, a, I'm he's thinking a character of getting in. Darren G back on. The, se back on the a second one I did was uh, Kevin. I think okay. it was Kevin Lane. Kevin Lane was actually quite easy because he's got that bubbly character. He's got so many stories to tell. You don't even need to think of questions and stuff. He he's just, just been recalled. Yeah. He's just been recalled. Yeah, he just, I know, he's just been recalled. Do you know why so he's been recalled? Let's clear some, do you know why? Oh, no, no, actually, you don't want to, he might not want people to Yeah, know. he might not want people but to But it, it's, it's nothing to do with any podcast. <laughs> no, it's nothing to do with any podcast, so it's not, it's not you. No, no, it's no. Because I see people like there, but... Um, or, or well, just to be clear, do? it's what? not any criminal um, activities neither. No. It's it's, uh, it's bullshit. Yeah, basically. Yeah, it's bullshit. It's, yeah. uh, to, to be honest, do you know when I was due to talk at Oxford University the first time, they come and recalled me because I was on licence. They mm. didn't want me to talk at university. They didn't want me having such a prestigious platform to hammer the police. Mm. Yeah? He was about to just do an evening with Kevin Lane, which they would say is glorifying criminality. Yeah, glamorising crime. A lot of the people who are listed as people going and attending yeah. are also quite famous in yeah. underworld or criminality. Yeah, because so there was a I'd Kenny, say that, I'd say Kenny Collins from the Hatton, Hatton, Hatton Garden. Gardens. Yeah, so the, um, they ain't going to want it. There was Peter Fury. Yeah. He was going to go. Was Sean, Kenneth Neumann going to do it also? Kenneth Noy, but they, they stopped they, him. They said he's not allowed. They said he's not Because allowed. he's glamorising the life of crime. So yeah. they stopped him from doing it. And then there was Sean Atwood. He was also going to be So doing the reality it. is that they, they pulled him to prevent his evening. That's what it's looking like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so and then I did, a, I did an interesting one actually with a Mexican cartel, Hitman, Sicario. Yeah. But he's now a revert into Islam. Yeah. That was quite an interesting one. Oh, um, I was going to say I'll get him on. I, still I get thought him. he was... Well, you can still get him on. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I'd I'd love to talk to a Me Mexican cartel. But yeah, he's, 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 did you? I got arrested and detained as a threat to national security. Wow. Me. When I was with my kids. They put me in a, det in a detention centre for all the migrants. Yeah, they got it And then they you. deported me. You know what I mean? I was like, really? And I think there was a football match that weekend where like 20 people were murdered or something. I thought, I'm a, I'm a threat to national security? Really? The British had asked them to do it. Okay. I landed with my kids on holiday. I landed it and I went, and do you know what? I just went, oh, I need this, man. It's two weeks. And then just something like that. And then they, they grabbed they you. They all come. I was like, 
What's going on? I'm in fucking Mexico. Surely I'm not getting, surely I'm not a problem in Mexico. And yeah, they said that I was, I was arrested, sent home. Kids went there. The kids still had the holiday because my mate was there with his kids. Mm. Nightmare, man. But um, okay, so you've done your music. What is it like being a female in the rap world? It's hard because it's difficult because um, obviously, especially being Arab as well, Muslim. Well, I'd say Arab, Muslim, especially being Muslim, it's very, very difficult because I don't think you Are get all the men in that, all the other 49, are they Muslim men? Yeah, they're all yeah, Moroccans. Okay, they're Moroccan Muslim men, okay. Yeah, they're, they're all Moroccans, but some are from like all over, France, Holland, Germany, Spain, like we're from everywhere, really. That's why no one messes with C before because we are everywhere, literally. Oh. So yeah, but yeah, it's quite difficult. But to be honest with you, I, I try not what to What will no C4 think about you sitting next to me, discussing all of this? I don't think they'll have any problems, but okay. no, I don't think they have any problem at all. Yeah, go on, what's it like for a lady? So yeah, it's, it is quite difficult in the world in general. In that rap world, uh, it's it's a, it's a, it's a yeah, I don't know. I'd say it's difficult, but it's not difficult because I don't know. Like for me, I don't really care about what people think or what they say because I know myself. I know I'm confident in myself. I know what I stand for. I know what I am. So I don't really care like what people think or what they say. It used to hurt me at the beginning because in this industry, you have to have thick skin. People are going to make comments. They're going to say things, but you just got to learn to, you know what? As long as people are speaking about you, whether it's good or bad, it's still publicity. So it's good. It's, it, you know, it, it's great. Mm. So the more comments they do, the more things they say, the more views I get, I get paid for it. So it's absolutely fine. I know my music's good. I know that I'm... Like, I, what I was going to say, being a female in a rap game, you have two options. You can either go down the road, which where you get more views and stuff, is if you go sexual. So if you've got your... Yeah, get your clothes off. Get your clothes off. Talk about nasty, provocative stuff, yeah. you know. Or I chose to go the route of the gangster. Gangster route. Because at least that way, okay, it's not great, but at least I, um, I cover myself. I don't talk about disgusting sexual stuff, you know, or, okay, maybe I might lead the younger generation to thinking that gang life is cool or whatever, but it's better than making them get naked and yeah, what do you think have of sex. That? What, like, what do you think of that? Because I, I, I think a lot of the problems with drill music, with glorifying violence, with glorifying criminality, mm. what do you think? Would you want your, you've got a 14-year-old daughter, would you want your daughter, or if you had a son, mm. listening to those sort of lyrics and uh, inspired by it, would you? I know people to say be, it's music, to be but. honest with you, to be honest with you, um, I think that's all I could do because that's who I am. I can only be real to myself. So everything that I'm rapping about, I'm doing, that's who I am. Everything I say I've done, I did. When you speak about the life of a street life, because mm. even understanding that, for someone sitting here watching this, mm. what is a, it like growing up on the streets of London? London, Ladbroke Grove's a rough area, yeah? mm. a lot of gangs. What's that? What's the day-to-day -day like of that? Well, I mean... What are you seeing? What, what are people doing? Are, are you involved in drug gangs? Is there violence? Is there rivalry? Yeah, there definitely is. You get into yeah, yeah, there is. If you're if you're if you're um hanging around on the streets and you're hanging around with gangs and definitely because obviously if you're if it's it's the it's, the, it's that life, isn't it? It's that street life. If one of your if one of your friends get into an altercation with someone and you're with them, you you're backing them. Mm. So if you're if you're in a situation, I'm in a situation with you too. Mm. Obviously some people they run away, they get scared, they don't have backbone, but for me, if I'm with you, I'm with you. Should so go for walk through after this. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> But obviously now I'm older. I don't like. I don't. I don't want to glamorize that lifestyle. Um, I do podcasts about reformed, notorious reformed criminals because I'd like to put the message out there of basically to deter the younger generation from getting involved in that life of crime. I try not to get in. Um, I try not to get involved in altercations or anything like that because I'm older now. I've got a daughter. I'm her ro role model. And I think as you get older, you get more mature, and your perception starts to change. So I don't believe in that in that um, in that life anymore. And uh, I wouldn't want my daughter to be involved in those kind of activities or to do a quarter of the things that I used to do at her, her age. I started off very young, you know. Yeah. So um, it's all it's all no good, to be honest with you. So what's coming for? So so you, you're still still involved in music at the minute, but what's mm. coming after music? You've just said you want to go more religious. So after music is going to be. I've started a podcast already. Yep. It's going to be more just focusing on a podcast. Where do people get your podcast? Uh, on my YouTube channel. Which is. Uh, T Siddiqui official 
Who do you, who are you looking to? Well, we're obviously, we've just sat down. Mm. But, but who else? What sort of, are you looking to do? Politics? Are you looking to cover religion? Are you looking to cover I'm anything? I'm looking to when, cover anything, anything, anything that's interesting. Like after this, I'm going to be going to Sweden. I'm going to be when interviewing you going to um, in about a week and a half. I'm going Wednesday. Yeah, I'm going to be interviewing um, a guy called Anders Ali. He used to be a bank robber. Okay. He's a reformed criminal now, though. Um, and then there was another guy, Leo, as well. I think he also used to be a bank robber. What nationality are they? Um, Swedish. Or Swedish, yeah, okay. yeah, because uh, crime is very prevalent right now in Sweden. It's going crazy. People Islamic just, crime is. Uh, no, no, just general Jesus, crime. Drug dealers. Now most fucked. Drug dealers. Um, but it's, 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 it's migrant. Crime. It's crazy. It's yeah, all, it's the, the gangs exactly. are migrants. Well, I mean, those people they were born there. They but they're, they're, they're the sons of migrants. Yeah. Oh, oh. So, so yeah, I'm going over there to do some interviews over there, um, and then I plan to. Do, I want to do some interviews in Russia. Um, I've got someone great you can interview in Russia. Do you? Yeah. Edvard, so he's one of the lead, there was a newspaper there called Strava. Mm. I'm, sure I'm sure he'll be happy to talk to you. I want to go and interview him. What does he do? He was the lead journalist. Oh, so he's a journalist. Yeah, he's a lead journalist, but obviously you're going to get a totally different perception than what we're fed. We're fed I, believe, I believe we're fed yeah. a lot of bullshit against Russia. Um, we're, we're, they want us to hate the Russians. They want us to hate Russia. Mm. I don't believe Putin's perfect, but I, don't, I believe we're at fault for Ukraine. Well, I'm actually planning on interviewing... Um, some really big mafia, Russian mafias. Yeah, Ledge. Yeah, I've got okay. connects. I've got connects. I'm serious connects. Oh, and if Obviously, you've got 49 people in each country, you're going to have connects in every country and all, yeah. you? Through your little rap thing. I'm not going to mention who or anything like that, but I, I do have a very serious connect. Have you been to um, Russia? No, not yet. That's great. Never been. I do want to go. It's, to it's, go mate, there's no... Cro you know, like, in the view... You'd, compared to London, yeah, I went to Moscow, I went to St. Petersburg, and people say you're shilling for Putin. And I'm not shilling for Putin. There's no criminality there like there is in our country. Mm. We're, we're fucked. Yeah? We're fucked in, many, in most cities with the level of violence and that. It's, it's a very safe city. It's beautiful. Yeah, I, de I, definitely, I definitely want to go. I definitely want to go. Oh. I wanted to ask you, sorry, I know this interview on me, but I wanted to oh, ask sorry. you a question because I, I, I'd love to watch it. I think it'd be very interesting. Yeah. Would you, because you know Andrew Tate, obviously yep. he said he knows you. Yep. Right, because I think you both grew up in Luton. Yeah, yeah, I know Tate. So I was supposed to go there at the end of November and then I think his lawyer said no. Oh, okay, because I know he said that he'd love to do... Uh, I'd love to talk to Tate. I'd love that's to, something I'd, I'd, I'd love, love to watch. I'd love to sit down and discuss everything, f not just look. Under look, his conversion, as I said, it's... Um, I know, he, as he says, he's not a scholar on Islam, which is why not, I, I didn't know if it was wrong for me to be pulling out books and start mm. talking to you. No, it's fine. If I don't know something, I'll just no, say it, yeah. I don't know. So I didn't want to... Um, so, yeah, with Andrew, I, I'd really like to. I understand... That how, would be so... You know, that would go viral. Yeah. And I can see how he was... I can see. I could see it coming with Islam mm. because he felt betrayed as well. When, when he was attacked and when he was deplatformed and everyone who went against him... He's got a good base with Muslim support mm. now. So, look, I, 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 I disagree with Andrew on a lot, I believe now. Um, but I know Andrew before all this. So I know, and I know everyone that knows him. So I know people have an opinion of him. People like to slag him off. People in my circle, p people question the morality of how he's made his money. Um, I can tell people that everyone I know who's been around him from, from a young mm. age only speak highly of him. Yeah, I think he's actually a great person. I Sorry. think that basically um, he's a threat to the government. And I think I think even the fella, the, so his Amir, his trainer, mm. Bosnian fella, everyone only has some good words to say about him. Yeah, so, I and think I think he sort of like didn't create Andrew Tate, but I'm, I guess he would have been a great figure for Andrew Tate to become the man he has as well. I think he's um, desperately needed in society today for. Yeah, for I think he's desperately. I think he desperately should not have converted to Islam. I disagree with you. Of course that. you do. <laughs> of course you do. I but I think that it's, I think it's um, I think when he's now respected by so many youth, it's obviously very good for Islam. It's mm -hmm. very good for the promotion of Islam. Um, I obviously strongly oppose that. I think it's a terrible decision. Um, I understand it. I think it's the best decision you made in his life. You do. Yeah. Mm. Well. I and I, I hope one day you come to Islam too. It's never happening, man. <laughs> you never know. Never say never, you know. Never, can I ask you a question now? Never say you never. Say, is your partner Muslim? Yeah. He is, okay. That's one thing I was going in my head, trying to work out. Yeah. But um, is your daughter? Yeah. Is she practicing? Yeah. Okay. Well, not so, cause not so much. She's on a spectrum. You see, most people are going to listen. Like, like, I'd never force it upon her. I think, know? if there's any Muslim watching this, mm. I'd like, again, I don't, I don't think it's the, the, the one to have with Andrew Tate, yeah? Because, but I'd love to 
sit down and discuss everything with Andrew mm. Tate, yeah? But if there's any Muslim watching this, I, I would have prepared everything to come and have the discussion that I think the public would like to be have, to had on the verses in the Quran, on the calling for war, on the calling for jihad, on sexual slavery, on all these things about Muhammad's life. Yeah? If you want to do that, we can do that. My dad is very intelligent yeah. and will verse in the Quran. I'd, so see, so see, if, 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 if I knew I was coming prepared for that, I'd have come prepared myself, mm. with my, prepared myself properly to discuss these discuss and have my yeah to discuss all of these problems and all of these books i'll bring all bring the books mm -hmm. and then we can sit and go okay what about this because i think it's an important you need you need to discuss that with someone that's well versed yeah that's what i mean i sit down with any scholar yeah because i have before and when i ask them the questions that i need that i believe i need so for example the main imam in luton i said okay in your ideal society in your ideal society if you make this country what you want it to be mm. yeah, then i ask on the legal age for sex i ask what you're going to do to the gays it's all one thing being against LGBTQ plus mafia, alphabet mafia being pushed on children. Mm. It's another thing thinking they need to be executed. Yeah, yeah, I don't agree with that. No, well, in Islamic countries, they're executed. In the teachings of Islam, they should be thrown off rooftops, depending on what hadith we want to take. But all of these, things, all of these things. I think it's important conversations to have. So more about you then, more about you, T. So you're, you're a rapper. Mm. You've, done, you, you've, done, you've got a degree. You've been on the streets. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think? How do you? What do you think of the current state of Great Britain? Did you I vote for Brexit? To be honest with you, I don't vote. I never no, have voted, something. and I wouldn't vote because I don't think that voting makes any difference whatsoever. I believe that whoever's sitting down in that chair, it's different people, but same agenda. Yeah, they're um, not. Yeah, yeah. Which is what? Which is what Liz Truss has just said. Even yeah. when she got to the top, she thought she'd be able to make changes, and she couldn't. It was the Bank of England. It's this. It's the corporations. Yeah, it's you're not. Money. You're never in charge. It's the one percent elite who are in charge. You never get to see who they are and who they are. Um, they say what goes, and what they say goes, and everybody is just puppets, um, pretending to care. What do you think about the current state of Britain? The state of Britain now. Yeah. I don't think. I think it's the worst it's ever been. To be honest with you, I think it's the worst. It's, it's, it's flooded by migrants, immigrants. There's hardly any jobs left. Um, knife <coughs> crime is going through the roof. Um, the benefits, <coughs> they're not. They're, they're clamping down, tightening down. Um, there's not as much opportunities out there. I think that the youth, I feel most sorry for the youth. I feel like they don't have any like youth clubs anymore as much as we used to. But back in my days, we used to have loads of things to do. Golden Youth Club, um, you know, activities, outings, more stuff to do. Now the kids have hardly anything to do. They're just out on the streets, you know. So I think, but I think the main concern now is, is probably knife crime and gang affiliation. It's, and, and guns. There's five stabbings a week in Lugan. Guns. Just Lugan. Five every week. Like back in my days, there used to be, you could name maybe like on one hand, five people who used to have guns. They were known as gunmen and they were very re revered and feared. Now everyone has guns. Every little kid. Yeah, 11 year old has a gun. Do you think Sadiq Khan's doing a good job in London? No, I don't think any of them are. I think the whole, anybody who's a MP, politician, um, to me they're all zero, to be honest with you. They're not doing anything. Look, let's be honest. If the government really cared about its people, they we would know. We would know. I think people are starting to wake up now and they're starting to realise that the government, our government, is corrupt. Would it's you, corrupt. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I agree totally. Like, you, why, if you cared and use the government, why don't you promote healthy food? Yeah, and gyms. And gyms. Why do you promote but McDonald's and Burger King? Literally. And antidepressants. Be, and, yeah, there you go. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I was on that myself. They put, for my back pain, they actually put me on Lyrica, pre gabbling and did not give me any warning about it or tell me anything about the medication. What to come off of it as well, was it? I'm off it now. It Thank God I came off, off it. it. It was hard to come off it, but, but I was determined and I came off it. But I was like an addict to it for a while. You, and they don't, they don't warn you. They just give out these tablets. And, you know, I started getting like some weird pain in my head, like a shocking electric pain going through my head, like to my eye. So obviously something's going on with, my, with the neuro side of things. I don't know, but that's a very dangerous tablet. And, you know, they just give it out. It's, I think it's, that num it's the number one now, that uh, medicine that's been given out to people and they don't warn you about it at all they just give instead of holistic medicine they want to just they're the biggest the, the the pharmaceuticals are the biggest drugs dealers in the world to be honest you know uh, they don't Do you, you believe, can yeah. Do you, you can heal yourself holistically. You don't need uh, drugs yeah, and medication. I don't, I don't believe in any prescription medication. Like, look at Dr. Sebi, for example. So it's my, like, never take it. Have you ever heard of Dr. Sebi? No. So basically, he used to cure cancer, AIDS. Um, what they do, what they do, kill him? They killed him off. Yeah, of course. They killed him off. 
Yeah, I don't believe in age prescription. I just say I believe that, that I believe exercise is a key. It certainly has been for me. Diet, been in some food, places. organic food. Yeah, yeah eating fruit properly, and veg. eating properly and exercising. Yeah. Yeah, but they don't promote that. And if, you, if you're if you on a good diet, eat organic fruit and veg, it's very hard to find food while you're outside. That's when you realise how unhealthy everything is. All mm. the food is. The water that you're drinking from the tap, really bad. Down to the water that you're showering with. It makes you lose hair. People are losing hair. Their skin getting dry. Down to deodorant. Down to what's in the Deodorant. Down to what's in the shampoo. Deodorant actually, know. you know, deodorant Rabbit actually hole. causes ca cancer. You know that? Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know, man. I met. I stayed with some dude when I was. I went to Cuba and I was going to go to. I was trying to get into America illegally again. <laughs> I was in the Bahamas, and um, this bloke had an app where you scan everything, mm. and it shows you. Like so, on his app, so you should scan every food. No, no, no. It's got this in it. It's got that in it. That's going to kill you. That's giving you this. That's giving. You. In the end, I was like, I just want to eat. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I don't mind. I take the risk. Yeah. Give me a McDonald's. That's why it's good to, <laughs> to grow your own fruit and veg. I know, which they don't want you to do. Yeah, they don't want you to do. What do you um? Would you end immigration at the current state, being a Londoner, being a Londoner, son of immigrants? Right now, yeah, I would. Not because of anything else, but just because there's not enough resources, there's not enough housing, there's not enough jobs, there's not enough. How can you, how can you help somebody when you can't even help yourself? Yeah. You know, that's the, that's the only reason why. Other other than that, if there was resources, there was housing, then yeah, by all means, you know, help if you can help, help. But well, the way you... things are now, no. I've enjoyed your interview. I hope you, I've, I've enjoyed this, and I've I think that um, I think that the issue is that complex, yeah. Because I can't ima say say like if I was you, mm. if I was you, and I believe what you believe mm -hmm. about Islam, and then I see the chaos being caused by mm. jihadists. I understand it's difficult because that's something you believe in, and that's what they they're saying in, in your in your interpretation. They're doing it falsely. Mm. So I understand many Muslims who are stuck in positions watching what's going on. I don't know, it's a very complex issue. As I said, as I said, my belief is my belief is which I, is that many of the many of the Muslims that are following the scripture to the word is when we have a problem. I believe, that's what I believe. I don't know, we disagree. I, don't know, I think I think up. when you have the Muslims who who interpret mm. the words. But I've enjoyed it. So if you're watching this, I know we're but we're both just going to share this. Yeah, I'm going to share this as my podcast. You can share it as yours. Okay. If you've watched it, uh, like it, share it. I think these discussions are important. I appreciate the people who support my work because it gives me the opportunity to sit and have these discussions. Never thought I'd be sitting next to a Muslim rapper, female, discussing gang life, street life and picking up the Quran. So. Yeah, it's been good, actually. <laughs> it's actually been good. Um, I, think I have a different perception of you now. You're actually a really nice person. Um, I do believe, though, that you're, you still may need to get a bit more educated on Islam. Um, <laughs> but I don't think that you're a racist. I do understand where you're coming from. Um, and it was a pleasure meeting you. That's good. I hope you don't um, get. I hope, I hope. Well, obviously, everyone gets a backlash anyway. So who cares? You said you don't give a shit. So you're used to it. I so think as long as I'm talking truth and I took my truth and on and truth, then because there'll be people who are going to sit and say you shouldn't have sat down with him without a scholar. That's what they're going to say. That's yeah. ridiculous. No, no, yeah, yeah. I think I think the important the discussions are important. So I've enjoyed it. Um, as I said, I think if every Muslim full, took certain ways, then we wouldn't have the problem. But we have got the problem. So. Needs talking about, but um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Latest edition to Silence and T. What do you call your podcast? What do you call it? Um, well, I was calling it the Crimeology Podcast, but I think I might change it and put Tigress because I'm also known as La Tigress. So I might put T as in T and then Gress. But I don't know, I'm still thinking because I don't want to limit it just to crime. Well, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I want to I wanna keep it open so I can talk to. Now, one more question I wanted to ask Did you have the vaccine? I'm going to ask no. everyone this now. No. No, good. good. No. See, now, now I respect anyone. That's, Don't get the in fact, I might start my podcast off. Did you have the vaccine? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point in me talking to you yet because you're stuck. You're fucked. And rest in peace. Yeah, no, I didn't. I'm and I wouldn't yeah. advise anybody to. I'm probably getting into trouble for that as well. But yeah. No, no. good. Yeah. Yeah, good. I wouldn't, no. Okay. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. And um, yeah, subscribe on our Rumble channel. Cheers.